Chapter 841, Body Tempering Isn't Accomplished in a Day At this moment, nearly every Luoplan disciple in Black Wind Valley was focused on the battle on the seventh level. Ranyu, Gu Luo, and Luo Tian were encircling the intermediary spirit blood snake, trying to overpower it. It was an intense battle, so although the other Luo Plan disciples could not participate in it, just spectating it was quite a good experience. Some people even abandoned their cultivation just to watch it, so why would anyone pay attention to the lonely Yi Yun at the second level? Hence, when Yi Yun woke up, other than Sun Mang who was hovering high in the air, very few people noticed it. Yi Yun slowly opened his eyes and for a split second, his eyes seemed to flicker with the light of the stars. However, the glint subsided after a split second. Yi Yun's eyes was returned to their usual calmness. His pupils were like a baby's, unpolluted and clear. They were deep black and bright. In the previous cultivation time, Yi Yun had already finished absorbing all the ancient Fei energy. Now, with the energy tempering his body, Yi Yun's bodily toughness could no longer be compared what it was in the past. Now, even if Yi Yun faced the black armored demon god, with his body that had been tempered several times, he was confident that he could have a frontal clash with the black armored demon god. Phew! A breath like a white beam shot out of Yi Yun's mouth. This breath shot to the ceiling of the cave and it became a swirling gas along the mountain cliff as though the breath contained some spirituality in it. It moved like a white snake. He opened all his acupuncture points, and his meridians were completely free of any blockage. Suddenly, Yi Yun felt as though his body was lighter. At the same time, a feeling, a great emptiness overwhelmed him. His body lacked Yuan Qi. This was because as Yi Yun's physique improved, his organs, meridians and bones were all tempered becoming extremely firm. This was like how a reservoir had increased in size, allowing it to store more water. It was not that Yi Yun did not have any Yuan Qi in his body, now the Yuan Qi he had was insufficient to fill his entire body. With a stronger body, this allowed him to store more Yuan Qi. The benefits of doing so was self-evident. This ancient Fei Bone sure has good effects. Yi Yun's face revealed a very satisfied look. He looked out of the cave, and even the third level of Black Wind Valley had very few people. I've been cultivating for so long, so it's time to attempt Black Wind Valley. Yi Yun said to himself. With a leap, he jumped straight down to the third level. At this moment, the third level had a few people like Bai Chen. They could not find their footing on the fourth level. Bai Chen was stunned when he saw Yi Yun come down. Junior Brother Yi. Have you just finished? Cultivation time in the Black Wind Valley trials was extremely valuable. Everyone was in a race against time, but Yi Yun had used more than 10 days to consume the ancient Fei Bone. Although the saying goes that more preparation would not delay the speed of getting work done, wasting the time for cultivation in Black Wind Valley was quite a pity. Every level in Black Wind Valley required the warriors to slowly acclimatize to it. Even Ranyu, Guluo, and Luo Tian did not get to the sixth level immediately. They began from the fifth level, in Guluo's case, the second level, and they adapted to the Black Mist in Black Wind Valley. They also used it to nourish their Fei race bloodline before they headed to the sixth level. On the sixth level, the three of them took a long time to consolidate their progress before attempting the seventh level. However, they still failed at the beginning. Yi Yun now had slightly more than 10 days left, so he was definitely at a disadvantage to begin challenging Black Wind Valley. Yi Yun nodded and said lightly, the ancient Fei energy was a bit hard to absorb, so there was some delay in time. That's more than 10 days left. Junior Brother Yi, you sure don't care. Bai Chen felt helpless. He knew that Yi Yun was strong, so he was entitled to being willful. Regardless of how much Yi Yun delayed his progress, he was still much stronger than him. Indeed, the ancient Fei energy is difficult to absorb. Junior Brother Yi, you managed to persist on for four days. That was really impressive. Unfortunately, if there was a period of time for you to specially absorb the ancient Fei bone after the ancient Fei edifice trial, you would have had a full 30 days here in Black Wind Valley. 
If that was the case, you might even have reached the sixth level. For the past few days, as Bai Qin realized that Yi Yun was getting stronger and stronger, he no longer thought about comparing himself with Yi Yun. He might as well befriend Yi Yun, since a genius like Yi Yun was of a different world to him in any case. With Yi Yun and Bai Chen's conversation, more and more noticed that Yi Yun had awoken. The Phoenix Fermiana State Disciples did not think too much of Yi Yun's awakening. Their attention was still focused on Luo Tian. A typical Heaven Fei needs a year just to absorb ancient Fei bone. That human only used a short period of ten or so days. Even though his absorption of the ancient Fei bone seemed rather impressive, to tell me that he can go from a weak bodied person to a powerful body tempered warrior in slightly more than 10 days, I really refuse to believe that. Ignoring body tempering, just the cultivation of Yuan Qi. Has anyone heard of someone at the most basic Yuan Foundation realm eat a treasure and jump a few realms, reaching the Heaven Ascension perfection? A Phoenix Fermiana State disciple said. Body tempering was not something that could be completed in a day. How many of the Fei race Luo Plan disciples present spent a decade or so focusing on their body tempering? The Fei race were weaker at nomological cultivation, so they naturally dedicated more time on body tempering. If Yi Yun could use a short span of half a month to surpass them in body tempering, then what was the point of living? They might as well collectively jump off Black Wind Valley to commit suicide. As the Phoenix Fermiana State disciples spoke, Yi Yun had already jumped down from the third level onto the fourth. Many people were watching with great anticipation. Yi Yun had tempered his body for about half a month. If his body tempering standard exceeded theirs, it meant that with a single ancient Fei bone, the Luo clan could produce a body tempering genius in a short period of time. How could a body tempering genius be so easily available? At this moment, even Song Meng's attention was moved to Yi Yun. As for Ran Yu, Luo Tian, and even the zombie faced Gu Luo, they all looked at Yi Yun as well. They too wanted to know what was new with Yi Yun, who had stirred up quite a fuss during those four days. Yi Yun steadily landed on a rock on the fourth level, where Luo Fengling was. At this moment, Woo Woo Woo! A cold air blew up. Layers of black gas transformed into the shapes of fey beasts and ghouls as they pounced on Yi Yun. Yi Yun did not budge, but the nine neonate phantom image behind him roared. Its body rapidly expanded as its nine heads waved around before beginning to freely devour the black gas's fey beasts and monsters. The beasts and monsters were swallowed by the nine neonate, turning into pure energy. As for the present Yi Yun, his body had improved tremendously. He was in need of the nourishment of energy and blood. Eon's body was like a dried-up reservoir, so with large amounts of spring water suddenly being injected into it, it made every cell in Eon's body automatically absorb the essence energy that was a result of the degenerated blood dragon's blood and rapidly grow. Eon now possessed a body that was, at the most, a basic seamless body. Every minute part of Eon's body had been tempered. Hence, regardless of if it was blood energy or heaven earth yuan qi that surged in, none of that would be wasted. Even if he was not in the black mist, Eon's flesh and blood would also slowly grow even while he was sleeping. Chapter 842, Indomitable Without Resistance After Eon absorbed the ancient fey bone, the nine neonate aspect totem behind him grew even more ferocious. It practically swept through the gases on the fourth level and quickly, the black-misted fey beasts and ghouls that possessed intelligence no longer dared to approach Yi Yun. Being near him was equivalent to sending themselves to death. Woo woo woo! After the nine neonate aspect totem devoured large quantities of black-mist essence energy, it had a slight feeling of contentment. As for Yi Yun, he also sensed that the lacking blood and energy in his body that was a result of his powerful body was being slowly replenished. Yi Yun clenched his fist as he experienced the feeling of a body filled with energy. This feeling was extremely good. As expected, the fourth level does not pose a problem for Yi Yun. Yi Yun had gotten his footing on the fourth level, so it meant his reaching the fifth level was certain. After all, according to Tsong Meng's standards, as long as they reached the fifth level, even if it was for one second at the end, 
it would still be considered a pass. Actually, most people present no longer believed that Lee Yun would be eliminated by the Black Wind Valley trial after his massive display of enduring the torment of the ancient Fei Bone's energy for four days. They were only doubtful about Lee Yun's body tempering technique. That punk sure is crafty. The Nine Neonate Aspect Totem is a human's energy-based method after all. When he reached the fourth level, he did not even use his body's strength. A Phoenix Fermiana State Disciple said in disgruntlement. The Black Wind Valley was a test of the Fey race's bloodline and bodily strength. Yi Yun had used the energy-based methods of the human race, so he naturally earned the disdain of the Phoenix Fermiana State Disciples. Unfortunately, Song Mang had never barred Yi Yun from using his aspect totem in the rules that he had set at the beginning. This allowed Yi Yun to find a loophole. Another Phoenix Fermiana State Disciple laughed and said, You expect him to use his body? Regardless of what body tempering system he used, it's impossible for him to accomplish it in 10 or so days. Just the time for my body tempering adds up to about 20 years. That Phoenix Fermiana State Disciple had been cultivating for 60 to 70 years. About a third of his time was spent on body tempering, so it was evident how much he invested in body tempering. Noticing how Yi Yun was about to descend to the fifth level and the nine neonate aspect totem behind him was still snarling with its fangs and claws, as though it still could go for more, people understood why Yi Yun had previously stopped to absorb the ancient Fei Bone. Luo Tian, who was at the sixth level, shook his head and said, So it seems that Yi Yun's absorption of the ancient Fei Bone was actually to nourish his nine neonate aspect totem. After the nine neonate aspect totem absorbed the ancient Fei Bone's bloodline, it naturally became a lot more powerful. Hence, it can absorb the degenerated blood dragon's energy in such an indomitable fashion. This strategy of his is ingenious. Unfortunately, it's such a waste to use an ancient fey bone to nourish an aspect totem. With my gigantic demon ape bloodline, I can sense Yi Yun's bodily toughness. It is not that strong. However, to make such a sacrifice for the Luo Divine Hall Trials, Yi Yun is nothing impressive after all. Luo Tian shook his head. Actually, with Luo Tian's cultivation level and his ancient gigantic demon ape bloodline, he could sense Yi Yun's body tempering accomplishments up to a certain extent. Indeed, there was a limit to how much Yi Yun's bodily strength could improve in less than half a month. Using his aspect totem to reach the fifth level was most likely a shortcut. However, Luo Tian despised such shortcuts. He paid attention to Yi Yun because of Yi Yun's stunning performance at the ancient Fei edifice. However, now at Black Wind Valley, Yi Yun putting in so much time and effort in order to pass made him seem inferior. What Luo Tian said was actually on many people's mind. As Yi Yun's performance in the ancient Fei edifice was astounding, Everyone had higher expectations of him, even if what was tested at Black Wind Valley was Yi Yun's weakness. At this moment, Yi Yun had already landed on the fifth level. Luo Fengling, who was at the fourth level, looked down. She was worried that Yi Yun could not withstand the level. The moment that he landed on the fifth level, the Black Mist formed Fey Beasts and Spectres that were immediately several times more powerful than those of the previous level. The black shadows rushed at him maniacally and clashed with the nine neonate aspect totem. The nine neonate aspect totem roared as its nine heads danced in the black mist freely. Every head would snap at a specter or fey beast. The energy contained within those black figures were devoured by it, strengthening itself. Seeing Ian find his footing on the fifth level, Laia revealed an extremely complex look. He had also found his footing on the fifth level just now. As for the sixth level, he could descend onto it, but he could not last long on there. So what if the Yun usage of his aspect totem was not the orthodox way? Now with the Yun at the same level as him, how could he feel any better? Thankfully, at this moment, a black misted fey beast grasped an opportunity to charge at the nine neonate and bit down on one of the nine neonate's neck. Instantly, the nine neonate's figure began to flicker violently. As the the nine neonate's master, Yi Yun also immediately sensed a chill in his blood vessels. The aspect totem was one with Yi Yun. So with the black gas eroding the aspect totem, 
it also managed to invade Yi Yun's body. He got bitten. Laya was delighted and he finally heaved a sigh of relief. Thankfully, Yi Yun was not a freak of nature. He still did not have his footing on the fifth level and he was still slightly inferior to him. This was good. Laya had lowered his expectations. Even in a field that was his expertise, he did not wish for Yi Yun to be far inferior to him. As long as there was a tiny bit of difference, he would be psychologically comforted. The degree of my body tempering is still slightly weaker. Although it has increased by a hundred, if not a thousand times in the short span of half a month, compared to the Fei race who have tempered their bodies for more than a decade, it is still inferior. Luo Tian's evaluation of Yi Yun's body tempering wasn't wrong. Even with the ancient Fei bone and the purple crystal, Yi Yun was still unable to bridge the chasm that was a result of time. However, Yi Yun did not care even if his body was not strong enough. He did not stay on the fifth level, and instead, he suddenly leapt down towards the sixth level. What? With this, both the Fire Cloud State and Phoenix Fermiana State disciples were stunned. You haven't gotten your footing on the fifth level, why are you going to the sixth? Junior Brother E. Luo Fongling cried out. Black Wind Valley was not a place of fun and games. If he was being careless, his mind and blood would be devoured by the black mist. It was even possible to become a retard. The Luo clan disciples present, be they heaven fei or not, would have to wait till they found their solid footing on each level before they dared to attempt the next level. And even so, it was easy for them to be inflicted with injuries. But now, with Yi Yun forcefully descending onto the sixth level, it appeared fatal. That retard is sending himself to his death? Laia sneered. He was waiting for Yi Yun to be swarmed by the black misted shadows and inflicted with serious injuries. The sixth level was where Ranyu, Gu Luo, and Luo Tian were. The three of them watched as Yi Yun landed in between them. What audacity! Ranyu immediately moved away from Yi Yun. His intentions were clear. He did not want to help Yi Yun by sharing any of the pressure. People like Ranyu, who had found their footing on the sixth level, were deliberately avoided by the black figures so as to not be devoured. However, a newcomer like Yi Yun was different. He was definitely welcomed. Woo! The moment that Yi Yun landed on the sixth level, a humanoid figure in black armor immediately charged at Yi Yun. That humanoid figure was formed by the black mist with the consumption of a warrior's memories. It was much stronger than the typical shadowy figures. Seeing this figure charge at him, Yi Yun turned serious, and from his chest, a hitchpitch scream was heard. This screech was still reverberating as a gigantic three-legged golden crow phantom image charged at the sky from behind Yi Yun. The golden crow phantom image cried as it grabbed at the humanoid shadow. Who? 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 Before the golden crow's claws reached their target, rolling pure yang flames began to burn and consume their surroundings. The moment that the evil energies touched the pure yang flames, they melted like ice. The humanoid shadow paused for a moment and it immediately lost a lot of its momentum. And at this moment, the nine neonate also roared, and with the golden crow, they attacked the humanoid shadow in a pincer formation. Upon seeing this scene, all the Luo clan disciples present were astounded. They were waiting for Yi Yun to suffer, but now, Yi Yun had produced another phantom image. That was another aspect totem. The human had two aspect totems? Furthermore, they were the nine neonate and three-legged golden crow, two of the best ancient great fae. The form of this human's aspect totems were even better than their bloodlines as heaven fae. It was exasperating. Chapter 843, Powerfulness of Blood Pying On the sixth level of Black Wind Valley, under the combined attacks of the Golden Crow and the nine neonate aspect totems, the black misted shadows that pounced on Yi Yun exploded, emanating large amounts of energy that the nine neonate and Golden Crow sucked clean. And at this moment, there were more and more black shadows encircling Yi Yun on the sixth level. Other than Ranyu, Guluo and Luotian had simultaneously distanced themselves from Yi Yun, 
causing him to be fully exposed to all the black misted shadows on the sixth level. The entire sixth level's black gases were stirred up, turning it chaotic like a turbulent sea. The combined pressure that Gu Luo, Ran Yu, and Luo Tian faced was not even half of what Yi Yun faced. Every person who entered the sixth level for the first time would experience the relentless attacks of the black misted shadows. This was nothing surprising, but the number of black misted shadows around Yi Yun was exceptionally large. This was because the nine neonate and three legged golden crow had immense auras. The three legged golden crow could cover a large stretch of mountains when it spanned its wings. Even the black misted shadows that were far away were attracted to it. Phew, phew. The pure yang flames swept everywhere wantonly as large swaths of black mist were burned. At the same time, be it the three legged golden crow's three sharp claws or its blade like golden wings, all of them were terrifying weapons. Many black figures that charged at Yi Yun were immediately slayed. And beside the three legged golden crow, the nine neonate was like nine flood dragons that stirred the seas. A large number of black figures that were injured by the golden crow were directly bitten to death by the nine neonate. A steady stream of black gas fused into the nine neonate and golden crow totems and Yi Yun's body. Yi Yun sensed that the power in his blood was increasingly more powerful, as though his body was a simmering volcano that would erupt at any time. What powerful strength! Yi Yun clenched his fists tightly as he looked at them. Body tempering is truly fascinating. In the past, I focused on energy training, so my body was very weak. Although with Yuan Qi filling my body, I was still able to experience the surging of energy, this energy is heaven-earth Yuan Qi after all. It can be considered to be an exterior power. It's not as powerful as the body and blood strength. It also gives me a feeling of being stronger. It's no wonder that the Fei race thinks so highly of body tempering. Actually, a majority of the Fei race in the 10,000 Fei Empire in heaven focused on heaven earth Yuan Qi as well. To the Fei race, body tempering was just a supplement. After all, they were not like the ancient powerful Fei with pure bloodlines, who were able to resist the heavenly Tao laws using just their bodies of flesh and blood. To be able to reach that standard, only existences like the Five Claw Dragon, the Undying Phoenix, or the Nine Tribulations, Nine Neonate, could accomplish that. As for using a human's body of flesh and blood to attain a divine beast's level of strength, that was just unimaginable. Many thoughts flashed in Yi Yun's mind. And at this moment, the foul black shadows on the sixth level began to subside on their offensive. A nine neonate could be ignored, but with the three-legged golden crow, they were no match at all. Many black shadows had become food for the nine neonate and golden crow. Why does Yi Yun have two aspect totems? Some of the Fei race present did not know much about human cultivation methods. They did not know what it meant to have dual aspect totems. Furthermore, not only did he have two of them, the totems were ancient fey beasts and they were extremely powerful. One was a golden crow and the other was a nine neonate. Just summoning them was an impressive show of might. Looks are useless. So what if it's a golden crow and a nine neonate? They are aspect totems after all, so how can they compare to the power of our fey race's bloodline? However, that human is rather crafty. Up to now, he has yet to use his body or the power of his bloodline, and he has managed to reach the sixth level. He's not much different to Luo Tian and Ranyu. Many of the Luo clan disciples felt aggrieved. Song Mang had clearly said that Black Wind Valley was a test of the power of the Fei race's bloodline. But now, they who had truly used the power of their bloodlines were still inferior to Yi Yun, who did not. It's a bit too over the top to say that he's not much different to Luo Tian and Ranyu. Although Yi Yun has summoned his aspect totems, he is actually inferior to Luo Tian and Ranyu on the sixth level. A fire cloud state disciple suddenly said. Previously, while the Golden Crow and Nine Neonate were battling the black figures, they saw that despite the Golden Crow and Nine Neonate being ferocious, they were inevitably bitten by the black misted figures very clearly. However, they were fierce and powerful, so it did not matter if they were bitten once. 
However, the black-misted figures were devoured after a single bite. Hence, such arduous means had allowed Yi Yun to find his footing on the sixth level. This difference was not evident on the sixth level, but it would become extremely obvious in the seventh level. Luo Tian, who was able to easily cope with the sixth level, was unable to stand on the seventh level for more than a minute. Furthermore, Luo Tian had spent a long time in the sixth level to accumulate his strength. Who? 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 As the black misted shadows took the initiative to avoid Yi Yun, the pure Yang flames also gradually shrunk in size. Yi Yun stood in the sixth level of Black Wind Valley, with the Golden Crow and Nine Neonate by his sides as though they were two guardians protecting Yi Yun. The black figures did not dare attack Yi Yun's body. Luo Tian looked at Yi Yun with an ugly expression. Even though Yi Yun had managed to barely find his footing while he did so easily, they were still standing on the same level after all. Luo Tian was a very proud person. He had previously been repressed by Yi Yun at the ancient Fei edifice, so how could he be reconciled with the fact that Yi Yun had chased up to him in Black Wind Valley? Yi Yun, you are truly not bad. I thought you would end up in a bad position at Black Wind Valley, but I never expected you that you would also stand here on the sixth level. However, it's useless. The seventh level will still be mine. With that, Luo Tian roared loudly and he jolted his palms. Yuan Qi exploded as the palm winds howled, clearing all the black gas around him. Even those disciples several levels away could sense the shocks from the strike. If the strike had struck them, they would probably be killed instantly. This was the difference between them and a state's top genius. Crackle. Luo Tian conjured the ancient gigantic demon ape and fused it with his body. This allowed his body to manifest the talent of the gigantic demon ape bloodline, making him extremely violent. Watch carefully, Yi Yun. You have been cultivating all this time, so let me show you how horrible the seventh level is. With that said, Luo Tian jumped towards the seventh floor once again. Black Wind Valley was his home turf, so how could he let Yi Yun catch up to him on his home turf? Furthermore, Luo Tian was planning to push himself to his limits to capture the intermediary spirit Blood Snake. Hence, he was overdrawing on his potential so he could make a breakthrough during the training experience. Luo Tian is going down again. Seeing Luo Tian jump down to the seventh level once again, the rest of the disciples were astounded. They had been rather drained when they entered the seventh level. Ran Yu and Gu Luo were most likely still resting, but Luo Tian had already charged onto the seventh floor alone. As such, one could tell who was better immediately. Senior brother Luo Tian is awesome. The intermediary spirit blood snake will either not be captured by anyone, or if someone manages to capture it, that person will definitely be senior brother Luo Tian. Chapter 844, Ran Yu's Suggestion Luo Tian landed on the seventh level of Black Wind Valley once again. There was about 16 days left until the end of the trial. With Luo Tian having a great deal of pride, he knew that Song Mang had deliberately posed a difficult problem to tease them for his own amusement. However, Luo Tian was unhappy about that. He was bent on not letting Song Mang have his wish. He wanted to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake with his own strength. Luo Tian also knew about the difficulty of the seventh level. To be able to accomplish the task, other than being powerful himself, he needed to redouble his efforts. Only through hard work and harder work could he achieve a miracle in the remaining days. Besides obtaining such a huge opportunity, he could also show Tsung Mang, who was bent on teasing them, that he was not a person that could be easily teased. Luo Tian Seeing Luo Tian return to the seventh level, Ran Yu felt his heart tighten. He had consumed a great deal of his blood and chi on the seventh level. He had yet to recover from his injuries, so the earliest he could return to the seventh level would be tomorrow. This immediately revealed the contrasting difference between him and Luo Tian, who had gone to the seventh level twice. The seventh level was difficult, but it also provided the chance for rapid growth. 
When the time came, Ranyu might not even have the qualifications to cooperate with Luo Tian to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake, what more being the first to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake? How could Ranyu not be anxious when he thought of this? Luo Tian was definitely his worst enemy at the Black Wind Valley trial. The moment that Luo Tian landed on the seventh level, the Black Flood Dragon charged at Luo Tian with a roar. Just nice. Luo Tian snarled as all his bloodline and she burst outward. At that instant, Luo Tian appeared to have completely transformed into an ancient gigantic demon ape. He pounded his fists on his chest heavily, producing two deafening sounds that resembled heavenly drums being drummed on that reverberated one's ears. Boom! Luo Tian and the Black Flood Dragon clashed. Potent attacks were exchanged between the person and beast. This clash shook all the black mist in the seventh level, resulting in thundering roars. Looking from above, there were dark clouds rolling in a tumultuous fashion. Luo Tian was still no match for the Black Flood Dragon. Luo Tian was slammed into the cliff by the intense collision again. His blood began surging as he became short of breath. The Black Flood Dragon was also slightly injured. Its figure seemed to turn dimmer, but the Black Flood Dragon was formed from the Blood Dragon black gas in the first place. There was black mist everywhere on this level, so just one respiratory cycle was enough for it to quickly replenish the stamina it lost. It did not know tiredness at all. Unless one could kill the Black Flood Dragon in one fell swoop, it would keep on rejuvenating itself. A black flood dragon like this was powerful and undying. Just watching it made people feel like there was no way to defeat it. However, Luo Tian clashed head-on against it again and again. Luo Tian is truly terrifying. This black flood dragon seems to have endless vitality. But look, although Luo Tian is injured, his bloodline phantom image is also consuming the blood dragon black gas around him. A fire cloud state disciple said. Luo Tian was still able to consume the black gases to heal himself in such an intense battle. Luo Tian was a freak of nature. No wonder Luo Tian is able to consecutively enter the seventh level twice. His recovery speed is just too crazy. However, does Luo Tian plan on competing with the Black Flood Dragon on recovery rate? There is no way that he can beat it. At this moment, a Phoenix Fermiana State Disciple sneered and said, Senior Brother Luo's recovery rate naturally is no match for the Black Dragon, which is formed from the Black Mist itself, but so what? Senior Brother Luo can continuously improve and he can even have a breakthrough. Watch and see. In a few days, this black dragon will be devoured by senior brother Luo. The Phoenix Fermiana State Disciple was filled with confidence. Ranyu clenched his fists tightly when he heard these disciples' discussion. He had completely been overshadowed by Luo Tian. Although the Phoenix Fermiana State Disciple that spoke was rather arrogant, what he said may not be too far from the truth. At this moment, a red figure suddenly flashed in the seventh level's black gas. Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake Luo Tian caught a glimpse of it and immediately, his eyes focused on it. Whoosh! The sharp sound of air tearing resounded. Luo Tian did not move his body, but the long tail on his back was whipped out as it twirled and flew at the Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake. Upon seeing this situation, everyone felt a jolt in their hearts. Luo Tian was too crazy. He was still recuperating. In front of him, there was still the black dragon that was about to recover, but he had the guts to make a move on the intermediary spirit blood snake. The intermediary spirit blood snake was not something that could be easily messed with. But it appeared that Luo Tian was not afraid of injury. Even if he was injured by the intermediary spirit blood snake again, it would be nothing. The intermediary spirit blood snake was still not something that could be easily captured. As it sensed Luo Tian's tail twirling over, it made an abrupt leap and disappeared in a red flash of light. It did not clash with Luo Tian's tail. With the intermediary spirit blood snake's cautious personality, it would avoid any head-on collisions if possible. 
The intermediary spirit blood snake is indeed a difficult catch. Luo Tian's tail might have missed, but he revealed a carefree laugh. He suddenly looked up and glanced at Song Mang, who was sitting high in the sky, and he said in an unrestrained manner, however, there are still 16 days left. This intermediary spirit blood snake will inevitably be mine. What he said was meant for Tsong Mang. Song Mang's lips curled up slightly as he revealed a fascinated smile. He was waiting to see the fun. On the sixth level of Black Wind Valley, Ran Yu's expression turned extremely ugly when he heard those words. Inevitable. Luo Tian was way too arrogant to say such strong words publicly. Ha ha ha, senior brother Luo Tian is right. The number one person of the Phoenix Fermiana state should be unrestrained in such a manner. A lackey of Luo Tian shouted loudly. From his point of view, the intermediary spirit blood snake at the Black Wind Valley trial was already in the bag for Luo Tian. When a Fire Cloud State disciple heard this, he could not help but quip to be so arrogant despite not catching the snake yet. Our Fire Cloud States Ranyu and Gu Luo are still resting. It's not too late to brag after they make their second attempt. Ha, huh, wait for your fire cloud states Ranyu and Guluo to make a second attempt? That would be tomorrow, or maybe the day after tomorrow? The lackey of Luo Tian, who spoke previously, said in disdain. When he said this, several Phoenix Fermiana state disciples laughed in unison. With Ranyu and Guluo's recovery rate, they probably won't have many shots at it even by the end of the trial. Another person mocked. The Fire Cloud State's disciples had ugly expressions on their faces, but they could not refute at all. As for Ranyu, his expression was grim, and he had killing intent in his eyes. He was also a proud person. He refused to cooperate with others, but it was true that he was inferior to Luo Tian. And if this went on any further, the intermediary spirit blood snake would truly be caught by Luo Tian. He suddenly looked at Di Yun and said, Junior brother E, let us cooperate. The partner Ran Yu chose was Yi Yun. Even though they were from the same fire cloud state, Ran Yu did not wish to cooperate with Gu Luo. Gu Luo's qualifications and cultivation time in the Heaven Fire Hall was in no way inferior to Ran Yu. Furthermore, Ran Yu did not dare say that he could beat the thin fellow in terms of strength. And most importantly of all, Gu Luo had a background he had a powerful faction behind him. Such a faction was something that Ranyu could not afford to offend. That meant that if he cooperated with Gu Luo and obtained the intermediary spirit blood snake, it was impossible for Ranyu to take it all for himself. It might even be taken away by Gu Luo, so his efforts might end up not yielding the desired outcome. In that case, Ranyu obviously wanted to cooperate with Yi Yun. Yi Yun was young, and he had a low cultivation level. Furthermore, he did not have any factions supporting him. He was absolutely weaker in terms of factional power and he was easier to control. Chapter 845, Who Do You Think You Are? Oh? Cooperate? Yi Yun was somewhat stunned. He looked at Ran Yu, as though he had met him for the first time. What did you just call me? Yi Yun found it amusing. This was the first time he heard Ran Yu address him so formally as Junior Brother Yi. Noticing how Yi Yun did not answer him and instead replied with a hint of sarcasm, Ran Yu frowned. He was a genius from the Xuxue Ran clan. He had set aside his differences to ask for Yi Yun's cooperation and he was planning on giving Yi Yun sufficient benefits in exchange, but Yi Yun's response appeared like he did not know any better. However, with a nemesis like Luo Tian, Ran Yu remained patient as he said, Junior brother Yi, I know you are upset with me, but this isn't the time to be entangled in these. Cooperate with me. You will be responsible for handling the black dragon, while I will capture the intermediary spirit blood snake. As long as you can last for about half a minute, I will most likely be able to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake. When the time comes, I will definitely pay junior brother E ample remunerations. By saying this, Ranyu did not conceal his thoughts. Many of the disciples in Black Wind Valley heard it. 
letting Yi Yun impede the Black Dragon, while Ran Yu captured the intermediary spirit Blood Snake? Ran Yu was being nefarious. Although Yi Yun could find his footing on the sixth level, his aspect totems were slightly injured. Getting Yi Yun to impede the Black Dragon was life threatening. And reading between the lines, Ran Yu was not planning on dividing the intermediary spirit Blood Snake with Yi Yun. This was reasonable. There was no way to split a treasure of that level. It was basically something that could only be earned by one person. Ample remuneration? Yi Yun laughed. Senior brother Ran, you seem to be mistaken. I'm not upset with you, it's you who has been targeting me all this time. I can't be bothered with all these lame matters, but now. Your plan sure is delightful. Letting me do things like restraining the Black Dragon while you are responsible for capturing the Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake. I presume that the Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake will be yours when the time comes, as for the remuneration you will give me, what would it be? Let me guess. Are they world stones? Yen's words were still filled with sarcasm, making Ran Yu's expression turn somewhat ugly. Yi Yun, the remuneration that I will give will certainly be to your satisfaction. My Shushue Ran clan is a large establishment and it has heritage that you can't even imagine. Will it even skim on your remuneration? The opportunities given to you by the Shushue Ran clan will allow your cultivation level to make a huge leap. Furthermore, if you were to help me this time, it is equivalent to helping the Shushue Ran clan. I, Ran Yu, will also owe you one. In the future, as long as you encounter any trouble in the Luo clan, the Shushue Ran clan will also help you. There's no need for me to elaborate further on being able to cling onto a large faction, right? Ran Yu used his family background as bait. The Shushue Ran clan was one of the few large family clans in the Luo clan. With Ran Yu saying this, many people looked at Yi Yun. In cultivation, warriors needed to pay attention to networking. Being alone resulted in receiving very few resources. It was easy to suffer a lot while training outside, and they might even end up dying. A smart person would seize the opportunity to cling to a large clan. For a person like Laia, he hankered for the chance to cling onto the Shushue Ran clan, but Ranyu had never given him such a chance. Laiev was a mixed fey, a hybrid of heaven and earth fey. Although his family clan's power was pretty good, it was far weaker than the Shushue Ran clan. If not, Laiev would not have felt the pinch for the over 100 world stones that he owed to the point of vomiting blood. Seeing that Yi Yun had such an opportunity, even Laiev began to turn envious for Yi Yun. At this moment, Yi Yun suddenly laughed. The Shushue Ran clan was a large family clan but unfortunately, he did not think too highly of it. Yi Yun's sights were very high. How could the Shushue Ran clan have the qualifications for him to cling on to? Yi Yun did not say those words out. He knew very well that with his present cultivation level, he was just a trivial ant in front of the Shushue Ran clan. If he said those words out loud, he would only win the derision of others. Although Yi Yun did not say it out, Ran Yu could figure out a bit of Yi Yun's thoughts from his expression. Yi Yun, do you think you will truly skyrocket at the Luo Divine Hall trials? You are too naive. With your performance at the ancient Fei edifice, it is just satisfactory in the eyes of the Luo clan royalty. But that is antecedent on you having a powerful bloodline. You just managed to find your footing on the sixth level of Black Wind Valley, so to the Luo clan royalty, who values ancient Fey bloodlines, they would not even give you a second look. Do you think that you would be valued by the royal family? You are still far from that. Now, with my Shushue clan soliciting you, you even look down on my Shushue Ran clan. Don't you have an exaggerated opinion of your own abilities? Ran Yu was furious. However, what he said sounded reasonable to most people. The Shushue Ran clan was a large family clan. There were a few similar family clans in the Luo clan. However, a young genius like Yi Yun was worthless. The Luo clan had 196 states. 
It had plenty of geniuses, and batch after batch were produced every century. These geniuses might not even fully mature before their death. Yi Yun laughed. The Shushui Ran clan is big, but who do you think you are in the Shushui Ran clan? You are just a scion in the family clan at best. You can't even enter the seventh level of Black Wind Valley, so I guess you don't amount to much in your family clan. If not, you would have already been in the royal capital. Yi Yun's words had hit Ran Yu's soft spot. Ran Yu went livid immediately. There was a hint of coldness in his gaze as he said, Human punk, I lowered my status today to speak to you nicely, but you have scorned me time and time again. You have only managed to use tricks of your energy cultivation and aspect totem to stand here on the sixth level. Without your aspect totem, you would find it hard to even stand on the second level. You aren't worthy to mock me. I'm asking you one last time. Do you choose to cooperate with me? Ran Yu stared at Yi Yun as he minced his words. No one suspected that Ran Yu's last sentence were not containing a threat. Ran Yu was from the Shushui Ran clan after all. If he wanted to do harm to Yi Yun, with Yi Yun's low cultivation level, he was bound to suffer. Between the carrot and the stick, the Luo clan disciples present believed that if they were placed in Yi Yun's shoes, they would likely have already agreed. They wanted to see how Yi Yun would reply. However, what Yi Yun said next nearly made them bite off their tongues. Yi Yun glanced at Ran Yu and said with a sneer, Even if I need to cooperate with others in the future, I will not cooperate with a loser. With you coming along, other than being an additional burden, I guess you won't be able to play much of a role. What? All the Luo clan disciples' disciples present were immediately dumbfounded. Was Yi Yun mad? He actually called Ran Yu a loser? To scold him in public like that, wasn't he completely offending Ran Yu? Furthermore, Yi Yun did not have the qualifications to make such a comment. Didn't he just manage to stand on the sixth level? Before they could even react, something that nearly made them pop their eyeballs happened. They watched helplessly as Yi Yun leaped down from the sixth level to the seventh level of Black Wind Valley. This is. Everyone was astounded. Yi Yun actually jumped onto the seventh level? Chapter 846 The Growl from Ancient Times Back at the sixth level, Yi Yun's aspect totems were slightly injured and he had yet to establish a firm footing. People believed that even if Yi Yun would cooperate with Ran Yu, he would take at least a week or so in the sixth level to find his footing by familiarizing himself fully with the Black Mist. After his body's lifeblood was strengthened, then he would dare enter the seventh level. But for him to enter just like that, was he mad? Ran Yu had nearly gone berserk because of Yi Yun's words, but with Yi Yun immediately leaping downwards, he was also left stunned. He subconsciously took a few steps to chase after him, but he witnessed Yi Yun's figure submerging into the black mist and landing on the seventh level's bedrock. At this moment, Luo Tian was also on the seventh level. He looked incredulously at Yi Yun's arrival. Why did this punk come down? In front of Luo Tian, the black dragon had rapidly recovered. It was mostly done with its recovery, and it was planning on charging at Luo Tian and devouring the fey with a gigantic demon ape bloodline. However, it never expected that a human would suddenly come down. From the looks of it, this human was much weaker than the fey with the gigantic demon ape bloodline. The black specter shadows in Black Wind Valley would always start off with the weaker ones. Thus, the black dragon roared and charged at Yi Yun. It seemed bent on swallowing Yi Yun first to recover itself to its peak state before it would slowly deal with Luo Tian. This scene made all the cultivators in Black Wind Valley perk up. The black specter flood dragon had finally reached Yi Yun and they wanted to see how Yi Yun was going to block it. Every Luo clan disciples stared with widened eyes, afraid of missing the next scene. They knew that Yi Yun's physical strength was lacking, but they were also skeptical that Yi Yun would send himself to his death. As the black dragon pounced on him, the demon gases rolled as an overwhelming pressure could be felt. Shao. Roar. From behind Yi Yun, the three-legged golden crow and the nine neonate aspect totems charged out together. 
the three-legged golden crow spread its wings. Its wingspan was dozens of meters wide and it wrapped around Eeyun like a golden firewall. The golden crow's body was like an intense inferno as rolling waves of blood surged over. As for the black specter flood dragon, it was even fiercer. It soared into the air and lashed its tail out like a whip, striking the three-legged golden crow's body. Boom! An explosion that sounded like the rupturing of mountains and rivers could be heard. The three-legged golden crow shrieked as its body was sent flying by the black specter flood dragon's tail. The black specter flood dragon was indeed terrifying. The three-legged golden crow was no match for it. However, after the three-legged golden crow was struck by the dragon's tail, it had also clawed at the dragon's tail. The dragon tail, which was a manifestation of black gas, was injured with three scratches from the golden crow. It even began to bleed black blood. The flood dragon that was a manifestation of the black gas could actually bleed? At this moment, no one bothered considering this. They saw that after the black dragon repelled the golden crow, it charged at the nine neonate. The nine neonate howled as it leaped up and it engaged with the black specter flood dragon in an intense battle midair. Instantly, black winds howled as it radiated in all directions. The nine snakeheads were fighting against a single flood dragon. However, the nine neonate was completely suppressed by the flood dragon. The flood dragon's defenses were terrifying. The nine heads of the nine neonate bit on it, but they could not break its defenses. Ka ka ka. The flood dragon coiled its body around the nine neonate. Its immense body wrangled around the nine neonate's nine heads. It was trying to strangle the nine neonate to death. No one doubted the flood dragon's power from the terror it revealed. Pa. 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 A series of explosions could be heard from the nine neonate totem's body. Its projection started to flicker and dim, as though the nine neonate was truly about to be strangled to death by the black flood dragon. Once the nine neonate was utterly defeated by the black flood dragon, its master, Yi Yun, would also be inflicted with serious injuries. It would take him a long period of time to reconstruct the nine neonate totem. And this was on the premise that Yi Yun was able to safely escape from the clutches of the Black Flood Dragon. However, how could the Black Flood Dragon give Yi Yun such a chance? Upon seeing this scene, Ran Yu roared with laughter. What a retard. I was wondering how powerful you are. To dare to shamelessly call me a loser. Now, you are just courting death by jumping onto the seventh level. The nine neonate is destroyed and the three-legged golden crow is seriously injured. By losing the nine neonate and the golden crow totems, you are like a tiger that has lost its fangs. How can that weak body of yours withstand the black flood dragon? If you die in Black Wind Valley, your corpse will be devoured and you will be completely annihilated. Ha ha! Previously, Ren Yu had been mocked by Yi Yun without appreciating the favor he had shown him and he was already fuming like a volcano. Now, seeing that Yi Yun was about to be devoured by the black dragon, he could no longer maintain his usually mild-mannered appearance and he said those nasty words. Indeed, in the opinion of the Luo clan disciples, Yi Yun had relied on his aspect totem to land in the seventh level. Once he lost his aspect totems, Yi Yun's physical strength was something completely trivial. Even Luo Tian and Gu Luo's bodies would be quickly devoured by the monsters on the seventh level, what more Yi Yun? Roar! Roar! The nine neonate issued an angry roar. The black flood dragon opened its jaws and it was about to snap through the nine neonate's neck. It would then devour the nine neonate before devouring Yi Yun. That was what would all happen in an instant. But at that instant, an indescribable deep growl suddenly came from inside Yi Yun's body. This sound was very soft to begin with, but it gradually became louder. It was rugged and powerful, as though it came from the ancient times after traversing the long rivers of time. The growl was mysterious and deep. It easily pierced through the barriers in Black Wind Valley and echoed everywhere, reaching everyone's ears. This sound seemed to have a strange magical effect. 
It was not as ear-splitting as Luo Tian's ancient gigantic demon ape's roar, but it seemed to resound in everyone's hearts. It resonated with their bloodlines, which was an alarming feeling. A large number of Luo clan disciples were puzzled, but someone suddenly thought of something as his expression changed drastically. At this moment, a plume of black smoke emerged from behind Yi Yun. The black smoke was sparse and faint, but what was unbelievable was that after the black smoke floated out, it began to subtly distort space. This was the spatial dimension of the twelve Empyrean heavens, so how could it be distorted by a plume of black smoke? Besides, this black smoke was generating a strong resonance with the Luo clan disciples' blood. Some of them even found themselves having difficulty breathing. And the weaker their bloodlines were, the resonance and discomfort would become more intense. Some of the weaker ones even had the feeling of kneeling on the ground and prostrating themselves to Yun, or to put it more accurately, the black smoke. Even Song Mang, who was seating mid-air, stood up at this moment. His eyes, that were like a deep pool of water flickered. He quietly looked at the plume of black smoke behind Yun, unable to comprehend how such an inconceivable matter could happen. He had determined that despite the plume of black smoke looking very thin, it was actually very heavy. The plume of black smoke was enough to crush mountains. It's indeed that feeling. Suddenly, someone shouted amidst the crowd. Ancient Fae, it's the appearance of an ancient mighty Fae. It's not those heaven Fae with thin bloodlines who summon fake ancient Fae phantom images through their own bloodlines. It is the true apparition of the mighty Fae from ancient times. Even if it has 1% of the ancient mighty Fae's power, it is still a true ancient Fae. This sudden voice immediately gave many people a shock. What? Ancient Fae. What is this joke? Everyone turned to look at the Luo clan disciple that spoke. That person was from the Phoenix Fermian estate. He was originally from an ancient Heaven Fae family clan. At his family ceremonies where they paid their respects to the family clan's ancestors, there would be rare occasions when their ancestor would take up form during the ceremony. And at that moment, the feeling that the ancestor gave was identical to the black smoke behind a Yun. And at this moment, there was no need to say anything else, as they could see the scene with their own eyes. This scene made all the Luo clan disciples present gape their mouths in shock, as they were rendered speechless. They saw the faint black smoke that emerged behind a Yun slowly take the form of a fuzzy flood dragon head. Be it the gigantic demon ape bloodline phantom image that Luo Tian conjured, the Rani fish bloodline phantom that image Ran Yu conjured, or even the two aspect totems that Yi Yun summoned himself, this phantom image condensed from black smoke was just too unrealistic. All the phantom images from before were extremely realistic, as though a real ancient fey had appeared? But this phantom image was so fuzzy that it was difficult to perceive. But they still managed to make it out. This black-misted phantom image had taken the form of an ancient heaven devouring flood dragon. Ancient fey? A true ancient fey. No other race knew better than the fey race about the meaning behind these two words. Although the Luo clan disciples present would always have the words ancient fey bloodline hang from the corner of their mouths all the time, and would frequently summon their ancient fey bloodline to offer sacrifices to their ancient fey ancestors in rituals, not a single one of them had ever seen ancient fey. Heaven fey family clans had been passed down for eons. Whatever bloodline they had was thinned out, which was also the reason for why it was difficult for the heaven fey to awaken their ancient bloodline. The ancient Fae were living beings born at the birth of the universe billions of years ago. Their bodies were existences that were naturally condensed by heavenly Tao laws. Although there were a myriad of ancient Fae, every kind was extremely limited in number. Some extremely special ancient Fae species might only have one Fae in the entire universe. Some ancient Fae species were greater in number, but they were still a handful. Usually, only the death of one would give birth to a new one. Up to this day, due to a variety of reasons, the numbers of ancient Fey were dwindling in number. This accentuated the rarity of ancient Fey. Under this situation, a true ancient Fey phantom image emerged behind Yi Yun. Even though the phantom image was extremely fuzzy and thin, 
The shock it gave everyone was a thousand times more intense than Luo Tian's conjuring of the ancient gigantic demon ape. Ancient Fei, a true ancient Fei? He only absorbed the ancient Fei bone for four days, how can he conjure the ancient Fei phantom image? On the sixth level of Black Wind Valley, Ran Yu was feeling extremely agitated. He knew very well that the ancient Fei bone that Yi Yun had previously consumed was the heaven devouring flood dragon's bone. But just absorbing an ancient Fei bone allowed him to conjure an ancient Fei phantom image? Although ancient Fei bones were extremely valuable, there were geniuses in the entire Luo clan that would receive ancient Fei bones as rewards. After all, an ancient Fei was large in size. Ancient Fei with bodies thousands of miles long were not uncommon. Although ancient Fei were rare, an ancient Fei would leave behind a large number of bones after its death. However, it was unheard of that any of these Luo clan geniuses who absorbed the ancient Fei bone were able to conjure an ancient Fei phantom image from absorbing a piece of ancient Fei bone once. Ran Yu found it unbelievable. Similarly, Luo Tian could not accept it either. At this moment, he was still maintaining his ancient gigantic demon ape form, but when he saw the ancient Fei phantom image that Yi Yun had conjured, he felt that his own bloodline was resonating with it, as though it would be drawn out by the ancient Fei phantom image. Clearly, the gigantic demon ape bloodline that he was proud of was far inferior to that faint black smoke behind Yi Yun. This was too great a blow to them. Amongst the Luo clan disciples present, there were quite a few who were proud of their family history, flaunting their ancient Fei ancestors' bloodline. They had despised Yi Yun because of his identity as a human, but the resulting outcome was that the human, Yi Yun, had conjured what they viewed as their ancestor, the ancient Fei, that they worshipped at ritual ceremonies. And they as so-called progeny of the ancient Fei had been abandoned. How could anyone accept that? However, at this moment on the seventh level of Black Wind Valley, the Black Spectre Shadow's reaction made all the Luo clan disciples present have an ugly expression on their faces. They saw that the Black Spectre Flood Dragon looked afraid. It had already dislodged itself from the Nine Neonate, and it faced the ancient heaven devouring Flood Dragon image like it was facing a nemesis. For an existence like the Black Spectre, it was condensed spontaneously by the Black Mist over eons. Its perception of ancient Fei was a natural instinct, so it was able to more accurately sense one than the Luo clan disciples present. With the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon image appearing, it felt a deep sense of apprehension. Although it was also a flood dragon, and the heaven devouring flood dragon was also a flood dragon, they were two life forms that were on two separate levels on life's natural order. The black specter's shadow only took the form of a flood dragon. It could even take the form of extreme young illumination, much less a flood dragon, but it would be useless. This was the difference between a true flood dragon and a fake flood dragon. At this moment, the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon roared and it charged at the black specter. The moment that this ancient fey beast, that had not stirred for billions of years, had awoken, it was the arrival of a raging storm. Who? 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 A strong wind blew from every direction as the sky changed color. In the heaven-devouring flood dragon's mouth, a giant vortex appeared. All the black gases and black mist were swept into the vortex. The Luo clan disciples, who were on the fourth and fifth level of Black Wind Valley, could feel the dreadful suction force of this vortex. Their expressions changed as they activated the power of their bloodline to withstand it. This is... Heaven Devouring The two words Heaven Devouring was a description of the Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon's laws that it had sublimed. Heaven Devouring was a terrifying devouring law. Such a terrifying suction force swept everywhere, as though a black hole had appeared out of nowhere in the the seventh level of Black Wind Valley. Large amounts of black gas were devoured by the Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon, but its phantom image form remained the same. It did not seem to become any more corporeal. However, Yi Yun, who had conjured the heaven devouring flood dragon, had obtained a huge benefit. Yi Yun had little lifeblood power left in his body. Just conjuring the ancient Fei phantom image alone had drawn out all of the lifeblood power stored in his body from before. 
This lifeblood power was gathered using the nine neonate and three-legged golden crow previously. If not, it was impossible for him to handle the conjuring of the heaven-devouring flood dragon phantom image. But now, the heaven-devouring flood dragon was devouring the blackness like a maniac, which was greatly nourishing for Eun. Eun felt that his emptied-out lifeblood was increasing rapidly in a short period of time, and soon, it was filled to the brim. Next, the lifeblood was forcefully merged into his flesh and blood, as his body began to reforge itself. Eun's bodily strength was indeed lacking. Although he had used the purple crystal to absorb the ancient fey bone, allowing his body to be injected with the heaven-devouring flood dragon's bloodline, which allowed him to conjure the heaven-devouring flood dragon phantom image, Eun's actual physique was just too weak. If Eun's body could become more powerful, there would be innumerable benefits that would follow. At this moment, the ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon had roared once and started flying at the black specter shadow. Although the Black Spectre Shadow feared the heaven-devouring flood dragon, it could not sit idle when facing a life and death crisis. It roared and charged at the heaven-devouring flood dragon. It wanted to put up a desperate fight. However, the differences were just too great. It was a difference in life's natural order, resulting in the Black Spectre Shadow being unable to use more than 20% of its power. She La. The heaven-devouring flood dragon bit down and snapped off a large chunk of flesh and blood from the black specter shadow. Immediately following that, its tail whipped at the black specter, causing wind and clouds to stir, as the black specters began to violently shake. As for that piece of flesh and blood, it was directly swallowed into the heaven-devouring flood dragon's stomach, and digested to become a part of its lifeblood's power. Upon seeing this scene, the Luo clan disciples felt a chill rise up from the soles of their feet. The heaven-devouring flood dragon had managed to directly devour a portion of the black specter. Yi Yun Yi Yun went down Black Wind Valley, but until the very end, he has yet to use the power of his body. From the beginning, he used his aspect totem, and now, he's using, the power of the ancient phase bloodline. A heaven fey disciple from the Phoenix Fermian estate said. As he spoke, his Adam's apple was twitching. As they were sure that Eun's physical strength was lacking, many of them were waiting for Eun to suffer when his aspect totems could no longer sustain the barrage of attacks. After all, Heaven Earth Yuanchi was basically useless in Black Wind Valley. But now, despite his aspect totem being unable to sustain the attacks any longer, Eun still did not use his body. He had summoned a more terrifying ancient fey bloodline power to replace the aspect totems. The Black Wind Valley was a test of the fey race's bloodline. The fey race bloodline was always something that the fey race was proud of. But what other bloodline could be more noble and valuable than a true ancient fey's bloodline? Compared to Eon's ancient fey bloodline, their tiny bit of fey bloodline became jokes. Chapter 847 Devouring the Black Spectre Flood Dragon Boom! 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 The ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon and the black specter shadow snapped their jaws at each other. The battle between the two flood dragons caused turmoil on the seventh level, and everywhere their bodies passed, rocks were shattered, with the black mist quickly filling the void left behind. The ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon was extremely terrifying. It had a smoke-like body, but it contained tremendous amounts of power. Its every strike could invoke the powers of the heaven and earth, as though the source of heaven and earth energy was wherever the ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon was. Clang! The ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon bit at the black flood dragon, issuing the sound of metal being hit. The black flood dragon grimaced in pain, as one of its claws was ripped off. Dragon scales and dragon blood was splattered everywhere. The black flood dragon roared fiercely, but it no longer had the strength to battle the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon. Hence, ignoring its injuries, it tried escaping deeper into Black Wind Valley. Don't you leave. Yi Yun's eyes flickered. Although the black flood dragon was a fake flood dragon, it was the embodiment of a large amount of black misted energy essence on the seventh level of Black Wind Valley. Be it for the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon or himself, it was a great supplement. Stay behind. 
with a thought from Yi Yun. Boom! The ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon's tail swept down like a heavenly pillar that collapsed. It struck the black flood dragon's back heavily. Kacha! The sound of joints breaking resounded like thunder. The black flood dragon's back had been fractured by the ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon's tail strike. The ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon looked like smoke, but it was able to crush mountains, that was the proof of its heaviness. With it striking down like that, it was like a divine mountain crushing down on the black flood dragon's back. There was no way for the black dragon to withstand it. Suck! The ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon opened its jaws and a black vortex appeared in its mouth once again. This black vortex distorted space, and the surrounding black mist was all sucked towards it. Heaven Devouring Laws The legendary true ancient fey was able to devour an entire world. Hence its name, Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon. No one knew if the legends were true. But now, the Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon phantom image that Yi Yun conjured was more than enough to devour the Black Flood Dragon. The Black Flood Dragon struggled with all its strength, but it was completely meaningless. It was eventually devoured by the Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon. Roar! After devouring the Black Flood Dragon, the Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon let out a satisfied growl. The Black Flood Dragon was completely digested into essence energy to replenish itself. As a result, its fuzzy body also became slightly more corporeal. And far behind the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon, Ian suddenly felt his blood vessels go into turmoil. His body felt like it was a drum being hit, as it issued explosive sounds. The black flood dragon's essence energy had mostly been absorbed by the heaven devouring flood dragon, but there were still some portions that were injected into Ian's body. The violent force surged into Ian's meridians and it moved around crazily. Yi Yun's meridians had been widened several times after he absorbed the ancient Fei Bone. Furthermore, their resilience was far stronger than before. If not, just the surging of the energy through his meridians would be something that Yi Yun's meridians could not withstand. He would have needed to use the purple crystal to suppress the energy. How could the pleasure derived from the energy's forceful impacts and cleansing of his body be compared to absorbing the energy from the purple crystal stores? It feels great! Yi Yun shouted out loud as he clenched his fists. He felt as though all his energy was filled with inexhaustible energy. The energy was like a roaring tsunami that swept across wave after wave in an incessant manner. Yi Yun, he devoured the Black Flood Dragon on the seventh level. Seeing Yi Yun's aura change and the lifeblood stirring in his body, all the Luo clan disciples present could only stare helplessly. They had seen how powerful the Black Flood Dragon was, but now, it had been devoured. Although it was mainly devoured by the Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon, as its master, Yi Yun benefited greatly from it. At this moment, the Fire Cloud State and Phoenix Fermiana State disciples were filled with jealousy and envy. At the same Black Wind Valley trial, they could only drink a figurative soup, while Yi Yun had managed to eat all the figurative meat. After devouring the Black Flood Dragon, Yi Yun began to meditate on the seventh level and he began to refine the Black Flood Dragon's power. And some of the energy had been distributed to his two aspect totems, the Nine Neonate and Three-Legged Golden Crow, allowing them to begin to recover from their injuries. They were not seriously injured, so it was very easy for them to recover. With that, Yi Yun began to cultivate on the seventh level of Black Wind Valley. This was cultivation on the seventh level of Black Wind Valley. People had previously believed that Yi Yun's body was weak, so it would be pretty good if he could find his footing on the fifth level and be able to probe the sixth level for short periods of time. But now, Yi Yun had found his footing on the seventh level, and he was leisurely cultivating. And most ironical of all was that they had guessed correctly. Ian's body was indeed not powerful enough, but his bloodline was heaven defying. So, what if his body wasn't strong enough? Iyun did not even need to use his body to withstand the Black Spectre Shadow. Just his bloodline alone was enough. At this moment, Luo Tian was still opposite Iyun. 
He felt like he was a stake erected on the seventh level and he was extremely embarrassed. He seemed to be an indomitable force and the center of attention, but now, he did not even know what he should do. How was Yi Yun able to absorb the ancient Fei Bone to such a degree? Luo Tian was left in wonder. Yi Yun, a human, was even better than the geniuses at the Luo clan's royal capital after absorbing an ancient Fei Bone. At Black Wind Valley, they depended on stimulating their Heaven Fei bloodline to withstand the Black Mist, while Yi Yun had stimulated an ancient Fei bloodline. How could they even compete with that? This was already on two disparate levels. Luo Tian found it excruciating to stay on in the seventh level, so he dejectedly returned to the sixth level. And at this moment, the seventh level was beginning to produce more Black Spectre lifeforms. These Black Spectre surged from all directions to the seventh level to occupy it. Previously, the Black Spectre Flood Dragon had occupied the entire seventh level. And probably because it was too powerful, it had demarcated its own territory. And now, with an increase in the number of Black Spectre shadows, it became chaotic. However, these Black Spectres did not dare to approach Yi Yun. They had previously seen how the Black Flood Dragon, which was much more powerful than them, had been devoured by Yi Yun and the Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon. They wouldn't be silly enough to serve themselves up as food. In time, Yi Yun began to casually sit down on the seventh level with no Black Spectre shadow daring to mess with him. As time passed, the Black Flood Dragon's essence in Eeyun's body was mostly digested. And at this moment, phew! A bright red beam flashed in the thick depths of the Black Mist. It was like an agile fish that was swimming and twirling quickly in the Black Mist. Eeyun, who was meditating, suddenly opened his eyes as he looked at the red beam hidden in the Black Mist. Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake Compared to the Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake, the Black Flood Dragon was worth nothing. If he could capture the Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake, his body would improve once again. Furthermore, his energy cultivation was directly tied to his body. Eeyun's overall strength would undoubtedly make a quantum leap. Eeyun took a deep breath and he slowly stood up. Chapter 848 Capturing the Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake It's the Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake. It has appeared again. With Eeyun causing quite an impressive stir, the Luo clan disciples present were paying a great deal of attention to what was happening on the seventh level. Some of them even ignored their cultivation. The Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake that suddenly appeared did not escape their eyes. Furthermore, the intermediary spirit blood snake had a special aura, so it was difficult not to notice it. The intermediary spirit blood snake was the most important opportunity of the Black Wind Valley trial. Who didn't want it? And now, they saw Yi Yin stand up. He was about to make his move on the intermediary spirit blood snake. Yi Yun is trying to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake. Lord Song Mang had intended to pose a difficult problem for Luo Tian, Gu Luo, and Ran Yu, but now, Yi Yun alone might be able to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake. I think it's almost in the bag. The most difficult obstacle was the Black Spectre Flood Dragon and it has already been torn apart and consumed by Yi Yun and the Ancient Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon. Even the Flood Dragon was eaten, so it shouldn't be difficult to eat a tiny snake, right? I wonder what Ranyu and company are thinking. It seems like it has nothing to do with them anymore. The Luo clan disciples present discussed as some of them could not help but cast their gazes at Ranyu. Naturally, Ranyu also heard their conversations. His face went blue. The saying of accompanying the crown prince in studies an outsider in a competition with no possible hope of winning was relevant to Ranyu back in the fire cloud state. Back then, he was the crown prince, with people accompanying him in his studies. But when did it become his turn to accompany others in studies, making him have no possible hope of winning? The MT Azure Billow training was a torment for Ranyu. At this moment, Eeyun moved. Against the layers of black mist, and the intermediary spirit blood snake within it, a rugged and powerful dragon's roar came from Eeyun's chest. 
Ong. A single horn flood dragon rushed out from behind Yun and it pounced straight at the intermediary spirit blood snake. Yun had conjured the heaven devouring flood dragon phantom image once again. The heaven devouring flood dragon was an ancient mighty fey. Its appearance and surging ancient fey aura were detected by the intermediary spirit blood snake. The intermediary spirit blood snake was a spirit of the seventh level of the Black Wind Valley. It sensed a threat, and with a sharp sound, it transformed into a stream of light, drilling deep into the black mist. The intermediary spirit blood snake was extremely fast. Although the heaven devouring flood dragon's bloodline was powerful, in terms of speed, it was inferior to the intermediary spirit blood snake. This was also mainly the reason why the intermediary spirit blood snake was so hard to deal with. It was located on the seventh level of Black Wind Valley, where danger lurked everywhere. With its astounding speed, trying to capture it was very, very difficult. Noticing that the intermediary spirit blood snake was about to disappear into the deep depths of the black mist, the heaven devouring flood dragon opened its mouth. Heaven devouring. Woo woo woo. A large black vortex appeared in its mouth as the surrounding black mist was sucked towards it. 90% of the heaven devouring flood dragon's engulfing law was afflicted on the intermediary spirit blood snake. Instantly, the intermediary spirit blood snake's speed was greatly reduced. Hiss. The intermediary spirit blood snake issued a sharp shrill. It was so sharp that it was like an arrow had shot right into one's eardrums. Even the cultivators on the fourth and fifth levels of Black Wind Valley could not help but cover their ears when they heard it. However, regardless of how much the intermediary spirit blood snake hissed, it was unable to free itself from the suction of the heaven devouring flood dragon. The ancient heaven devouring flood dragon was known to be able to devour an entire world. Its engulfing law was top amongst the ancient fae. Furthermore, with the difference in life's natural order, the intermediary spirit blood snake could not withstand it any longer. Not only could the intermediary spirit blood snake not fly deep into the black mist, it was bound by the heaven devouring flood dragon's engulfing powers. It was being pulled bit by bit to the heaven devouring flood dragon's mouth. When they saw this, the people were secretly horrified. They knew that the intermediary spirit blood snake was not easy to deal with. It had once penetrated Gu Luo's palm, and with its unparalleled speed, even without the Black Spectre Flood Dragon on the seventh level, it was still not easy to capture the intermediary spirit Blood Snake. The Heaven Devouring Flood Dragon lived up to its name. It was a true ancient mighty fey. Just its phantom image alone was already terrifying. Hiss. The intermediary spirit Blood Snake hissed crazily as its body turned redder and redder as though channels of blood began to emanate across the intermediary spirit blood snake's body. Oh! Eun's mind was connected to the heaven-devouring flood dragon. He suddenly sensed that the small intermediary spirit blood snake was undergoing some kind of change. Its body was slowly accumulating energy, and its red body seemed to emanate a special smell. And at this moment, a few black specter shadows seemed to be attracted by this smell and they began to approach the seventh level from the eighth level of Black Wind Valley. Upon seeing this, Yi Yun knitted his brows. The black specter shadows that came from the eighth to the seventh floor were most likely the weaker ones from the eighth level. In terms of strength, they were likely no match for the black specter flood dragon that had dominated the seventh level alone. If this was any other time, they would have been fodder for the heaven-devouring flood dragon. However, at this point, with changes invariable, it made Yi Yun's heart sink. He had to finish it as soon as possible. Dragon Tail Yi Yun bellowed. The heaven-devouring flood dragon let out a low growl as its body charged out suddenly, and its gigantic dragon tail swept downwards. Boom! Like the collapse of a mountain, the extremely heavy dragon tail slammed into the intermediary spirit blood snake's body. The snake obviously could not withstand such a strike. Its body quivered as some of its scales broke apart with blood spurting out of the wounds. As for the black specter shadows that came from the eighth level, 
they were stunned by the heaven-devouring flood dragon's attack. They did not dare to attack momentarily. The ancient heaven-devouring flood dragon was just too powerful. It was a true ancient fey after all. Its aura gave pressure from the difference in life's natural order to the black specters that were condensed from Black Wind Valley's lifeblood. From the looks of it, the intermediary spirit blood snake's final struggle had been ruthlessly crushed by the heaven-devouring flood dragon. If this went on, the intermediary spirit blood snake was definitely eons. The Luo clan disciples on the fourth and fifth levels were extremely jealous seeing this scene. As for Ranyu, who was on the sixth level, he looked livid as a beam flashed in his eyes. Ranya knew very well that if this continued, all the benefits in Black Wind Valley would be eons. Riches were obtained from taking risk. On the seventh level of Black Wind Valley, it appeared as though the heaven-devouring flood dragon had brought the situation under control, but in fact, the intermediary spirit blood snake was still struggling incessantly. There were several black specter shadows from the eighth level watching on with covetous looks. A tip of the scales would decide the true winner. Upon thinking about this, a wicked look flashed in Ranyu's eyes. He leaped down from the sixth level to the seventh level. Oh? Ranyu? People were surprised seeing the turn in events. Black Wind Valley's battle was a competition of bloodline. Ranyu's Rani Fish bloodline was much weaker than the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon. There was no way for him to intervene in the battle on the seventh level. Ranyu was no match for even the weakest black specter shadows from the eighth level. What's Ranyu going down for? He can't beat those black specters, and he can't attack Yun, or he would violate the rules of the trial. Everyone stared with widened eyes, afraid of missing this scene. Ranyu's sudden appearance opened up a new variable in what was a decided situation. Chapter 849, Shimmering Dragon Scales Eun obviously noticed Ran Yu's sudden barge onto the seventh level. At this moment, there was a storm brewing on the seventh level, and it was the critical moment in Eun's capturing of the intermediary spirit blood snake. Yet, Ran Yu had suddenly appeared, and the moment he landed, he charged straight at the intermediary spirit blood snake. Oh! Eun was caught by surprise. Was Ranyu charging at the intermediary spirit blood snake at this moment, an attempt to snatch the food from a tiger's jaws? In Black Wind Valley, Yuan Chi was useless against black specters. It was a contest between bloodline and physique. In terms of Yuan Chi, Ranyu had his Heaven Ascension Realm cultivation level, but when it came to bloodline, he was no match for the heaven devouring flood dragon at all. In nearly a blink of an eye, Ranyu had already rushed to the vicinity of the intermediary spirit blood snake. At this moment, people realized that his goal was not the intermediary spirit blood snake, but the few black specter shadows that came from the 8th level to 7th level. These black specter shadows were lusting for blood. They were summoned by the intermediary spirit blood snake to deal with the heaven-devouring flood dragon. However, they were also astounded by the heaven-devouring flood dragon and they did not dare to act rashly. Now, with Ranyu charging at them, they opened up their jaws and bit at Ranyu. They shall swallow Ranyu first. Who? 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 The black specter shadows charged forward together. Just as he was about to be surrounded by the black specters, Ranyu's face revealed a crazed look. Ha! Ranyu roared as the Rani fish bloodline appeared behind him. The power of his lifeblood surged and it increased rapidly. That Ranyu! Everyone was taken aback when they saw this scene. Although the Black Spectre shadows were inferior to the Black Spectre flood dragon that dominated the seventh level, Ranyu was still no match for them. Just as people though Ranyu was trying to make a desperate struggle to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake, Ranyu suddenly retreated and he turned around to escape. A few black specter shadows chased Ranyu without letting up. The heaven-devouring flood dragon was not something that they could deal with, but the Rani fish bloodline conjured by Ranyu was something that they coveted. If they could devour the Rani fish bloodline, they would also enhance their strength. Ranyu flew very quickly. 
With the Black Spectre Flood Dragon slain by Yi Yun, the resistance on the seventh level had been greatly reduced. After Ran Yu ran a couple hundred feet, he suddenly turned and rushed towards Yi Yun. Oh! Everyone came to a sudden realization as they understood Ran Yu's plans. Ran Yu was trying to divert the danger. Yi Yun was powerful, but his power actually came from the ancient heaven devouring Flood Dragon bloodline. As for Yi Yun's body? It was too weak. Yi Yun had to depend on his aspect totems to even withstand the 4th and 5th level, much less the 7th level. Without the heaven devouring Flood Dragon bloodline, Yi Yun was nothing. Previously, due to the threat of the heaven devouring Flood Dragon bloodline, the Black Spectre shadows did not dare approach Yi Yun, and now, the heaven devouring Flood Dragon was in a battle with the intermediary spirit Blood Snake which meant Yi Yun was isolated. Yi Yun's body itself was his greatest weakness. That Ran Yu is too despicable. A Phoenix Fermiana State Disciple said. Ran Yu did not have plans on profiteering from taking advantage of the situation, he wanted to add insult to injury. It was too difficult for him to profiteer from taking advantage of the situation. However, if he was there to cause damage, things would be much easier. As long as he caused Yi Yun severe injuries or even caused his death, the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon that Yi Yun controlled would lose its mobility and it would not put up the slightest threat. Then, wouldn't Black Wind Valley be monopolized by Ran Yu and company? They could slowly capture the intermediary spirit blood snake. What are you saying? What do you mean despicable? That is the smartest strategy. A fundamental solution leveraging on the strength of others. Senior brother Rant's move is directly striking at Yi Yun's weakness. Furthermore, senior brother Ran will not be directly attacking Yi Yun, so the rules of the trial aren't violated. It's the true character of a fierce and ambitious person. Yi Yun is doomed, ha ha ha. Laia's maniac laughter resounded. Having seen Yi Yun ride the waves of success all this while, how could he not gloat when he finally saw Yi Yun getting into trouble? In a split second, Ran Yu had already arrived in front of Yi Yun. Yi Yun could clearly see the hideous grin on Ran Yu's lips. Just as Ran Yu was about to turn and escape, Yi Yun had already guessed Ran Yu's intentions. By using the Black Spectre shadows to kill him, he could avoid violating the rule of not attacking other disciples undertaking the trial. It was indeed the best method. Yi Yun, go to hell. If there is anything to blame, blame it on your body being too weak. Ha ha ha. Ran Yu roared. He suddenly leaped when he was just a few meters away from Yi Yun. He leaped over Yi Yun. Junior brother Yi. Upon seeing this scene, Luo Fongling could not help but scream. Yi Yun's mind turned solemn. His mental energy had been connected to the heaven devouring flood dragon at the moment that Ran Yu charged at him. As such, he let all the power of his lifeblood explode. Boom! The heaven devouring flood dragon's shadow exploded into a ball of black smoke. At the same time, the black specters that were following Ran Yu charged forward. They noticed Yi Yun and they did not have any intentions of dodging as he watched the rolling black winds. It was as though they could devour Yi Yun's lifeblood in an instant. Come! With a loud shout from Yi Yun. Boom! The black smoke that the heaven devouring flood dragon had exploded into burst across the air like a heavenly bridge. It was like a black waterfall falling from the sky as it charged straight into Yi Yun's body. At that instant, Yi Yun's body issued crackling explosive sounds. The heaven devouring flood dragon's black smoke gathered on Yi Yun's body as it formed black scales that were rapidly duplicating themselves. That was dragon scales. Dragon scales began to appear on Yi Yun's cheeks as they began to cover his entire body. Instantly, Yi Yun's body shimmered with a black divine glow. A rugged and powerful aura emanated out of Yi Yun's body. It was like a primordial desolate world was sealed in Yi Yun's body. And now, the world had been opened up. The aura of an ancient fate began to emanate out like a storm. This is. 
All the Luo Plan disciples in Black Wind Valley were left in shock. The aura that emanated out of Yi Yun's body made all their Fei race bloodlines resonate. It was like Yi Yun had become a Fei king from primordial times at that instant. They were shocked and distraught. Could it be that Yi Yun had fused with the ancient Fei bloodline? Everyone stared with widened eyes as they had looks of disbelief. After summoning the Fei race bloodline and then fusing with the bloodline was not uncommon. Previously, Luo Tian had done the same, but Luo Tian's fusion was with a heaven Fei bloodline. Yi Yun was fusing with an ancient Fei bloodline. After Luo Tian's fusion, his body revealed the characteristics of a gigantic demon ape. But for Yi Yun, his body was covered in dragon scales after his fusion. Break! Seeing the black specters rushing at him, Yi Yun bellowed and he suddenly punched out. The power of that punch seemed like it was a divine mountain compressed into a tiny package. The void trembled slightly as the black specters in front of Yi Yun were torn apart by Yi Yun's single punch. Large amounts of black mist exploded, forming a black shockwave that blew out in every direction. The handful of black specter shadows that came from the 8th level were slain by a single punch from Yi Yun. Upon seeing this scene, the Luo clan disciples present could not help but gape their mouths, and they had trouble closing them. Just now, wasn't it said that Yi Yun's body was very weak? Chapter 850 The Trapped Ronnie Fish to annihilate four black specter shadows with one move, and to think that he just used his fist. On the fourth and fifth levels of Black Wind Valley, the Fire Cloud State and Phoenix Fermiana State disciples were dumbfounded. Previously, they were fixated on Yi Yun's weak body, claiming that he had relied on his aspect totem and ancient Fey bloodline to reach the seventh level. If it came to a pure contest in body, Yi Yun would not have been able to find his footing on either the second or third level of Black Wind Valley. But now, Yi Yun's single punch was heaven-shaking and forceful. Although these people had not been the target of the punch, they could still feel the pressure of the punch in front of them. That is actually not the strength of Yi Yun's body. Yi Yun's body is still very weak, but he summoned the heaven-devouring flood dragon bloodline back to fuse with him. In this case, the power of the heaven-devouring flood dragon's lifeblood is also the power of his lifeblood. A Phoenix Fermiana State Disciple said. His tone was filled with amazement, but also regretful over being left in the dust by Yi Yun. The surrounding Luo Plan disciples had mixed feelings upon hearing this. Conjuring the ancient Fei bloodline was good enough, but he had even fused with it. In that case, who still dared say that Yi Yun's body was weak? He had been mocked for having a weak body because his body would become a weakness. But now, once Yi Yun conjured the heaven devouring flood dragon to complete a fusion, he could share the lifeblood power of the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon. That ability was extremely enviable. Yi Yun had completely absorbed ancient Fei bloodline in four days, and even if the other days were counted, it was less than half a month. A human had used less than half a month to absorb an ancient Fei bone so completely? Now, in front of Yi Yun, they did not even want to mock him for his identity as a human, because they were embarrassed to call themselves members of the Fey race. Be it in terms of bloodline concentration or their absorption of ancient Fey bones, they were far inferior to Yi Yun, so how could they be proud to be members of the Fey race? At this moment, the person who was suffering the greatest mental collapse was Ran Yu. He had taken the opportunity when Yi Yun and the intermediary spirit blood snake were in a struggle to decisively make a strike. He had lured the 8th level black specter shadows towards Yi Yun, managing to avoid violating the rules of the trial of not attacking each other to place Yi Yun in a life and death danger. It could have been deemed a masterstroke. But immediately following that, Yi Yun had fused with the heaven devouring flood dragon bloodline. His single punch had simultaneously shattered Ran Yu's machinations into smithereens. It made all the planning from before turn into a joke. Ran Yu was thoroughly afraid when he saw Yi Yun's body covered in dragon scales. Yi Yun was standing there with a murderous aura. Although Ran Yu knew leaving this dejectedly was embarrassing, he was out of choices. The seventh level was not safe. Despite the fact that the Black Spectre Flood Dragon was already dead, 
there were still other black specter shadows that were constantly gathering around the seventh level. Ranyu could not withstand that at all. Yi Yun, consider yourself lucky. But don't be complacent. You aren't even at the Heaven Ascension realm. Your future is still a blur. There have been numerous geniuses and wonders in the history of the Luo clan, but unfortunately they died before they managed to mature. Here's me wishing you, Yi Yun, do not die too early. By throwing those nasty words out, Ran Yu hoped that he could redeem a bit of his face. Although his words were toxic, what he said was true. In the Luo clan, most juniors failed to mature to the very end. The Twelve Empyrean Heavens was a world with large tumultuous waves. It was extremely common to die on the path of martial arts. After Ranyu said this, he turned around to flee onto the sixth level. He did not want to compete with Yun any further, because he could not handle it. Just as Ranyu flew up, a cold beam flashed in Yun's eyes. Do you think that this seventh level is a place where you can come and go as you please? Yun bellowed as all the power of his lifeblood burned. This was the power that belonged to the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon, and now with Yun's body as a medium, it completely burst outward. Heaven devouring. Wah. 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 With Yun's body as the core, the engulfing force radiated in all directions. With the heaven devouring flood dragon completely fused into Yun's body, the engulfing force was much stronger than before. The intermediary spirit blood snake had been injured previously, so it was trapped in the engulfing force's domain without any surprise. Even seven or eight black specter shadows that had rushed from the eighth level were enveloped by the engulfing force. None of them could escape. And Ranyu, who was closest to Yun, had previously summoned his Rani fish bloodline. And now, with the engulfing vortex suddenly appearing, the Rani fish bloodline was being locked onto by the vortex. What are you doing? Ranyu's body was about to reach the sixth level but the lifeblood power that he had conjured was stuck on the seventh level. Ranyu stared with anger. The Luo clan disciples were barred from attacking each other during the training at Nte Azure Billow. This was also why Ranyu dared to do such a brazen act in front of Yun. But now, Yun had directly made his move to use the heaven-devouring flood dragon's bloodline suppression to stop the Rani fish that he had conjured. The Rani fish phantom image was not a true ancient fey after all. Having been enveloped by the ancient fey aura, it immediately began to quiver. It could not even use 30% of its full strength, so it was unable to free itself from the binding of the engulfing force. Yi Yun! How you dare! Are you flagrantly violating the rules of the training? Ran you angrily boomed. The Rani fish phantom image was the coagulation of Ran Yu's bloodline essence. To a heaven fey, their bloodline's concentration greatly reflected their potential and future achievements. In a heaven fey family, this was also one of the factors that determined how much resources were going to be invested in that person. If any losses were suffered regarding the Rani fish phantom image, Ran Yu would be eviscerated. It was nearly equivalent to chopping an arm of Ran Yu. Yi Yun ignored Ran Yu's warning. Black gases rose up from his body, as though he was a demon god from returning from ancient times. In front of him, the energy vortex expanded in size. The Rani fish that was awestruck by the ancient heaven devouring flood dragon bloodline was slowly being pulled towards Yi Yun. What is Yi Yun doing? Does he plan on devouring Ran Yu's heaven fey bloodline? If he does that, he is definitely violating of the rules of the training. Yi Yun will be punished. Many Luo clan disciples on the fourth and fifth levels in Black Wind Valley were taken aback. It was definitely unwise to challenge the rules of the Luo clan. Ran Yu laughed in extreme anger. Nice try, Yi Yun. To attack me in public, you are truly mad. Indeed, those who are not of the same kin are sure to be of a different heart. You will pay a terrible price for this. Upon saying this, Ran Yu suddenly looked up at Song Mang, who was sitting high in the sky. 
Lord Sung Mang, Yi Yun is violating the rules of the collective training and he openly attacking me in a bid to destroy my bloodline. I think Yi Yun must be a spy from an alien race. According to the rules of the Luo clan, he should be crippled of his cultivation level. At this moment, Ran Yu's heart was burning with flames of anger. However, despite his complaints, Sung Mang remained motionless mid-air. Sung Mang frowned slightly, but he did not speak. If Yi Yun truly devoured Ran Yu's bloodline, it was obvious that he could not sit idle. Although a warrior's world was all about an eye for an eye, a rule was still a rule that could not violate it. At this moment, Yi Yun smiled and said, Ran Yu, are you saying that I'm attacking you? When did I attack you? I'm just using engulfing laws to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake. Is this a violation of the Luo plan's rules? I was using engulfing laws to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake, but your Rani fish bloodline appeared in the range of my engulfing laws, and for that, you are blaming me? Chapter 851, Eye for an Eye With Yi Yun saying this, he had rebutted all of Ran Yu's rhetoric. When the Phoenix Fermiana State Disciples heard this, they could not stop themselves from laughing. It was Ranyu, who had ulterior motives to begin with, that caused the Rani Fish bloodline to appear in Yun's range of attack. If not, how could this have happened? However, with the rules of the Luo clan, it was very difficult for Yun to do anything to Ranyu. Seeing Yun high-sounding statements, Ranyu gritted his teeth hatefully. Cut your crap! I don't care about you capturing the intermediary spirit blood snake. Quickly release my Rani fish bloodline. I'm a direct descendant of the Shushue Ran clan. If my bloodline suffers in any way, you are doomed. Yi Yun laughed in disdain. What sort of trashy bloodline is this that you treat it as a treasure? Are you thinking that I would take the initiative to rescind my domain to release that crappy fish of yours? The moment I rescind my domain, the intermediary spirit blood snake will escape as a result. After being frightened by me once, it might escape deeper into Black Wind Valley. Can you afford to pay for it? While Li Yun spoke, not only did he not rescind his domain, he had even strengthened the power of his bloodline. The Rani fish was being drawn in as the lifeblood vortex grew larger. It began wailing as it could not break free at all. At this moment, Ran Yu became anxious. However, it was useless for him to remain anxious. From the looks of it, Song Mang would not interfere. As long as Yi Yun did not directly attack Ran Yu, he would ignore them. Furthermore, what Yi Yun said was right. With the intermediary spirit blood snake startled, it might very likely escape deeper into Black Wind Valley. What about the loss? Letting the Rani fish bloodline was simple, but how was Ranyu to compensate Yi Yun for his loss? Regardless of who it was, no one would stop the lifeblood vortex. Yi Yun's actions were very reasonable. Ranyu also understood this. He could only grit his teeth and tolerate it. He also knew that even if Yi Yun was trying to make it difficult for him, he would definitely not really devour his bloodline. By trapping his bloodline, it was indeed not a violation of the Luo clan's rules. But even if Yi Yun devoured it directly, Song Mang would definitely not sit idle, or he would have failed in his duty. Although he had acknowledged the reality before him, this did not mean that Ran Yu could tolerate it. He said hatefully, Yi Yun, I know you are trying to seek revenge on me. It is only fair for treasures to be obtained by those with the ability. The Black Wind Valley trial is meant to be about fair competition. So how was I wrong in trying to snatch your intermediary spirit blood snake? Besides, what I did were within the confines of the rules and cannot be faulted. Now, there is no chance for your revenge, so what can you do other than stopping my bloodline? Do you even dare devour it? Do you believe that if you were to devour a tiny bit of my Rani fish bloodline, my Shushue Ran clan would capture and ruin your cultivation and use your ancient Fei bloodline to compensate me? The further in the sentence Ran Yu was, the more pleasure he felt. It was as though all the anger he had had been vented out. That's right, although he had been outdone by Yi Yun in various aspects, he still had his family clan's backing. 
By using the Xuxue Ran clan to threaten Yun, this was the advantage of having a powerful faction behind him. Large family clans worked on the concept of reason. If Yun did not violate the rules, the Xuxue Ran clan would naturally not have a legitimate reason to do anything to Yun. However, once Yun violated the rules, they would not leave the matter at that. If not, how could the Xuxue Ran clan have any face left? Yi Yun sneered at Ran Yu's threats. He only circulated his lifeblood's power and the engulfing force that was locked onto the intermediary spirit blood snake had increased. The intermediary spirit blood snake let out deafening hisses. The tiny blood snake knew that if it was sucked into the vortex, it would die. Therefore, it began struggling as the redness all over its body seemed like it was going to dropping out, as though it was already in a frenzy. But regardless of how much frenzy it was, it could not escape the engulfing vortex. Instead, its lifeblood was constantly being extracted. Other than the intermediary spirit blood snake, there were eight black specter shadows locked onto by the lifeblood vortex. The black specter shadow's lifeblood was also extracted and they gradually became weaker. They roared maniacally, but with them becoming weaker, how were they able to escape the suction of the lifeblood vortex? Yi Yun looked at the intermediary spirit blood snake and the black specter shadows as his mind turned slightly heavy. He glanced at Ranyu, who was already standing on the sixth level, before his eyes flashed with a cold beam. Upon sensing the killing intent in Yi Yun's eyes, Ranyu gave a disdainful smile with an expression that go to Yi Yun. It's time to stop. What's the point of restraining my bloodline? This kind of revenge that does not do anything to me will only reveal your incompetence. You are like a hag cursing on the streets that will be laughed at by others in contempt. Ranyu derided Yi Yun, but suddenly, Yi Yun sent a Yuan Qi voice transmission that echoed in his ears. The intermediary spirit blood snake seems to be rather drained. I guess it's hungry. What do you think? Oh. Ranyu was greatly alarmed as he suddenly realized that Yi Yun was manipulating his engulfing forces to gather the intermediary spirit blood snake and the black specter shadows together. And his Ronnie Fish bloodline was slowly approaching the intermediary spirit blood snake and black specter shadows near the vortex. Upon seeing this scene, Ranyu broke out into cold sweat. He finally realized what Yi Yun's goal was. Yi Yun was going to put his Ronnie Fish bloodline, the intermediary spirit blood snake and the black specter shadows together. If the Ronnie Fish bloodline was torn apart, that had nothing to do with Yi Yun. That was because he was not the one doing it, so it did not violate the Luo clan's rules. Seeing an irreversible scene about to happen in a split second, Ranyu did not even manage to say anything. He directly sent a voice transmission to Yi Yun. Wait! But just as his voice transmission was issued, his Ronnie Fish bloodline had been thrown into the mix of the intermediary spirit blood snake and the eight black specter shadows. Be it the intermediary spirit blood snake or the eight black specter shadows, they immediately entered a frenzied state. In a battle of trapped beasts, a beast in a cage was the most intense. They fought without any regard for their lives. Furthermore, Yi Yun had deliberately drained their lifeblood, so they no longer had the strength to escape from the lifeblood vortex. At this moment, with the Ronnie Fish phantom image appearing in front of them, how could they miss out on fresh food that could restore their strength? The intermediary spirit blood snake's reaction was the fastest. It was the first to rush forward and with its powerful penetrative power, it directly pierced through the Ronnie Fish's mouth. Ah! The Ronnie Fish let out a scream as it struggled violently, but how could it escape the binding of the engulfing forces? After the intermediary spirit blood snake's first move, the black specter shadows from the eighth level also rushed forward and bit the Ronnie Fish's body. A black specter shadow clung onto each of the Ronnie Fish's six legs, while its head and tail were being crazily bitten by the other black specter shadows. No! Ranyu bellowed as his eyes turned bloodshot. The Ronnie Fish bloodline was connected to his lifeblood, so an intense pain overwhelmed him, nearly causing him to faint. Painful. It's too painful. It felt as though his soul was being torn apart, and his blood marrow was being extracted out. 
Yi Yun. How dare you? Ranya's body was trembling as blood seeped out of his pores. He was struggling crazily as though he wanted to rush onto the seventh level and fight Yi Yun. But at this moment, with such excruciating pain and the Rani fish bloodline he had depended on so much was being restrained by the engulfing force and being bitten by the black specter shadows and the intermediary spirit blood snake, how could he rush onto the seventh level? That was just courting death. He could only watch helplessly as his Rani fish bloodline was being consuming. Upon seeing this scene, the Luo clan disciples on the fourth and fifth levels were dumbfounded. Ruthless, just too ruthless. Yi Yun was definitely doing it on purpose. By using the intermediary spirit blood snake and the black specter shadows to devour the Rani fish, it was similar to how Ranyu had attracted the black specter shadows to devour Yi Yun's main body. It was the diversion of danger and killing by proxy. Taking revenge in the confines of the rules, paying him back in his own coin. Kacha. Kacha. At this moment, the sounds of bones tearing apart could be heard. The Rani fish's six limbs were torn apart by the black specter shadows. Ranyu collapsed to the ground as his face was twisted. His eyes filled with madness. His lifeblood was the mark of the Heaven Fae bloodline that he was always proud of was now on the brink of utter destruction. Even with top treasures given to him and several years of recuperation, he would only be able to recover a tiny portion of the lifeblood that he lost. And although the Shushue Ran clan had such treasures, they would not use it on Ranyu. Although Ranyu kept saying that he had the Shushue Ran clan backing him, it did not belong to him alone. He was just one of the many juniors of the Shushue Ran clan. Besides, he was not the best either. According to the unspoken rules of a large family clan, how could such treasures be wasted on a junior? who was not the most excellent to begin with, after his bloodline was crippled. Lord Song Mang. Save me. Ranyu was sprawled on the ground and he reached out his hand futilely to the hovering Tsong Mang. Blood was flowing out of every pore. He was worse than a dying dog that had eaten poison. Song Mang pondered slightly. The Luo clan's trials were meant to be a ruthless competition. At the Black Wind Valley, it was not uncommon for juniors to die during the trial, what more being crippled of their bloodlines. Although the Luo clan had instilled rules, there were always Luo clan disciples who would engage in cutthroat battles within the confines of the rules. Previously, Ranyu had done the same to Yi Yun, and now Yi Yun was doing the same to Ranyu. When Ranyu harmed Yi Yun, Song Meng did not intervene. Now if Tsong Meng intervened when Yi Yun harmed Ranyu, that would be unfair. Besides, according to the rules of the trial, he was not meant to intervene. He was just a bystander. Noticing how Ranyu looked like a broken blood bag, his body shivering and face pale, Tsong Meng frowned slightly. This savage method of extracting his lifeblood was equivalent to sucking the marrow of mortals dry. If it was any more serious, it would end up fatal. That should be enough. Ranyu harmed you, but you were able to end up unharmed. With you harming Ranyu, he has lost nearly half his life, and even if you were to stop now, Ranyu would be mostly crippled. Your revenge would also be achieved. Although it's within the confines of the rules, don't cause his death. If so, the Shushue Ran clan will not be able to salvage the situation and they will end up finding fault with you. Song Mang's Yuan Qi transmission suddenly resounded in Yi Yun's ears. Although it appeared as though he was saving Ranyu, Song Mang was actually being thoughtful towards Yi Yun. After all, the Xuxue Ran clan was a powerful faction. How could Yi Yun with his measly power offend them? In fact, Song Mang actually appreciated Yi Yun's eye for an eye ruthless method to a certain extent. A warrior had to act as such. Thank you, Lord Song Meng, for your advice. This junior understands. Yi Yun first slowly answered Song Meng before making a pose. Without any hurry, he used his engulfing law to pull the Black Spectre shadows apart. However, the Black Spectre shadows were still biting on the Rani fish's flesh, so with this pull. Shei. 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 
The Ronnie fish let out a scream as large swaths of flesh were torn off by these black specter shadows. Ran Yu nearly fainted from the pain. He looked angrily at Yi Yun, but he did not dare say a single word. He was afraid that if Yi Yun was unhappy, he could continue letting the black specter shadows feast on the Ronnie fish's flesh. As Yi Yun looked at the Ronnie fish that did not look like a fish anymore, he rubbed his chin and said slowly, Uh, sorry about that. Senior brother ran you. I used a bit too much force just now, but that was out of no choice. Bear with it a little. There's still a tiny snake in the Ronnie fish's belly. Don't worry, I'll pull it out immediately. Chapter 852, Ran Yu was truly too rash. Upon hearing Yi Yun's words, the corners of Ran Yu's mouth twitched. His face was ashen, and he was so infuriated that his intestines were already twisted together. To pull out the raging snake out of the Ronnie fish's belly, what sort of situation would occur with the snake still biting onto the Ronnie fish's organs? Ranyu trembled all over as Yi Yun said slowly, Senior brother Ranyu, if it's not pulled out, it will continue consuming your bloodline, right? At this moment, even the Luo clan disciples felt the pain for Ranyu when they heard this, what more Ranyu? Many of them looked at Yi Yun as an inexplicable chill shuddered down their backs. That Yi Yun was not someone to be trifled with. In fact, as a result of being weak overall, the humans gave an impression to most members of the Fei race that they were weak and easily bullied in the 10,000 Fei Empire in heaven. However, look at Yi Yun now. Even the Fei race was not as ruthless as he was. Ran Yu was one of the direct descendants of the Xu Shui Ran clan. He was left in such a miserable state after offending Yi Yun, so if it were any of them who had done so, no one knew how much more miserable their outcome would be. Upon thinking of this, the Luo clan disciples present, especially Laia, were covered in cold sweat. Fear had been struck deep into his heart after seeing Ran Yu's outcome. Other than Ran Yu, he was the one who had offended Yi Yun the most. Now, just recalling it made him feel like he was sitting on a cushion of needles. Would Yi Yun seek revenge on him after this? Yi Yun was already this ruthless before he had matured fully. Wouldn't it be worse if he matured in the future? Would messing with him be as simple as playing with a toy? Now, Laia even felt that losing more than 100 world stones to Luo Fomling was a good thing. Compared to Ranyu, it was so much more blissful. Laia had made up his mind to sell everything he had after the MT Azure Billow training had finished to gather the world stones for Luo Fomling. Not only would he personally deliver it to Luo Fomling, he would also speak nicely to her and hope that after she received the world stones, she would say a few nice words to Yi Yun. In some sense, he was just buying peace. Just as the Luo clan disciples were having disparate thoughts, Yi Yun had already used the engulfing law to tug at the Rani fish's belly. Pua! The intermediary spirit blood snake, which was covered in blood, was biting on the Rani fish's innards, but it was forcefully pulled out by the engulfing law. The Rani fish's projection convulsed violently, its body was on the verge of collapse. And as the master of the Rani fish, Ranyu spat out a mouthful of blood and as his body convulsed, he completely passed out. At this moment, Song Meng took action. If it wasn't for him secretly isolating the black specter shadows on the sixth floor, Ranyu's body would have been devoured clean by the black specter shadows on the sixth floor. That would definitely be fatal. The eight black specter shadows' mouths were filled with blood, while the intermediary spirit blood snake was still struggling frantically. However, none of them could break free from the binding of the heaven devouring flood dragon's engulfing law. Finally, they were drained of their stamina and they were captured by the heaven devouring flood dragon. They were sealed in the lifeblood vortex. A great success! Iyuni clapped his hands and slowly flew back to the sixth level. Upon seeing Yi Yun step onto the sixth level, the so-called high and mighty Luo Tian subconsciously took two steps back. Even the zombie-like Gu Luo looked at Yi Yun with a bit of wariness. They were originally considered the malignant stars of the training at Imte Azure Billow, figures that everyone feared. But now, they finally realized that there was someone more terrifying. Yi Yun, who looked harmless, was actually very ruthless. 
Luo Tian was feeling truly lucky that he did not follow Ran Yu in stepping on the landmine that was Yi Yun. If not, it was very likely that he would end up a companion of Ran Yu now. At this moment, Yi Yun spoke, everyone, this time senior brother's injuries was an accident. All of you saw the entire process, right? It was senior brother Ran Yu who made the move first. He had some thoughts towards me but he ended up failing. The heaven-devouring flood dragon was about to capture the intermediary spirit blood snake, but the moment senior brother Ran Yu made his move, I had no choice but to summon the heaven-devouring flood dragon back. But once the heaven-devouring flood dragon was summoned, the intermediary spirit blood snake would escape. I had no choice but to use a heaven-devouring technique in the shortest period of time, and I accidentally trapped senior brother Ran Yu's Ronnie Fish bloodline. Following that, senior brother Ran Yu asked me to stop, but under the circumstances at that time, how could I stop? I believe if you were in my shoes, you would not stop, right? As for the final outcome, I truly did not expect it. Yi Yun began shaking his head when he said this. Glancing at the half-dead Ran Yu, as though he found it regretful, he continued, for things to have reached the stage was something I did not wish on seeing either. But there was no other choice. It was all because senior brother Ran Yu charged into the battlefield himself. The struggle between the heaven-devouring flood dragon and the intermediary spirit blood snake is fraught with extreme danger, so senior brother Ran Yu was truly too rash. In fact, the moment that the Rani fish bloodline appeared to be in danger, I immediately tried to rescue it, unfortunately, the tragedy was already ongoing. So the rescue ended up in such a state. When Yi Yun said all of this, all the Luo clan disciples present curled their mouths. This Yi Yun was too wicked. No choice but to use a heaven devouring technique, accidentally trapped the Rani fish bloodline, final outcome was truly unexpected, tragedy I did not wish on seeing, immediately tried to rescue. Not only was Yi Yun ruthless in his actions, his shamelessness had been cultivated to a certain realm. If not, he would not have been able to say those words, full of nonsense, in such a genuine fashion. Thankfully, Ran Yu had fainted or he would have died from exasperation from hearing that. But soon, Ran Yu regained consciousness and he learned of what Yi Yun had said. As the saying goes, one did not need to be responsible for anchoring someone to their deaths. Everyone, everything that happened to senior brother Ran Yu was something that I did not wish would happen. I hope everyone would be a witness, and I'll be extremely grateful. Yi Yun looked at the Luo clan disciples on the fourth and fifth level while cupping his hands. Everyone rolled their eyes when they heard this. Senior brother Laya, what do you think? Thinking that that was all to the matter, Yi Yun's sudden questioning confounded Laya. Seeing Yi Yun grinning at him, he felt like he should just slam his head into a wall till he died. Why are you staring at me? I'm nothing with all these people around me. What else could Laya say after being stared at by Yi Yun? He did not dare to offend Yi Yun, who was so ruthless. As long as he did not fall in the future, he would likely become a mighty figure in the Luo clan. He did not dare to offend him. As for the Shushue Ran clan, Laya was even more afraid to offend it. They were a massive clan, so he would be courting death to testify for Yi Yun. That, asterisk cough asterisk, senior brother Ran Yu was a bit rash. Laia ruminated for a long time before saying such wishy-washy words. There was no mistake saying Ran Yu was rash. If he was not rash, he would not have been caught by Yi Yun and tortured to such a half-dead state. Upon seeing this situation, the hovering Song Meng's mouth formed an arc. His voice transmission rang in Yi Yun's ears. Are you done with your acting? Uh. Yi Yun was momentarily stumped. He felt that Song Mang did not really think too much about Ran Yu, and Song Mang did not seem to be afraid of the Shushue Ran clan. Not bad, I had just told you to weigh the consequences, but you didn't forget to put the Rani fish in such a terrible state while moving the intermediary spirit blood snake and the black specters away. You are truly unafraid of the Shushue Ran clan's revenge. Upon hearing Song Mang's words, Yi Yun smiled bashfully. Lord Song Mang must be joking. 
This junior admits that he had previously deliberately fed the Rani fish to the intermediary spirit blood snake and the black specters. But later on, this junior had already rescued it immediately, and this state is the limit to how much this junior can save him. Enough, there's no need for me to discuss if you were deliberate or not, but there is a warning I need to give you. You have completely offended the Shushue Ran clan. Although Ranyu is not the most valued junior in their family, you have still smacked the Shushue Ran clan in the face by doing so. Large family clans value their reputation the most. By not letting them have a chance to salvage the situation, they will not let it go. Regardless of how they treat you, strength is essential. If you have the strength, they would also not easily make a move on you. It's best that you improve your cultivation level. Your strength now is too weak. The reason why Tsang Mang said this was because he thought highly of Yi Yun. Yi Yun immediately said, Yes, this junior understands. Thank you to Lord Tsang Mang for his advice. Chapter 853 Absorbing the Intermediary Spirit Blood Snake. The final outcome for Ranyu at the Black Wind Valley trial was him quitting midway. With the Rani fish bloodline severely damaged and Ranyu suffering serious injuries, he had lost a great deal of his combat strength. He had chosen to quit, if not, there was no need to talk about entering the seventh level. He could only find his footing on the sixth level through Tsong Mang's help. And it was meaningless for Ranyu to return to the third and fourth floor to cultivate. Furthermore, Ranyu could not stand the shame of doing that. However, once Ranyu fell out, it was possible that he could not participate in the Luo Divine Hall trials, what more the MT Azure Billow training. With just serious injuries, he would only end up being overtaken by others, so what was the point of participating? It could even be said that Ranyu's life had mostly been ruined. Everyone saw Ranyu being carried away with an ashen expression. Looking at Yun, who had now sat firmly on the sixth level, they could not help but shudder. Many people thought of approaching Yun to express their well intentions in order to prevent Yun from kindly rescuing them. However, many people knew in that hearts that although Yun was enjoying great success at this point in time, it was not wise to completely offend the Shushue Ran clan. His future growth was fraught with danger. Yun finally chose to sit down on the seventh level. After being ravaged a few times on the seventh level, the blood dragon's blood energy that had taken form as beasts had long avoided him. Who would be stupid enough to provoke this malignant star? In front of Yun was a sealed lifeblood vortex. The intermediary spirit blood snake was on its last breath inside it. The degenerated blood dragon aura contained in its body was extremely valuable, but it had now truly become a tiny snake. The intermediary spirit blood snake had already formed some intelligence. Upon sensing Yi Yun's Yuan Shi lock onto to it, it immediately began to struggle. Yi Yun's eyes focused as the Yuan Qi transformed into a net and trapped the intermediary spirit blood snake within. Hiss. The intermediary spirit blood snake let out a hissing scream as its body was reduced to a mist of blood before being injected into Yi Yun's body in a blink of an eye. The intermediary spirit blood snake was the essence condensed from the black blood gases. Yi Yun had directed it into his meridians and used his pure yang body to temper it. Boom! Yi Yun immediately felt that a great deal of energy had been injected into his body. All his bones began to issue explosive crackling sounds immediately. The intermediary spirit blood snake was the greatest opportunity in Black Wind Valley. It was much more powerful than any relics Yi Yun had ever eaten. Yi Yun calmed his mind down and he sat in his original spot, with a lifeblood vortex swirling around him. Yi Yun planned on completely absorbing the intermediary spirit blood snake's power right there and then. Song Mang had warned him to be careful about the Shushue Ran clan's revenge. However, Yi Yun was not afraid of the Shushue Ran clan because they could not do as they pleased in the Luo clan. As long as he showed enough value before they took their revenge, everything would not be a problem. Boom! 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 The energy in Yi Yun's body was surging around his body. 
Seeing Yi Yun consume the intermediary spirit blood snake on the seventh floor, Luo Tian and company had complex expressions. That Yi Yun is truly decisive. By consuming the intermediary spirit blood snake now, his strength will improve once again. And by doing so, the Xuxue Ran clan cannot covet the intermediary spirit blood snake. Luo Tian thought in his mind. He silently stopped at a spot far away from Yun and began to consume the black gases. Another person who made the same choice as him was Gu Luo. The intermediary spirit blood snake was already in Yun's hands, but a large number of disciples had yet to finish their training. With half the allotted time passing, there were still a few who could not reach the fifth level, and some who even failed to reach the fourth level. As Luo Fongling looked at Yun, who was on the seventh level, she took a deep breath and flew down towards the fifth level with a determined look. She began brandishing her sword and she slew several black specter shadows. She attempted to find her footing on the fifth level, but it was still very difficult. Although there is no way to compete with junior brother Yun, I have to at least surpass myself. Luo Divine Hall trained arduously. After coming to him to Azure Billow for the training, she realized that her cultivation time was just too little. Compared to the disciples who participated in the Luo Divine Hall trials, she was just at a disadvantage. However, Yi Yun was even more disadvantaged than her. Although his cultivation time was very short, he had still managed to trample on the experienced senior disciples. Unknowingly, Luo Fongling had already treated Yi Yun as her role model. Xu Shui Ran Clan as one of the few large family clans in the 10,000 Fei Empire in heaven, the Xuxue Ran clan possessed an entire floating continent. The entire continent was filled with lakes. The largest lake in the middle was as vast as a sea. This lake was different from the other mist-covered lakes because it had huge waves that reached as high as the skies. The lake's water was as black as ink. Warriors of insufficient cultivation level would be washed away by the huge waves. In the middle of the Black Lake was a large island with pavilions dotted around it. It was where the Xuxue Ran clan's mansion was. Xiao. A gigantic bird of prey landed in front of the mansion and a figure landed appeared atop the bird. Come on down. The person was a middle-aged man that looked like he was in his forties. He had a grim expression on his face, and he did not look like he was in a good mood. Following that, a teenage-looking man leaped off the bird. When he landed, he let out a low grunt as he nearly stumbled. The middle-aged man immediately frowned and said, You can't even stand properly now? No, I'm standing very firmly, fourth uncle. Ranyu whispered, but he bit his lips as his fingernails sank deep into his palm. E Yun. It was all thanks to Yi Yun for him becoming no different to a prodigal dog. He had returned to the Xuxue Ran clan and he needed ten days before he could barely get out of bed. Indeed, as the middle-aged man said, he still could not stand properly. At least to jump down from such a high height from the mount was something that he could barely do. Go back and recuperate well. The middle-aged man glanced at Ran Yu and said with a sigh. Ranyu suddenly looked up and a look of indignation flashed in his eyes. Fourth uncle, but my injuries. The family already knows about your injuries. The middle-aged man shook his head. Seeing the middle-aged man's expression, Ranyu's heart shrank. He felt short of breath as he lowered his head. Is the family planning to give up on me? Giving up is being overly serious, but if you wish that the family will use treasures or even an ancient fey bone to treat you, that's impossible. In the future, just stay in the family clan. You will be manning the estate in the southwest. Manning the estate. Ranyu's heart sank as though the last breath in him had been extracted. In the Xuxue Ran clan, only those children that had no future would be sent to out to man the estates. They were basically given no hope to continue cultivation. Ranyu was once a top genius in the family clan. With the exception of the top few people, he was the best. But now, he had been reduced to handling the family estates. 
Fourth uncle, I. Enough. Tomorrow, I will prepare some pills and relics for you. Speak no further. You attempted to harm that human, but you ended up crippling your Ronnie Fish bloodline. That person was only an Earth Fire Hall disciple, a human that had cultivated for only 30 years. He even came from a lower realm. What you have done has shamed the Shushue Ran clan. Do you think that the family clan will replenish your bloodline? Ran you, you have disappointed me too deeply in the trials. The middle aged man's voice turned harsh, and Ran you felt dejected as his heart was filled with despair. He knew that his martial path might have come to an end. There was no chance for him to achieve much in the future. He had basically been abandoned by the family clan. His fourth uncle was one of the elders who was more fond of him, but for him to also say that. Ran you, peacefully recuperate. As for that human from the lower realm, I'll remember him. Punishing you was all right, but he had gone too far when he destroyed your Ronnie Fish bloodline. When has a lowly human been able to destroy the bloodline of our Shushue Ran clan? It's a slap in our Shushue Ran clan's face. Upon saying this, a cold beam flashed in the middle-aged man's eyes. Ranyu was infuriated as he clenched his fists till they trembled slightly. His eyes were already bloodshot. The middle-aged man said, go back. That won't be the end to this matter. I will definitely give you an answer for it. Chapter 854 Entering Heaven Ascension In Black Wind Valley, there was less than a day left till the end of the training. Most disciples had managed to get their footing on the fifth level, while a minority of disciples only barely entered the fifth level before they immediately returned to the fourth level. However, this meant that they still passed the training. Although it did not seem like a bona fide pass, and it was quite contemptible, it was within the confines of the rules. Song Mang glanced at those people with heavy eyelids and he secretly shook his head. By barely being able to pass, and without any impressive show of ability at the ancient Fei edifice, these disciples were most likely to be eliminated immediately once they entered the Luo Divine Hall trials. They were the cream of the crop amongst ordinary disciples, but when all the geniuses of the Luo clan were gathered in the Luo Divine Hall trials, they could not even stand on the proper stage. Yun was the only one who could stand neck to neck with those geniuses amongst the disciples present that song Mang eyed. Even Luo Tian was slightly off the mark. However, the Shushue Ran clan will not forget this matter. Let's see how he plans on dealing with it. Song Mang thought to himself. And at this moment, a loud explosion suddenly echoed from within Yun's body. The sound was like rolling thunder and everyone's gazes were instantly focused on Yun. A vortex appeared out of nowhere in front of Yun. All the blood dragon's essence energy on the seventh level was sucked into the vortex. With a loud shrill scream, the nine neonate and golden crow totems appeared simultaneously behind Yun. The totems that were more than a hundred feet tall descended like ancient fae. The nine snake heads looked extremely ferocious, while the golden crow's flames burned intensely. And after that, a dragon's roar suddenly boomed as the heaven-devouring flood dragon's phantom image appeared as well. The blood dragon essence energy was devoured so incessantly that the black shadows on the eighth level distanced themselves away. In Yun's body, Yuan Qi seemed to flow like endless waves as it vigorously circulated around his body. Boom! Instantly, it was as though the heaven and earth had opened up at the beginning of life. A Tao tree appeared in front of Yun. The tree leaves swayed as though they were producing Tao chants. The Tao tree was already tens of feet high. Yun is about to break through to the heaven ascension realm. Laia said. He was at the Yuan opening perfection realm, so it's reasonable for him to break through. Another disciple said. Yi Yun had first absorbed the ancient Fei Bone before absorbing the intermediary spirit blood snake. It was no wonder that he could make a breakthrough after consuming such treasures. At this moment, Luo Tian already had a distasteful feeling whenever he looked at Yi Yun. At the Black Wind Valley trials, all the limelight had been stolen by Yi Yun. The best things were also obtained by Yi Yun, 
so how could he feel comfortable? Originally, Luo Tian was able to mentally console himself that Ian's cultivation realm was lower than his. It was only at the Yuan opening realm. But now, once Yin broke through to the Heaven Ascension realm, Luo Tian would be in the same realm as Yun. Although Luo Tian was a sub-realm higher, it was not a major advantage. If that was the case, the decades that he had over Yun in cultivation had been sent to the dogs? How old is Yun? Luo Tian suddenly asked. His bone age should be in their thirties, definitely not even forty. A fire cloud state disciple said. This made Luo Tian knit his brows even tighter. He himself had broken through the heaven ascension realm at the age of 42. Now, Yi Yun was just in his thirties. Too young. Luo Tian shook his head. Even a Luo clan genius would wait till they were nearly forty before they chose to break through to the heaven ascension realm. Yi Yun grew up in a lower realm. So be it resources or heritage, there is no way that the lower realm can compete with the twelve Empyrean heavens. Yin has just come to the ten thousand Fei Empyrean heaven, so he should take advantage of the rich resources here and cultivate for a few more years to ensure he has a solid foundation. Yin's nomological insight is impressive, and his body has absorbed the ancient Fei bone. So he could be called unique and incomparable. But one's cultivation level and foundation cannot be accumulated without the passage of time. If those Luo clan geniuses want to break through to the Heaven Ascension realm, they could do it before the age of 30 as well, but they would drag it out for more than a decade so they could ensure that their foundations were perfect. Once they break through to the Heaven Ascension realm, their Tao trees would be more than 90 deca feet tall, some would even reach 99 deca feet. In a warrior's cultivation, they would plant a Tao seed at the Yuan Foundation, grow a divine tree from the Tao seed, laying the path to heaven ascension. The taller the Tao tree was, the smoother the warrior's path would be in the future. At this moment, on the Phoenix Fermiana State side, someone interrupted, what senior brother Luo said is true. However, Yi Yun is choosing to break through now because of the pressure that the Shushui Ran clan will bring him. Although the Shushui Ran clan would not blatantly deal with Yun, it is inevitable that they will retaliate within the confines of the rules. Who knows, Yun might also end up in the same state as Ranyu. Yun must have considered this to choose to break through to the Heaven Ascension realm in his thirties. The moment this Phoenix Fermiana State disciple said this, the others fell silent. Putting themselves in Yun's shoes, they would probably make the same choice. After all, there were still opportunities to slowly make up for a poor foundation. If one's personal strength was too weak, they might suffer a mishap in the trials due to someone from the Shushui Ran clan, and he might even lose half his life. What you said is right. What Yi Yun did is a wise choice. Luo Tian sighed as he felt mixed emotions. And at this moment, the Tao tree in front of Yi Yun was beginning to grow taller. The energy within his body was constantly transforming into nutrients for the Tao tree. It was as if the Tao tree would become towering and pierce straight into the clouds. Heaven ascension meant that the tree grown from the Tao seed becomes a path to heaven ascension. 10 deca feet, 20 deca feet, 50 deca feet, 80 deca feet, all the way to 90 deca feet. With every additional growth in height of the Tao tree, its appearance would change. It was obvious at a glance at what level the Tao tree was. In fact, even without these changes, a warrior's eyesight was able to visually estimate the Tao tree's height. Upon seeing Yian's Tao tree reach 90 deca feet, Luo Tian's heart shrunk. It was already that tall? That's too fast. Seeing Yian's Tao tree grow unabated, it was definitely not a problem even if it hit 95 deca feet at this rate. Senior brother Luo, how high was your Tao tree when you broke through to the Heaven Ascension realm? Someone beside Luo Tian asked. Luo Tian had quite an ugly expression on his face. Back then, his Tao tree had grown to a height of 97 deca feet. That height was considered not bad, but in the Luo clan, there were people with higher Tao trees than Luo Tian. There were many who had their Tao trees attain the height of 98 deca feet while there even a handful of people reaching 99 deca feet. 
Luo Tian also knew that there was a difference when he compared himself to the top geniuses who grew up in the royal capital. He was still satisfied with his Tao tree reaching the height of 97 deca feet. It was something to be proud of, but seeing how Yi Yun's Tao tree had already reached 95 deca feet without slowing down, how could he mention that he only had a 97 deca feet Tao tree? He had broken through to the Heaven Ascension realm at the age of 42, seven or eight years older than Yi Yun. If even Yi Yun surpassed him with this, what did he amount to? He was inferior to Yi Yun in laws, inferior to Yi Yun in bloodline, and even now, his foundation that he cultivated for 42 years was inferior to Yi Yun's just over 30 years. Yi Yun's Tao tree should be at the height of 97 deca feet now. The moment the disciple finished saying that, he realized that Yi Yun's Tao tree was growing higher again. Luo Tian's heart shrank as his expression turned extremely ugly. Could it be? Ka Cha! A lightning bolt struck down from above the nine heavens, right onto Yi Yun's Tao tree. And at the same time, two sharp calls echoed as the nine neonate and golden crow circled around the Tao seeds tree before entering the tree's crown and flying amidst the clouds. Nine eight deca feet. Roar. A dragon's roar was emitted from Yi Yun's body as the heaven devouring flood dragon phantom image appeared and flew straight into the Tao tree. Ka. 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 As though the heaven and earth was being split apart, thunder rang again. The Tao tree grew 10 feet higher once again. 99 deca feet. Yi Yun's Tao tree had grown to a height of 99 deca feet in one fell swoop. From afar, it looked like it was connected to the firmament. The numbers of 99 was the pinnacle of Tao. By reaching the height of 99 deca feet, that Tao tree had obtained perfection. However, perfection was not something ridiculously difficult. Amongst Luo clan geniuses, they still existed despite being exceedingly rare. Yi Yun looked up at his Tao tree. His Tao tree had stopped growing at the height of 99 deca feet, and it did not reach 100 deca feet. However, Yi Yun's Tao tree looked somewhat different. Every leaf of the Tao tree contained strange textures that resembled the Tao leaf that Yi Yun had obtained at the Puryang Sword Palace. As the gentle wind blew, the tree leaves rustled. The rustling seemed to contain a strange melody that was quite fascinating. However, the mystery contained within the leaves was naturally not something that Luo Tian and company could see. In fact, just reaching the height of a 99 Tao tree was something that they could not accept. 99 Deca Feet, Perfection Luo Tian looked at Yi Yun's Tao tree and he felt like his face had been brutally smashed in by a fist. He felt his brain buzz. They had just speculated that Yi Yun was forced by the Shushui Ran clan to make his breakthrough in a haste. But before they were even done with their conversation, Yi Yun's Tao tree had grown to a height of 99 Deca Feet. Can you stop doing that? Can you spare us a living path? Being first at the collective training and obtaining all the benefits. Breaking through to the Heaven Ascension Realm and even obtaining a 9-9 Tao Tree. Luo Tian suddenly felt discouraged and disillusioned. His looking forward to the Luo Divine Halt Trials had even reduced. He finally understood that he should not have competed with Yi Yun to begin with. He was not a genius on the same level as Yi Yun, which resulted in such a disparate gap. At the collective training session, he was put down by Yi Yun in every single way, with him unable to lift his head up. 99 Dao Tree Yi Yun, you are pretty fine, but do not become complacent. A 99 Dao Tree does not ensure great success in the future. At this moment, Song Mang's voice echoed in Yi Yun's ears. A 99 Dao Tree was a basic, unnecessary condition that a top mighty figure had to have. However, there were people with 99 Dao trees who ended up exhausting all their potential when they reached a certain stage. Yes, thank you, Senior Tsong Mang, for your sincere advice. This junior is well aware. My martial path has only just started. As Yi Yun said this, the Dao tree in front of him gradually shrunk and it flew into his Dantian. At that moment, Yi Yun's eyes became more profound and the bottom of his eyes seemed to have Dao Tree leaf veins flashing. 
At this moment, Ian felt that he was even closer to Tao, but that feeling disappeared very quickly. The truth of great Tao was not something that was easy to touch. Chapter 855, Long-Awaited Familial In the 10,000 Fey Empyrean heaven, one was considered to have matured when they reached the heaven ascension realm as they were qualified to train outside. However, despite there being millions of heaven ascension realm warriors, the number of people who reached the pinnacle of martial arts was just a handful. The rest would exhaust their potential on their road to heaven ascension, or be trampled upon by others, becoming the accumulation of bones beneath the heaven ascension great Tao. Iyun stood up and he sensed that the Yuan Qi in his body had increased by nearly 100% as he clenched his fists. With a breath, Iyun put his feet in line with his hip and with strength going from his hip to his back, he punched out like the sudden pouncing of a tiger. Before the fist reached its target, a whistling fist wind had torn through the air and slammed into a mountain wall. Black Wind Valley's mountain walls had been immersed in black gases for hundreds of thousands of years, which made them extremely solid and as hard as diamond. Slashing down with a blade would not even leave a mark. Boom! All the oppressive forces in his body burst outward with that single punch as they slammed into Black Wind Valley's mountain wall. Large chunks of rubble blasted out and with gravel flying, Ian's entire fist was lodged deep in the mountain wall. Furthermore, the hard mountain wall had cracks that spread out like spider webs with Ian's fist at its core. The power of his fist was enough to cut into a mountain. That would have been nothing in the Tian Yuan world but this was the 10,000 Fey Empyrean Heaven's Black Wind Valley. The rocks in Black Wind Valley had been tempered by the black mist a prolonged period of time. They were extraordinarily resistant. And even if it was damaged by a fist, the mountain rock would slowly recover. Despite that, Iyun was very satisfied with the power of his punch. At this moment, Sung Mang looked at the time and suddenly said, All right, the collective training at Niazhar Billo is coming to an end. It's about time we end it. Most people had reached the fifth level in the Black Wind Valley trial. Yi Yun, who was thought to be one of the failures, had become the biggest winner. And the aspirant Ran Yu had ended up being crippled. It was truly a lamentable situation. Two spirit cruisers landed to pick up the disciples. The trials at MT Azure Billow have ended. Following that, all of you will proceed directly to the Luo clan's royal capital. There, the Luo Divine Hall trials will be held. I wish that all of you will have good results. Song Mang's gaze swept past these disciples as he slowly said. Luo Divine Hall. Once the trials were mentioned, the disciples felt excited. It happened once every sixty years, and it brought honor to the family and the state they were in. There were also plenty of opportunities. Even if they knew that they were destined to amount to nothing, they still wanted to give it a try. Junior Brothery, on our trip to the royal capital, just stay in the residence and do not go out. Cultivate in peace inside. Luo Fongling suddenly walked over and told him. Ian knew that Luo Fongling was worried about the Shushue Ran clan, so he nodded and said with a smile, Don't worry. All right. Luo Fongling did not know if Yun was truly listening. He came from the lower realm and he lacked a background. It was extremely dangerous to face off against a behemoth like the Shushue Ran clan. The spirit cruisers lifted off separately a day apart, carrying the Phoenix Fermiana State and Fire Cloud State disciples away towards the Luo clan royal capital. In the endless starry cosmos, a vast continent was shrouded by numerous bands of light. Large spirit cruisers shuttled through the bands of light, and amongst these spirit cruisers, the smallest was the size of a mountain, with numerous pavilions on it. There were also gigantic flying fey beasts that were flying slowly. On the continent, the geological features were precipitous, with a countless number of immortal mountains springing up from the ground. They were like sharp swords that reached the sky. Above the immortal mountains, clouds circled them and there was no lack of opulent palaces. This continent was where the Luo clan royal capital was situated. It was also the largest continent in the entire Luo clan. 
The Luo clan royal family that had been passed down for more than a hundred million years had lived on this continent for generations. Decades ago, they had entered a huge war with the enemy invading the entire continent all the way to the capital. They nearly succeeded in invading the capital. It also caused the royal heirs of the Luo clan to be evacuated. But now, after the war was over, the traces of war had already disappeared. At this moment, a fey beast with a wingspan of more than 10 meters suddenly called out sharply in the distance. It moved as fast as lightning, and in the blink of an eye, it transformed into a red shadow that sank into a nebula band and flew towards the tallest immortal mountain. It's the Luo clan royalty's divine swan. Someone on a spirit cruiser said. A divine swan had nearly zero combat strength, but it was the fastest fey beast in the 10,000 fey empyrean heaven. It was used as a messenger beast amongst the Luo clan royalty. Seeing the divine swan land on an immortal mountain, no one knew what important news had been passed from other states. So, the divine swan flew towards the immortal mountain and flew straight to the mountainside, where a huge palace was. Princess Purple Spirit's Residence this mansion was a residence that was second only to the emperor and empress imperial palace in the Luo clan's royal capital. It was superior to many kingly residences. It was located on the same stretch as Prince Crimson Firmament's residence, so its importance was obvious. To the people in the Luo clan royal capital, these two people were important figures. One of them was bound to ascend and step into the Empyrean palace. But at this moment, Princess Purple Spirit, who was one of the heir candidates to the Luo clan throne and a proud daughter of heaven that numerous Luo clan citizens could not even look at in reverence, was bearing her feet and busying herself in her boudoir. Bam! A loud explosion boomed, but the old servant outside the boudoir did not move, as though she did not hear a thing. Amidst the black smoke, a yellow-dressed girl with a round face was coughing as she said, Princess, how many times has it been? If this goes on, you will blow up the entire building. Oomph, there are array formations here, so how can it blow up? A little servant girl like you only knows how to speak nonsense, said another girl while waving her hand nonchalantly. Instantly, a refreshing wind blew over and swept the black smoke away. The girl in the black smoke also revealed herself. If Yi Yun was here, he would immediately recognize her to be Luo Huar. More than ten years had passed, and Luo Hor had a more refined look. She had an extremely noble air to her that flowed naturally from her brows. Most of the Luo clan royalty inherited good looks, and Luo Hoyer's beauty was considered stunning even in the royal family. She had the charm of her mother, Empress Xianho. Luo Hor was only wearing a tight-fit heavily silk shirt. The light linen softly adhered to her skin, accentuating her figure perfectly. Her breasts were ample and she had a thin waist. Her legs were long and slender, while her black hair cascaded down her back, as though it was the most beautiful satin. Princess, I heard that Prince Crimson Firmament has recently been roping in several family clans, aren't you worried? Why do you keep researching the desolate heaven technique? Her Highness Xianho is worried to death. I heard that Her Highness Xianho has delegated Prince Pingnan to rope and geniuses from everywhere to make preparations for the Luo Divine Hall trials. Princess, how can you not care? The maid servant said with a pout. Why should I be anxious? I'm not the one who wants to ascend to the throne. If I was given the throne, wouldn't I have to write royal decrees daily? Just thinking of it irritates me to no end. Luo Hor ran over to look at her desolate heaven cauldron and said nonchalantly. But? You dare to carry on. Luo Hor turned around and stared at the maid servant with her beautiful eyes. Nice going, Chun Yi. Were you bribed by mother? Look at Donger and how well behaved she is. She doesn't nag. When Luo Hor said this, she pointed at Donger, who was dozing at a corner. If Yi Yun was here, he would definitely be surprised that despite although more than a decade had passed, Donger still looked like a 11 or 12 year old lowly. She did not grow up at all. Upon seeing Donger, Chun Yi stared at her grumpily. 
that rascal would do fine just having buns to eat. Other than that, all she does is sleep. How would she say a thing? She doesn't even have any thoughts, but princess. Enough, are you even done? If you keep continuing on, I will send you to watch the gates. And it's perfect that you are a descendant of a primordial fey beast, using you to watch the gates is quite classy. Watch, watch the gates? Princess, I've served you for quite a long period of time. I've done hard work even if I have not performed any meritorious deeds. To think you want me to watch the gates. Chun Yi stared widely as she felt aggrieved. Upon seeing that Chun Yi was about to cry, Luo Hoyer impatiently snorted and said, Enough, enough. I knew you must have been listening to mother. No wonder you have no end to it. Fine, I'll ask about it in the next few days. Thank you, princess. Princess, I'm doing it for your own good. That Prince Crimson Firmament doesn't seem like a good person in any way. How can the Luo throne be given to him? It has to be yours. Chun Yi said. At this moment, the old servant's voice suddenly sounded from outside the door. Princess, young master Xian Junyue wishes to seek an audience. Luo Hor frowned and wanted to reject him, but she noticed Chun Yi beside her looking pitifully at her. Luo Hor took back her words as she said, then, let him wait. Saying that, Luo Hor knocked the dozing donger's head and said, stop sleeping. Your saliva is dripping onto the table. Hurry up and help me change. It's been so many years, and you have not improved at all. All you know is sleep and eat. Luo Hor rolled her eyes at Donger. Donger rubbed her head and said in an aggrieved manner, but I grow slowly. Enough. That Xin Junyuet comes visit me every other day. It's so irritating. I wonder what's the matter this time. I heard that the Divine Swan just returned. There must be something important. As Chun Yi said, she dragged the slow donger and helped Luo Hoyer change. In the middle of a wide and grand hall, a man dressed in white was standing up straight, as he stood conscientiously. His handsome face had sword-like eyebrows and star-like eyes as he carried a sword on his back. He stood there, faintly exuding a sharp aura, as though he was a sword that was about to be unsheathed. At this moment, extremely light footsteps could be heard outside the door. This sound was like a gentle breeze, and every step sounded like a beauty was dancing towards it. Upon hearing this sound, the man's eyes flashed with a smile as he looked at the door. Ding ding ding. As the sounds of jade being gently hit sounded, a stunning beauty came in from outside the door. Princess Purple Spirit's beauty was known by everyone in the Luo clan, but few had the chance to glimpse her face. The girl was dressed in a red dress, and her black and long satin-like hair reached down to her waist. Her skin was crystalline as though it was the highest grade of white jade. Her eyes were like water and her sharp nose gave her a radiant look. It was filled with an intense sense of dignity that made one involuntarily feel ashamed of themselves. This was not only because of her status as the Luo clan's royalty, but it was also because of the nobility of her ancient fey bloodline. Under Donger's companionship, Luo Hor walked into the hall. Greetings to Princess Purple Spirit. Shen Junyue hastily bowed. Although he was part of Empress Xuanho's family, and he was considered to be Luo Hoyer's cousin, he was only a genius from a family clan, while she was a heir to the Luo clan throne. Xian Junyue did not dare breach etiquette. Yeah. Luo Huar acknowledged tersely and sat down at the seat of honor. She then slightly frowned and said, What are you standing for? Thank you Princess Purple Spirit for conferring me a seat. Xian Junyue said. Conferring a seat? This princess just finds you an eyesore standing. However, Luo Huar would not say this out loud. Xian Junyue was from her mother's family clan. He was one of the top geniuses in the younger generation that even Her Highness Xianho thought highly of. For the sake of her mother, she could not be too nasty to him. Translator's Note This is Chapter 8 Ninths of the Week. Since we have one more guaranteed chapter and three sponsored chapters, 
they will be spaced out at one chapter a day for the weekend, Friday, 2, Sat, 1, Sun, 1, and we will be behind the Ross again if Cocoon Cow maintains his two chapters a day. Please support my Patreon. Let's try for the second goal, for 82 600, rising TMW's releases to 11 a week. It's currently only at 9 slash week. Also, if it hits 150 patrons, currently 102, before February 15, 2017, regardless of amount pledged, I will translate all chapters that are released for two weeks by the author and release them as soon as possible, which means approximately 10 additional chapters. Chapter 856, Get Him to Call Me Master Why are you looking for me? Luo Huar asked lightly. Luo Huar's light tone was understood by Chun Yi, who was beside her. She knew that the meaning behind her princess words were, say whatever you have quickly. Once you are done, leave. This princess still isn't done with refining relics. Xian Junyue immediately brushed his robe, stood up and said, Her Highness Empress Xian invites princess over. It's an urgent matter, so it is requested that princess proceeds with this lowly servant as soon as possible. What's mother calling me for? Luo Horror glanced at Xian Junyue and she felt irritated. Xian Junyue ran to her mother all day, as though he was treating her mother as his mother. When she thought about this, Luo Horror had a headache. If that's the case, I'll go visit mother. Fenghua Palace, Empress Xian's Palace. It was one of the two larger palace in the royal harem. Empress Xian and Empress Luo were both given the title of Empress, and both of them had ancient Fei family clans supporting them. They were both extremely prominent in the Luo clan. Empress Xian entered the harem slightly later, but due to her outstanding talent, her cultivation speed in the palace was not any slower than Empress Luo's, so she was quickly on par with Empress Luo, winning the trust of Emperor Luo. However, Empress Luo's faction had been in operation for a long time and Prince Crimson Firmament himself had a powerful influence as well. Even though Luo Hoyer's talents were outstanding, and she was given a lot of help in various aspects by Empress Xian, it was still extremely difficult for her to ascend to the throne. What made Empress Xian dispirited was her daughter's personality. She did as she pleased and she was dedicated to studying her martial arts and desolate heaven technique. She had no interest in vying for the throne. Arrival of Princess Purple Spirit Following that, Luo Hoyer's figure appeared by the palace's door. A tiny frown immediately appeared on Empress Xian's beautiful face as she looked like her mind was in pain. Mother, why did you have to call me over? Before Luo Hoyer reached Empress Xian, her pouty voice could be heard. You are actually willing to come. Empress Xian said with a sigh and shook her head. Why wouldn't I come? I was planning on visiting mother. Wasn't I just busy? Luo Hor came to Empress Xian's side like a gust of wind and sat down beside her petulantly. Busy? You should be busy, but what you should busy yourself over is proper matters. Hoyer, vying for the throne cannot be stopped once it begins. Once we are defeated, no good will come out of it for us. The Luo Divine Hall Trials are about to begin, and our Luo clan will have the first Luo Divine Hall Trials in decades after the war ended. At the war, our Luo clan lost too many mighty figures, and no one knows how many factions are waiting for the Luo Divine Hall Trials to begin. Huar, you do not care about any of this, so you do not know that your father thinks very highly about the upcoming Luo Divine Hall Trials. If our performance at the Luo Divine Hall Trials surpasses Crimson Firmaments, you will become the more appropriate candidate for the throne in your father and his subjects' eyes. Saying that, Empress Xian took out a jade slip and said, Just now, Prince Pingnan sent a divine swan back with information. It lists the geniuses who were recommended by us and are likely to have promising performances at the Luo Divine Hall Trials. Take a look at it. Luo Horrid took the jade slip and as she probed it slightly, she immediately frowned silently. So many. It's too long. I don't want to read it. Luo Hoyer's eyes turned and looked at Xian Junyue, doesn't Xian Junyue know all of this very clearly? Why don't you simply summarize it? 
There were so many people with detailed information introducing them on the jade. Luo Huara could not even be bothered to read all of it. You brat! Empress Xian frowned. How could she not know what was going on in Luo Huara's tiny head? Forget it, Junyue, go ahead and tell her. Empress Xian said with a headache. Yes, your highness, princess. Xian Junyue answered, actually, amongst the geniuses here, most of them are average in my point of view. A few are worthy of attention, especially Cloud Water states Mo Sang, Heavenfall states Gu Qing, and Spirit Feathers states Ling Wu. They all have Heaven Fei bloodline and they have cultivated for more than four decades. They have long acquired their fame and are the cream of the crop. Also, there is a person from the Fire Cloud State whose performance at the MT Azure Billow Collective Training was extremely outstanding. Also, worth mentioning is that he is a human. As Xian Junyue said this, he also found it unbelievable. For a human to obtain first place, especially success in Black Wind Valley, it was extremely rare. Our 10,000 Fei Empyrean Heaven only has a few humans. In the other Empyrean Heavens, the humans aren't weak as well. Why would it be surprising to have a human genius? Luo Horror said nonchalantly. She couldn't care if they were Heaven Fei or human. All she cared about now was the cauldron in her boudoir. A new batch of relics were being refined in there, and she did not feel at ease about letting her maid servant, Chun Yi, watch it. This human is truly different from the humans from other Empyrean heavens. His name is Yi Yun, and he is a newly recruited disciple of the Fire Cloud State's Earth Fire Hall. As his performance in Fire Spirit Palace was outstanding, he was recommended to Prince Pingnan. He was not a member of our Luo clan prior to that, and he was rescued by a Fire Cloud State Heaven Fire Hall disciple. Xian Junyue said. Upon saying this, Xian Junyue suddenly realized that Luo Hoyer's expression had apparently changed. Yi Yun? Luo Hoyer was taken aback slightly. That name left a deep impression on her. It should be impossible that it's that darn rascal. Upon thinking about this, Luo Hoyer ground her teeth hatefully. As a princess of the Luo clan, one of the heirs to the Luo Empyrean throne, she had been bullied by a country boy in a lower realm. Once she thought about Yi Yun's mature ways beyond his age and his composed look, Luo Hoyer was infuriated. Xian Jun had noticed Luo Hoyer's nasty expression and was greatly disturbed. Does Princess know of this Yi Yun? Xian Jun asked. Luo Hoyer said, it's probably only a person who shares the same name. That punk was definitely still in some corner in the lower realm like a frog in the bottom of a well. Back then despite losing to the punk, this princess was just being a dragon in a puddle of shrimps. If it wasn't for mother preventing me from using the Luo clan's cultivation techniques or mystic techniques, because she was afraid that my identity would be revealed, what sort of problems would there be? Luo horror surmised that the punk, Yi Yun, was probably just at the Yuan opening realm. At this realm, he was already considered a sage in the lower realm. However, in the 10,000 Fei Empyrean in heaven, he was barely a foot soldier. Maybe she should find an opportunity to return to the Tian Yuan world and bring that rascal, Yi Yun, to the Luo clan to show him her prowess, letting him know how noble this princess identity is. She wanted to show the punk that to go far in martial arts, it was not enough to stay in those tiny worlds. There was a need to come to the 10,000 Fei Empyrean heaven and rub shoulders with this princess. If he were to prostrate himself in front of this princess, this princess shall be kind and accept him as a lackey. When the time comes, he would understand that his strength was nothing at all. He he, that guy is obsessed with martial arts. He definitely would want to cultivate my Luo clan's cultivation techniques. When the time comes, I can get him to call me master. That would definitely feel good. With this thoughts in mind, Luo Horror could not help but reveal a sinister smile. However, this smile surprised Xian Junyue. Even though it had a touch of sinisterness, as long as Luo Hoyer smiled, it would be like the blooming of flowers, dazzling others. Obviously, this smile would not appear for no reason, so it was clearly because she thought of another Yi Yun. 
That Yi Yun, who is he? Qian Junyue suddenly felt alarmed and was wary. Although he was extremely respectful to Luo Huayer, he had already considered himself a suitor of Luo Huayer in his heart. In the future, if Luo Huayer were to ascend the throne as her husband, he would definitely be a dragon amongst people. And with Xian Junyue being born into Empress Xian's family, he was a top genius in the family, so he had cultivated with great effort. No one knew who the person Luo Huayer was referring to that could leave such an impression on Luo Huayer. Just thinking of that smile, that person was probably a genius from a prominent family background. Naturally, it could not be the Yi Yun on the name list. Although he was talented, it was only decent. In terms of background, it was not worth mentioning at all. Xian Junyue felt an urgent sense of danger. All right, how did this Yi Yun perform? Luo Huayer suddenly asked out of curiosity. First at the MT Azure Billow Collective Training. He obtained the Tao Tree and Extreme Young Illumination Divine Columns rating of Hibernation Awakening in the ancient Fey Edifice. At Black Wind Valley, he captured the intermediary spirit blood snake. Xian Junyue answered. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Luo Huayer nodded. Huayer, this human's performance is already not bad. He came from a lower realm but he has two aspect totems. And after he absorbed an ancient fey bone, he obtained a heaven-devouring flood dragon bloodline. In my point of view, he is quite a diligent fellow. Empress Xian said. Xian Junyue echoed, it's not easy to have such performance for a human from the lower realm. However, his foundation is too weak, so he might not be able to amount to much in the future. Xian Junyue was haughty so he was naturally more reserved when he rated other geniuses. Empress Xian said, the people who did quite well for the collective training are already on their way to the royal capital. Soon, I will be summoning them, and Hoyer, you should meet them when the time comes. Chapter 857, Empress Luo's Banquet Yes, mother. Luo Horror answered with a clear lack of interest and she was rather reluctant to do so. Luo Huor also knew that the reason why her mother had requested for her to show up was to further draw on the geniuses and show the world her love for talent. If she did not do so, how could more geniuses and the family clans behind them be willing to join their camp? Empress Xin glanced at Luo Huor and she sighed in her heart. Luo Huor might not put these matters at heart, but Prince Crimson Firmament had already established a massive force and it was constantly expanding. If they did not adopt vigorous measures, even those family clans and factions that stood on their side might even end up being convinced by Prince Crimson Firmament to switch camps. The abdication of the throne was at hand, so Empress Luo and Prince Crimson Firmament were using every means possible. At this moment, a flash of light appeared as a voice transmission charm appeared in front of Empress Xian. After hearing the information in the voice transmission charm, Empress Xian frowned slightly. A voice transmission charm from Empress Luo? Xian Junyue inquired. Empress Luo had a unique voice transmission charm, so standing nearby, he could recognize it at a glance. Yes. Empress Xian nodded. Empress Luo has set up a banquet and has invited us, as well as the geniuses partaking in the trials to attend it. It looks like she plans on showing a display of force. Then what are we to do? Xian Junyue found the matter somewhat tricky. Their present forces were naturally far inferior to Empress Luo's. We shall go. The geniuses we have attracted must have been invited as well. If we do not go, those geniuses might think that we are afraid of Empress Luo. When the time comes, they might end up being roped in by them. Empress Xian crushed the voice transmission charm and she looked at Luo Huayer. Choir, you are not to fool around at Empress Luo's place. A princess must act like a princess. Your nonsense can be ignored at home, but when you are out, if you were to embarrass yourself, no one knows how others will think of you. Please give me peace of mind. Yes, mother. Luo Choir spat out her cute tongue, but no one knew if she heeded Empress Xian's exhortations. We are almost arriving at the Luo clan's royal capital. 
On the spirit cruiser, a fire cloud state disciple said excitedly. Even Luo Flingling's eyes immediately flashed with a hint of excitement. She had been arduously cultivating in pursuit of martial arts. She had rose up with difficulty, and now, she finally took that solid step forward, arriving at the holy land that she had always longed for, the Luo clan's royal capital. The Luo clan royal capital was not a place that anyone could go to as they wished. The numerous nebula bands revolving around the Luo clan royal capital were an array protecting the capital. Unless they received the permit to enter the capital, it was impossible to enter. Normal disciples might never have a chance in their entire lives to enter the Luo clan royal capital. Right in front of us is the Luo clan royal capital. You will be directly sent to the Luo divine hall and you will stay there. However, don't be in a rush to be too happy. Look around you. The fire cloud state person in charge of leading them said coldly. The disciples on the two spirit cruisers looked around and they saw many other spirit cruisers docked in the vicinity of the royal capital's nebula band along the perimeter. They saw many spirit cruisers that came from other states. These spirit cruiser had flags of different states. That's the rainy mortal state spirit cruiser, and that spirit cruiser, it's the earth desolate states. A disciple said. At a glance, they saw at least 20 state flags. The numerous flags fluttered as more than a hundred spirit cruisers headed towards the royal capital. Even though they knew that the Luo clan had a total of 196 states, and that some of the states were several times larger than the Fire Cloud State and the Phoenix Fermiana State, it still gave everyone a startling feeling. Other than the 196 states, there were also ancient family clans with deep heritage. For example, the Shushue Ran clan was one such family clan. It also independently nurtured geniuses from the family and sent them to the Luo clan's royal capital. These large family clans would typically nurture the truly exception geniuses themselves. Only the slightly weaker ones, like Ranyu, were sent to other states for training. Therefore, it was destined for the royal capital to be filled with outstanding elites. Despite knowing this, the feeling that one got from truly witnessing the scene of densely packed spirit cruisers, so large in size that their ends could not be seen, was truly phenomenal. The fire cloud state present could not help but sigh and realize their minuteness. They knew that to compete with people like these, many of them were destined to be green leaves that only accentuated the flowers. Oh, that's the Heaven Fall State Spirit Cruiser. A disciple suddenly said. The Heaven Fall State was one of the top five states ranked amongst the 196 states. As for the Fire Cloud State, it was only ranked in the middle, so the disparity in strength between the two states was non trivial. Although the Heaven Fall State's Spirit Cruiser was a standard Spirit Cruiser, its size was several times bigger than the Fire Cloud State's. There was no doubt that the number of young elites that their Spirit Cruiser carried was many more than the Fire Cloud State's. It was only natural that such a large state would be given more spots. Eun looked at the Heaven Fall State's flag that comprised of a bursting flame. Its fiery redness was harsh on the eyes. At the Luo Divine Hall trials, the competition will be immense. The lot of you may be the best in the Fire Cloud State, but amongst the geniuses from 196 states, you might not attract as much attention. Besides, don't forget, there is still the strongest faction, the Luo Clan Royal Capital. The Luo Clan Royal Capital's strength far exceeds any state and family clan. You will have to depend on your efforts in order to obtain a good result at the Luo Divine Hall Trials. The person in charge of leading them said, and with a wave of his hand, the two spirit cruisers passed through the nebula band and headed for the Luo Clan's Royal Capital. As the spirit cruiser passed through layers of nebula bands, it quickly approached an immortal mountain, which stood erect like a sharp sword. Yi Yun looked down and he exhaled lightly. This competition was truly intense. However, this made Yi Yun feel a surge of emotions. He had just made a breakthrough and he was thinking of testing his own strength. Phew! As the wind howled, the spirit cruisers carrying the geniuses who were going to participate in the Luo Divine Hall trials from the 196 states had arrived at the royal capital. 
They landed on a large mountain, which had a wide platform built on it. The platform was almost flush with the other divine mountains around it, as though it was a flat piece of land that suspended in mid-air. Even a large spirit cruiser was like a speck of dust when it landed on the platform. Around the platform, there were large and opulent palaces and Eun was assigned to one of them. The palace was bright and spacious with well-equipped facilities, and there were more than ten servants to serve him. And on a table in the middle of the palace, there was an invitation. Upon opening it, Eun realized it was a banquet invitation and it was signed by Empress Luo. Eun pondered for a moment. He naturally knew that Empress Luo was Prince Crimson Firmament's biological mother. The reason why the Luo Divine Hall trials raged like a storm was mainly because of the competition between Prince Crimson Firmament and Princess Purple Spirit. Empress Luo did not only invite us to the banquet, she has also invited Empress Xian. Yi Yun read the introduction in the invitation and he was slightly surprised. However, regardless of anything, he was now a Luo clan disciple, so there was no reason for him to reject a banquet. Chapter 858 For Great Young Masters The Luo clan's royal capital covered an extremely extensive area. To the north of the royal city, there was a snow-covered mountain that was a hundred thousand feet tall. The mountain's peak was shrouded by clouds, and bluish snow capped it. There were vast swaths of snow that filled the area, making it look like an immortal's paradise. And in this vast sea of snow stood numerous jade-carved palaces. Every palace was augmented by array formations, so even though the exterior environment was covered in snow, the palace's internal environment was maintained at a comfortable temperature all year round, with luxuriant grass and trees in blooming flowers. It was extremely beautiful. In the middle of the mountain peak, there was a hot spring that did not freeze regardless of the season. The hot spring had the name Luo Lucid Springs and its temperature was pleasant. Luo Lucid Springs was perennially covered in dense water vapor, and the spring water was like ambrosia from the heavens. It was filled with spiritual energy, so just drinking a mouthful would allow a mortal to become one year younger. A kettle of it allowed one to become ten years younger. The marvelous effects for mortals was no surprise, but even for warriors with relatively high cultivation levels, Luo Lucid Springs was still able to provide them with many rare benefits. Even in the Luo clan royal compound that was filled with spiritual grounds, the Luo Lucid Springs was still one of the more famous ones. The entire Luo Lucid Springs was surrounded by a palace with the name Luo Lucid Palace. And it was the venue where Empress Luo was hosting her banquet today. The people invited to the banquet were important figures of the Luo clan. There was Empress Xian, Princess Purple Spirit, old subjects of the Luo clan's royal court, outstanding figures in the royal capital as well as those young elites who performed well at the collective training and who were expected to stand out at the Luo Divine Hall trials. The standards for choosing these young elites were extremely high. There were certain states which did not have a single person chosen. For example, Yi Yun was the only person picked from the Fire Cloud state. The young elites who were chosen were extremely excited. The banquet could be one of the most important opportunities in their lives. If they were lucky, they might gain the recognition of the upper echelons of the Luo clan and enjoy a meteoric rise. It was still two hours before the banquet began. With the invitation in hand, Yi Yun came to Luo Lucid Palace and he happened to meet Luo Tian, who also had an invitation. Luo Tian from the Phoenix Fermiana State had been chosen to attend the banquet but his seat was located at one of the big tables situated outside Luo Lucid Palace. He was just there to make up the numbers. Sitting there gave him zero chance of being appreciated. He would not even get to see Empress Luo, while all the truly important people were seated inside. After Luo Tian saw Yi Yun, he gave him an awkward smile. Ever since Yi Yun broke through to the Heaven Ascension Realm and obtained a 99 decafeet Tao Tree, Luo Tian no longer had the mind to compete with Yi Yun. He acknowledged his own inferiority against Yi Yun. Yi Yun gave him a gentle nod before walking into the palace. Upon seeing this scene, Luo Tian felt extremely envious. He also desired to enter the inner palace, but he was ineligible to do so. 
The inner palace was filled with top figures. It was even rumored that Princess Purple Spirit would come today. If one entered the inner palace, one could catch a sight of Princess Purple Spirit's beauty. Princess Purple Spirit was considered the most dazzling pearl in all of the Luo clan's royal capital. No heiress from the large families or the female elites from the various states could compete with Princess Purple Spirit. She was on a completely different level. Ignoring her looks and family background, just her talent alone that was derived from the richness of her ancient fey bloodline was shocking. It was rumored that Princess Purple Spirit had inherited an ancient fey's bloodline as though she was a reincarnation of one. At the age of 10, she had awakened her ancient fey bloodline, and she had even greatly surpassed Prince Crimson Firmament. It was also because of Princess Purple Spirit that Emperor Luo deliberated over the heir to the throne. If not, with the Luo clan's tradition of preference towards age, the forces that Prince Crimson Firmament controlled and the support he received that far exceeded Princess Purple Spirits would have easily ensured that he would ascend to the throne. Despite Luo Tian knowing that his talent and status made it impossible for his life to have any intersection with Princess Purple Spirit, he would have been extremely satisfied just meeting her once. Unfortunately, the statuses they enjoyed were realms apart. They were people from two different worlds. Obviously, Yi Yun did not know what Luo Tian was thinking. In fact, even if Luo Tian had said it out loud, Yi Yun would find it difficult to imagine that the problematic girl that he met at the Taiya Divine City had an identity that was so far beyond one's reach. The moment he stepped into the inner hall of the Luo Lucid Palace, the atmosphere changed suddenly. Taking a few steps forward, Yi Yun noticed the Luo Lucid Springs situated in the middle of the inner hall. The Luo Lucid Springs was billowing with spring water and above the pool, a pavilion carved in jade had been constructed. And on this pavilion, there were girls dressed in white who were dancing. These girls were specially hand-picked from the best in the world. They had heaven fey bloodlines, and their looks and figures were impeccable. To be able to dance at the Luo Lucid Springs was also not a chance that any ordinary girl would receive. At this moment, there were already quite a few people gathered by the sides of the Luo Lucid Springs. At a glance, there was no lack of young elites, but few elderly important figures had come. Yi Yun did not know anyone, so he found a random seat, sat down and slowly began drinking tea. Although Yi Yun looked aloof, everything that happened around him was within his perception. He realized that not far from the Luo Lucid Springs, there was a small teleportation array. It was surprising that it was built right inside Luo Lucid Palace. And at this moment, the teleportation array suddenly lit up. Immediately, everyone in the Grand Hall looked at the teleportation array. It had to be said that the Luo Lucid Palace was situated on the 100,000 feet tall Luo Lucid Mountain. The journey from the foot of the mountain to its peak spanned a distance of dozens of miles. Other than members of the royal family, no one was permitted to fly in Luo Lucid Mountain. They could only walk up, so although warriors could traverse distances quickly, under the limitations of brisk walking, the journey up the mountain still took a considerable amount of time. Although there was a teleportation array built in the Luo Lucid Palace, only people of certain stature could use it to enter the palace directly. Someone impressive is coming. I wonder who it is. People began discussing as the teleportation array flashed, and soon, two people appeared side by side in the teleportation array. The person on the left was simply dressed in azure color clothes. He looked like a mortal scholar, and no energy fluctuations could be felt from his body. And the other person stood in stark contrast from the scholar. He was covered in silk clothes and jade. The fabric in his clothes was woven from priceless rainbow silk produced by rainbow celestial silkworms. The pair of boots he wore were made of leather from top-grade fey beasts. And just the cost of his clothes and boots added up was impossible to be bought without a few thousand world stones. Many of the elites present may have been invited to the Luo Lucid Palace's banquet, but they were not necessarily as rich. Just the man's garb alone was worth more than the entire fortunes of a number of people. The appearance of the duo immediately attracted the attention of all the elites present. 
The duo, be it the silk-clothed youth or the azure-clothed scholar, exuded a natural air of nobleness. The heritage of ancient family clans in the Luo clan was manifested from their bearing. Dong Lin Yu Ran Xuei Two of the four great young masters of the Luo clan royal capital. Someone in the crowd identified them. In the entire Luo clan royal capital, the people worthy enough to be given the title of one of the four great young masters were definitely the most outstanding figures amongst outstanding figures. Donglin Yu came from the Donglin family clan, while Ran Shui came from the Shushui Ran clan. They were large family clans that ranked in the top ten family clans of the Luo clan. The fiefs of these two family clans alone were about ten times the size of the Firecloud state. The two family clans' ancestors had previously fought alongside the founding emperor of the Luo clan. They had achieved illustrious military merits, so after the Luo clan was established, they were each bestowed the titles of king and their lineage had persisted to present day. They were as ancient as the Luo clan's royal family. Furthermore, be it the Donglin clan or the Shushui Ran clan, every generation would nurture large numbers of talents. Some would be given important positions in the royal capital, while others would be assigned to one of the 196 states to become an official of a state. As for Donglin Yu and Ran Shui, they were considered to be two of the most outstanding juniors from the two family clans. For such large family clans, the juniors they paid the most attention to would be nurtured in their own family clans. If Ran Shui was compared to Ran Yu, the differences in their positions were like heaven and earth. There was no way to compare them. Brother Ran, please. The scholarly looking azure clothed man stretched out his hand. He was Dong Ling Yu. Brother Donlin, please. The silk-clothed youth said in response. Ran Shui's outfit was extravagant, but he did not give off an arrogant demeanor. Every action and word from him felt like a gentle spring breeze, he truly deserved his title as one of the four great young masters. At this moment, a burly man with a livid face and large fangs walked up and led the silk-clothed youth to his seat. Seeing the burly man, everyone shuddered in their hearts. Fei Demon The Fei Demon race in the 10,000 Fei Empire in heaven was a mixed hybrid between Fei and Demon. They were few in number, but they had long lifespans. Their bodily strength was extremely terrifying and they were born warriors. If a Fei Demon was trained into a loyal soldier, he would be the most valuable protective force of a family clan. This Fei Demon was one nurtured by the Shushui Ran clan, and he was a follower of Ran Shui. It was also obvious what sort of status that Ran Shui had for him to be able to bring a follower to attend the banquet. Ran Shui sat at one of the seats of honor, which was not located too far from Yi Yun. At this moment, the Fei Demon whispered into Ran Shui's ear. Ran Shui was chatting with Dong Lin Yu, but after hearing the Fei Demon's words, he stopped and he turned his head slightly as his gaze landed on Yi Yun. The teacup in Yi Yun's hand faltered for a moment before he continued sipping his tea slowly. Ran Shui. Just from the name, Yi Yun knew the person's identity as well. Brother Ran, I heard something happen recently to your Shu Shui Ran clan. It appears as though one of your direct descendants' bloodline had been crippled. The Fei Demon's whispers were not hidden from Dong Lin Yu, so Dong Lin Yu knew that the person that Ran Shui was looking at was Yi Yun. A young disciple from the Fire Cloud State, even if he had obtained first in the collective training, was not someone that Dong Ling Yu would care too much for. If this was any other time, he would not have even given a glance. However, this Fire Cloud State disciple had smacked the Shushui Ran clan in the face. It was a taboo for the bloodline of someone from an ancient Fei family clan like the Shushui Ran clan to be crippled. The news of this small incident had proliferated. Therefore, Dong Lin Yu had paid a bit of attention to Yi Yun, who dared to provoke the Almighty Family Clan. Such a person was usually rash and petulant. He might not understand how terrifying an ancient family clan was, and he had engaged in his reckless behavior because of his bit of talent. He was doomed to suffer sooner or later. I have incurred ridicule on myself, Brother Dong Lin. It had indeed happened. 
The disciple that had been crippled was one of the disciples that my Shushue Ran clan had assigned outside the family. The four elders of my Shushue Ran clan have instructed me to simply teach him a lesson within the rules. Ran Shue said in a nonchalant manner. He did not deliberately do so with a voice transmission. It made many people around him hear it. They were secretly horrified at how Ran Shue truly disparaged Yi Yun. He had said such those words so casually, and it was unknown how far the so-called lesson would go. Chapter 859, Meeting Princess Purple Spirit Yi Yun obviously heard the sentence that everyone heard. He glanced at Ran Shue and quietly placed his teacup down. Yi Yun was not one to suffer silently. After being disparaged by someone in Luo Lucid Palace, he would not remain silent. Young Master Ran, this lowly one wants to consult you wholeheartedly, what sort of lesson does young Master Ran plan on teaching this lowly one? Yi Yun suddenly spoke out. All the young elites present were taken aback as they immediately turned to look at Ran Shue and wait for his reply. Ran Shue lightly said, My Shushue Ran clan will not go overboard in seeking revenge. It only feels that it's right that debts are paid and how murder is paid for with one's life. The lesson that you taught to Ran Yu will roughly be the same lesson I give to you. Ran Shue's words interested the surrounding young elites. This was no trifling matter. Yi Yun had crippled Ran Yu's bloodline, so Ran Yu's future was practically destroyed. The lesson that Ran Shue was planning to give Yi Yun was to cripple Yi Yun in the confines of the rules? Such a lesson was tragic, but in the mouth of Ran Shue, it appeared as though it was nothing serious. Just from Ran Shue's bearing, he did not exude a feeling of being overbearing, but the words he said were completely overbearing that ran deep into his bone. Oh? In that case, you, Ran Shue, plan on crippling me. Very well. I, Yi Yun, will not go overboard in seeking revenge either. I too believe that it is only right that debts are paid and how murder is paid for with one's life. Whoever wants to cripple me, I will retaliate and might also cripple him. What Yi Yun said was forceful as it echoed throughout the venue. Everyone was dumbfounded when they heard this. They had commented that Ran Shue was overbearing, but Yi Yun was even more overbearing. He had used the same words that Ran Shue had said to strike back at him. Ran Shui had made it difficult for Yi Yun in public because he disparaged Yi Yun, but it was because he had the Shushui Ran clan backing him. That was a large family clan ranked amongst the top ten in the Luo clan. Ran Shui's background was powerful enough, so no one dared to say a thing when he made such a declaration. However, Yi Yun dared to say something similar. He was only a human, without any foundation in the Luo clan. Yet, he wanted to be belligerent against Ran Shue? What was he basing this on? If Yi Yun was said to have great talent, Ran Shue too had heaven defying talent. Ran Shue was on a completely different level to Ran Yu. No one knew if Yi Yun could compete with Ran Shue when it came to talent. As for other aspects, there was no need to discuss them any further. In nearly every aspect, Yi Yun was left in the dust by Ran Shue. Ran Shue's sword-like brows pricked up as the cold beam in his eyes shot at Yi Yun's body like an arrow. What did you say? I didn't hear it clearly. What do you want to do to me? I just said that whoever wants to cripple me, I'll retaliate, and I might also cripple him. Yi Yun did not mind repeating again. What he said was the standards of the martial world. If this was any other time, no one would find fault with it. But in the present situation, if it were any other young elite present in Yi Yun's shoes, none of them would have the courage to say it. Ran Shue suddenly laughed out. It's been a while since a peer dared to say such things to me. Yi Yun, you probably think that some results at the collective training, the appreciation of Empress Xian, and the invitation to this Luo Lucid Springs banquet means you are one step closer to the upper echelons of the Luo clan. You probably think that my Shushue Ran clan is nothing impressive. You are truly naive. Ran Shue derided relentlessly. He obviously knew that Yi Yun was Empress Xian's person. 
Empress Xian had drawn in a batch of geniuses in order to let Princess Purple Spirit successfully ascend to the throne. However, it would be a joke to say that these geniuses had any higher status. To put it bluntly, they were just chess pieces. You just obtained first in a collective training, which was just a few tiny states in the larger picture, and you are already this overbearing. Those who aren't in the know might even think that you have obtained first place at the Luo Divine Hall trials. Furthermore, even if you were to obtain the first few spots in the Luo Divine Hall Trials, so what? The Luo Divine Hall Trials happen once every 60 years. In 60,000 years, there are a thousand of those, and you think that's impressive? What a frog in a well! Ran Shui drank his wine as he shook his head in disdain. He was not finished with his words, but everyone knew the meaning behind Ran Shui's words. An ancient family clan like the Shushui Ran clan had existed for hundreds of millions of years. In a hundred million years, the powerful family clans in the Luo clan had never changed. And as for these young elites, there were numerous born, with numerous maturing and numerous dying. In the history of time, they were already uncountable. Furthermore, the present Yun was still not considered to be a genius of that level. Compared to the a behemoth like the Shushue Ran clan that had existed for a hundred million years, it was just a joke. At this moment, Ran Shue had no intention on arguing with Yi Yun any further. With his stature, arguing with Yi Yun was only demeaning of his identity. Brother Donlin, let's continue drinking. There's no need to mind an ignoramus. Ran Shue's character was frank. Although he had argued with Yi Yun, it did not affect his drinking mood. He did not even put it at heart. And indeed, he began drinking with Dong Lin Yu. Immediately, everyone looked at Yi Yun as they broke out into a flurry of discussion. Previously, Yi Yun's performance at the MT Azure Billow Collective Training was amazing, but at the Luo Clan Royal Capital, there were few who knew about Yi Yun. The Luo Clan was just too big. Every clan would have their outstanding progenies, so Yi Yun was not worth paying any concern to. However, today, all of them got to know this young man. A human, whose cultivation level was only at the early stages of the Heaven Ascension, had dared to enter into a conflict with the top scion of the Shushue Ran clan. This truly had the inkling of a rash move. That Yi Yun comes from the lower realm. He probably does not know the terror of a large family clan in the 10,000 Fei Empery in heaven. To dare to make such impertinent remarks with a low cultivation level and zero background, he will suffer sooner or later. Background is just too important. Yi Yun can only be considered to have barely clung on to Empress Xian. Maybe he was lucky and won some recognition. People began to discuss privately with Yuan Qi voice transmissions. They were not discussing Yi Yen's talent, but his actions. It was inadvisable to be provocative or be unable to be submissive and keep a low profile when one was still lacking in cultivation levels. At this moment, a sharp call resounded above Luo Lucid Mountain. People looked up and they saw a gigantic divine bird that was tens of thousands of feet long. This divine bird looked identical to the legendary phoenix. Its feathers were all lit up in flames, as it shimmered with seven auspicious colors. A aura that belonged to an ancient fey beast engulfed the vicinity. Even though the people present were elites of the Luo clan, they still felt shortness of breath when they suddenly experienced the ancient fey aura that blanketed them. It's a phoenix bird. Our Luo clan's top grade mount. It is a divine beast that can shuttle through the spatial storms in the sinkhole. The phoenix bird possessed the bloodline of the ancient phoenix. Furthermore, its bloodline was extremely rich, and it could be said to be a living ancient fae. There were only two phoenix birds in the entire Luo clan, and they were part of the royal family's mounts. This phoenix bird was bestowed to Princess Purple Spirit by Emperor Luo as a mount. It also showed how much favor Princess Purple Spirit had from Emperor Luo. It's Princess Purple Spirit Sacred Mount's arrival. The young elites present immediately stood up, including Ran Shui and Dong Lin Yu. Although they were the four great young masters of the royal capital, 
they were incomparable to Princess Purple Spirit, be it background, status, or talent. They had arrived at Luo Lucid Palace through a teleportation array, which showed how much higher in status they were compared to other geniuses. However, Princess Purple Spirit traveled from her own palace to the Luo Lucid Mountain, which had a flight ban on her Phoenix Bird. As the Phoenix Bird circled the skies, a rainbow bridge fell from the Phoenix Bird's back. Twelve maid servants accompanied the crowned Princess Purple Spirit on her descent. The air of nobleness that belonged to a royalty spread out at the same time. Paying our respects to Princess Purple Spirit. The elites present bowed in unison in an extremely respectful manner. Princess Purple Spirit was eminent. Ignoring her position as one of the heirs to the throne, just taking 10,000 steps back, even if she failed at ascending to the throne, she would still have a bright future ahead of her. Although it was inevitable that Empress Xian would lose power, Princess Purple Spirit herself had exceptional talent. With the elderly Emperor Luo protecting her, it was not difficult for her to become a supreme figure. A supreme figure, regardless if it was the Luo royalty, would have a sublime status in the Luo clan. When everyone bowed, Yi Yun was somewhat at a loss. Yi Yun watched as Princess Purple Spirit descended from the sky. Even though he was mentally prepared, he was still unaccustomed when he truly saw the girl who had a screw loose and had previously accidentally exposed herself to him. She had transformed into an illustrious princess of the Luo clan, respected by billions of people. This scene was too contrasting from before. Seeing Luo Hoyer nonchalantly wave her hand at the elites to not stand on ceremony, her demure and elegant expression truly gave her the bearing of a princess. Was, was she still the same person? Stand up. Luo Horror said lightly. At this moment, Ran Shui came forward with a beaming smile. Your Highness, you are truly getting more and more beautiful. Luo Hora was considered to be the best female elite in the entire royal capital, so Ran Shui naturally looked forward to being able to get closer to her. Even if he could be slightly closer to her while speaking, it would also be a great thing. Of course, he was still maintaining the standard courtesies of a subject, so it was not offensive. But at this moment, Ran Shui, who had came forward, slowly halted in his footsteps. He realized that the goddess, who had a high standing in his heart all this time, did not pay him any attention. At this moment, her beautiful eyes were looking straight at a corner of the grand hall, with eyes of disbelief. Ran Shui was taken aback. What was the princess looking at? He could not help but look back and trace Princess Purple Spirit's gaze. As a result, he saw Yi Yun at the corner of the hall. Yi Yun had just put down his teacup. Others had came forward to show their respects at the arrival of Princess Purple Spirit, but he clearly appeared to be one step slower. Furthermore, he did not have a respectful expression on his face. Typical elites would bow their heads when they saw Princess Purple Spirit in a respectful manner. It was necessity as royal subjects. Even Ran Shui did not dare look Luo Horror in the eye. As for Yi Yun, he was just standing there, blatantly staring at Luo Hoyer's face. And what was most infuriating was the odd expression on his face. It was as though the number one princess of the Luo clan looked somewhat odd. Chapter 860, Script Written in Vain Was Yi Yun dumb? Why did he dare be that disrespectful to Princess Purple Spirit? He was slower to pay his respects and he stared at Princess Purple Spirit. Furthermore, he even put on such an odd expression. To be so unaware of the rules, he is indeed a bumpkin from the lower realms. Ran Shui sneered in his heart. The elites present racked their heads to leave a good impression on Princess Purple Spirit, but Yi Yun was such a retard to act so eccentric. He had offended the princess. For Princess Purple Spirit to produce such an impression, she had apparently been affronted by Yi Yun's actions. Other than that, Ran Shui could not think of any other possibility. If one were to say that Princess Purple Spirit had been attracted by this inferior human, that would be a joke. Ran Shui looked at Yi Yun with a faint smile, and he waited for him to make a fool of himself. 
However, a single statement from Princess Purple Spirit completely froze the smile on Ran Shuei's face. It's really you. You actually came to the 10,000 Fei Emperor in heaven? Luo Horror was truly feeling stumped after she saw Yi Yun. She may have maintained a dignified and elegant composure on the surface, but deep in her heart, it was already being trampled by 10,000 ancient Fei beasts with mud stained hoofs. What the heck was going on? She knew very well that more than a decade ago, Ian was still a country bumpkin in a tiny area of a lower realm. Be it his strength or knowledge, there was no way that Ian could advance past the limits of that world in every possible aspect. How did he come to the 10,000 Fey Empery in heaven in such a short period of time alone, and had even obtained first place after being far in the lead at a collective training? Being first place in a collective training wasn't much. But just thinking of where Yun had his origins more than a decade ago was such a shocking realization. His cultivation speed and his speed at nomological insight were way too fast. What sort of freakish talent was this to be able to reach such a state? It sure was odd. This princess was clearly the genius with the most powerful ancient Fey bloodline in the entire Luo clan and she also had exceptionally high perception. But why did she feel like she was being suppressed by this fellow the moment she saw him? Back in the Tai A Divine City, Luo Huayer's desolate heaven technique had been inferior to Yi Yun's. That could be ignored since her mother had prohibited her from using the techniques from the Luo clan. She could only use the desolate heaven techniques from the lower realm that she learned on short notice, so there was no way that her achievements reflected her true talent. She could ignore the desolate heaven technique. But when Luo Horror was cultivating in a training chamber, Yi Yun had seen every part of her body. That was the most teeth wrenching experience Luo Horror ever had. Later on, Luo Horror had set a trap for the fellow, but for some reason, the trap somehow backfired on her. Just recently, Luo Horror was still considering if she could ask her mother if she could make a trip to the lower realm and bring that bumpkin up to this world to broaden his horizons and let him know that the reason why she had lost to him was because she was not at all serious. If they had really come to blows, she would instantly crush him. Luo Horror would have loved to see Yi Yun's shocked expression when she brought him to the Luo clan's royal capital and see its grandeur and flourishing establishment. Especially when Yun would learn that her identity was a princess of the highest identity in the royal capital, wouldn't he pay homage to her and offer to be her lackey? But now, despite having written the script, without any rehearsals beginning, the show's curtains had come to a close. This fellow had managed to climb up here himself. How did he do that? Especially after seeing the fellow's expression, Luo Hor really felt like her heart was being trampled by 10,000 ancient fey beasts with mud-stained hoofs. His odd expression was a result of a stifled laugh that he repressed because he did not want to embarrass her. Clearly, her identity as a princess was already within Yi Yun's expectations. He had known of it early on. Luo Hor thought that Yi Yun would be astonished after learning of the matter and he would prostrate himself before her. In the end, not only did Yi Yun not prostrate himself, but he was also thinking of laughing. Clearly, Yi Yun knew what sort of person Luo Hoer was. At a glance, he knew that Luo Hoer's elegance and dignity were faked to keep up an appearance. Luo Hoer hated such banquets with numerous people the most. However, for her mother, she had to maintain her image and tolerate maintaining a front that she hated to do, but this fellow was actually mocking her. It was infuriating. Having been seen through, Luo Horror didn't even feel like acting any further. She forced herself to hold back on the urge to beat someone and she said to Yun with a smile, Yun, it's really you. It's truly been long time no see. Yun stifled his urge to laugh and clasped his fists. He said with a straight face, Yun greets the princess. It has been so many years. Meeting you today, Princess Purple Spirit is truly of unsurpassed beauty and glamorous. Although Yi Yun's words were highly respectful, how could the smiling intent in his eyes escape Luo Huar? Clearly, this fellow did not show any signs of veneration because of her identity as princess. Their conversation absolutely lacked the joy of a reunion that close friends should have after a long period of time. 
However, this conversation sounded completely different in the ears of others. Every elite in the Luo clan, including Ran Shui and Dong Lingyu, was dumbfounded. The princess knew this fellow, and they appeared to be very familiar. How was this possible? What sort of noble status did Princess Purple Spirit enjoy? How did she get to know a lowly human punk who lacked any form of background? For Princess Purple Spirit to say the words long time no see that bordered on affection, that meant that Yi Yun was a friend of Princess Purple Spirit. A human had become Princess Purple Spirit's friend? That was unthinkable. At this moment, Ran Shui, who was standing beside Princess Purple Spirit, probably had the ugliest expression. Yi Yun and Luo Hora truly knew each other. Furthermore, Luo Huayer apparently did not pursue Yi Yun's lack of etiquette. In Ran Shui's impression, Princess Purple Spirit was always composed. But today, after meeting Yi Yun, there was a rare loss of her cool. Although it was not obvious, Ran Shui had managed to notice it because of his close distance. Princess Purple Spirit's eyes, which spoke volumes, had flashed a look of surprise and coquetry. Who was this punk who could make Princess Purple Spirit experience such emotional swings? Yi Yun, sit at this table then. Luo Horror pointed at a table and said with a cordial expression. Upon seeing the table, the corner of Ran Shui's mouth twitched. Dom Lin Yu also had a wry smile on his face. This table was the closest table to Luo Hoyer's seat. In Luo Lucid Springs, the arrangement of the tables was a fastidious show of political intrigue. The closer it was to the middle, the more noble the seat was. Ran Shui and Dong Lin Yu were already considered close to the middle, but now, Ian's seat was even closer than theirs. How could Ran Shui feel pleasant about this? He was one of the four great young masters of the royal capital. Yet, a human punk had come and sat at a spot more closer to the middle than his. It was even closer to Princess Purple Spirit. What the heck was this? Thank you, Princess, for conferring me a seat. Yi Yun did not think too much of it and without standing on ceremony, he sat at the designated seat. This immediately made all the young elites present envious they finally realized what was going on. Princess Purple Spirit and the punk probably had an unusual relationship. Compared to Yi Yun, they were practically passers-by that did not matter. She did not even glance at them. Just moments ago, they had been mocking Yi Yun for his presumptuous and foolish behavior of daring stand up against the Shushue Ran clan and Ran Shue. But from the looks of it, the people who were truly foolish were them. Could it be that Princess Purple Spirit was Yi Yun's backer? That would be ridiculous. If that fellow truly had a good relationship with Princess Purple Spirit, just that alone made him enjoy a background much better than many. Seeing Yi Yun sit down, Luo Hor maintained a smile. On the surface, she did not look at Yi Yun anymore, but her voice transmission had rung in Yi Yun's ears. Not bad, little Yi Yun for you to have the ability to come here. You even got first place in the collective training. Your wings have indeed hardened. Come on, tell this elder sister of yours how you came to the 10,000 Fei Empery in heaven. Luo Hoyer's words rendered Yi Yun somewhat speechless. Luo Hua wasn't young anymore, but she still insisted on gaining a sense of superiority when it came to words. Please support my Patreon. Let's try for the second goal, 548-600. Rising TMW's releases to 11 a week. It's currently only at 9 slash week. Also, if it hits 150, currently at 119, patrons before February 15, 2017, regardless of amount pledged, I will translate all chapters that are released for two weeks by the author and release them as soon as possible, which means approximately 10 additional chapters. Chapter 861 Princess White Fox. How else? Obviously I flew here. Yi Yun replied nonchalantly. He had experienced a great deal over the years in the Tianyuan world, and the reason why he had matured so fast was because of obtaining heritage from the Twelve Empyrean Heavens, as well as the Purple Crystal. They had vastly broadened Yi Yun's horizons. Without them, 
just having a fast cultivation speed alone was useless without pairing it with any cultivation techniques. Little Yun, how's the Tai A Divine City? What about our master, Grand Master Yue Hua? Luo Hua recalled the desolate beast siege that happened years ago. She had left the Tai A Divine Kingdom back then as well, so she still cared about Grand Master Yue Hua and a few other people from the Tai A Divine City. However, Luo Hoyer's identity was confidential back then, while the enemies of the Luo clan also had forces in the lower realms, so Luo Hoyer was forbidden from using powers that belonged to the Luo clan. She had almost never fought in the Tai A Divine City. The only one time that Luo Hoyer violated the ban was to heal Yi Yun. Back then, Yi Yun had used the Golden Crow Totem that he had yet to fully master, resulting in the draining of all his strength and the injuring of his lifeblood in the midst of battle. Luo Horror had used a tiny portion of her ancient Fei bloodline powers to help Yun's bloodline recover in a few short seconds, allowing him to return to the battle arena. Only Yi Yun knew about this. Yi Yun transmitted his voice, it's a long story. Grandmaster Yue Hua and the Tai A Divine City Elders were eventually all safe and sound. Now, the Tian Yuan world is also peaceful. Yi Yin knew that Luo Hor might appear haughty and naughty, but she actually possessed a kind heart. If things were put on a scale, it would not be an exaggeration to describe the people from the Tai A Divine City as ants when they were compared to Luo Hoyer. That's good. Luo Hor cracked a smile. Back then, I left in a hurry and I returned to the 10,000 Fei Empery in heaven. I was embroiled in the war, or I had to run here and there. After a difficult victory, I was ensnared in this battle of the throne. It's so irritating. Luo Horror pouted her mouth as she said, like she were a melancholic kitten. Although Yun saw Luo Horror saying it without much thought, he knew that there was definitely quite a bit of sadness behind her story. However, with Luo Hoyer's carefree personality, she did not take those things personally. You don't want the throne? Yi Yun asked. Who needs it? Luo Hua grunted. However, she said sadly after thinking of something, it's just that. Mother wants me to vie for it, so I have to. If Crimson Firmament ascends to the throne, Mother and I would be in quite a bad situation, especially Mother. If I am able to become a supreme figure, that would not have been a problem, but I am still many years from becoming one. And during this period, who knows if the Luo clan would break out into war again. The war that swept through the entire Luo clan more than 10 years ago was one with great difficulty, but they had only managed to push the enemy back. Since they did not manage to completely wipe their enemy out, it was still very likely for the enemy to make a comeback. If the elderly Emperor Luo was still alive, that would be fine. But if he passed away, Prince Crimson Firmament might send Empress Xian's family clan out to war as a sacrifice with his position as Supreme Commander-in-Chief. The Luo Clan's War Who is your enemy? Yi Yun had been always hearing about the war that happened decades ago, which made the Luo Clan suffer great losses. But up to now, Yi Yun was still unsure about the origins of the enemy. The enemy is the Fei Phantasm Sect an extremely mighty force that pervades the entire 10,000 Fei Empery in heaven. It is headquartered in the sinkhole, and it's rumored that the Fei Phantasm sect possesses a complete, ice-sealed ancient Fei corpse. Furthermore, it was a truly powerful ancient Fei. A complete ancient Fei corpse? Yi Yun was slightly taken aback when he heard this. What sort of wealth did an entire ancient Fei corpse represent? If one could obtain an entire ancient Fei corpse, the opportunities were unimaginable. From the looks of it, the Fei Phantasm sect was stronger than the Luo clan. Luo Hor seemed to guess Yun's thoughts and said, The Fei Phantasm sect is stronger than our Luo clan. They declared war on several fronts, and our Luo clan's war is just one of the many. Back then, our Luo clan had also made an alliance with several other large clans in the 10,000 Fei Empery in heaven to fight the Fei Phantasm sect together. The Fei Phantasm sect enjoys great influence. It controls numerous large worlds, with countless subsidiaries. They refine Fei demon puppets and sell them to large family clans for their usage. 
Many of the buyers come from other Empyrean heavens. As Luo Huayer spoke, a whistling sound of a soaring eagle shrieked. High in the sky, a gigantic azure pang bird arrived. The azure pang bird circled in the sky and under the escort of pages, a purple-robed man flew straight down from the pang bird. The man's clothes fluttered in the mountain winds, as purple aura circulated around him, it was as though a god had descended. He looked like he was in his twenties, and his eyes were as bright as the stars. His lifeblood was converged, and he seemed to resonate with the heaven and earth. He gave off an redoubtable feeling. Prince Crimson Firmament The elite's presence said aloud when they saw the man that suddenly appeared. Even people like Ran Xue and Dong Ling Yu stood up immediately at this moment to step forward. He was Prince Crimson Firmament? Upon seeing this person, Yi Yun was slightly taken aback. Prince Crimson Firmament truly gave him an unfathomable feeling. Indeed, Prince Crimson Firmament had been cultivating for thousands of years, so even without mentioning his talent, just his strength would far exceed Luo Huayer's. Beside Prince Crimson Firmament was a gorgeous woman. She had smoky eyes and fair, creamy white skin. She had a pair of fox ears on her head, and every action she performed seemed to produce silvery bolts that danced around her in a silvery brilliance. Upon seeing this woman, the elites present were secretly horrified. Someone said, it's the Lightning Domain's Princess White Fox. It was rumored that Princess White Fox and Prince Crimson Firmament have extremely cordial relations, but those were only rumors. Who knew that Princess White Fox is accompanying Prince Crimson Firmament to the banquet today? Don't tell me they are now an item and are about to become Dao companions. The Lightning Domain's Princess White Fox has the ancient Fey Nine-Tailed White Fox's bloodline, as well as a body of lightning spirit. If she is willing to become partners with Prince Crimson Firmament, it would truly be a match of equal status. The chips that Prince Crimson Firmament holds will increase as well. As people discussed it in private, they looked at Prince Crimson Firmament with mixed emotions amidst respect. Prince Crimson Firmament himself was a treasure, with extremely promising chances of inheriting the throne of the Luo clan. In addition to his outstanding talent and powerful bloodline, if he were to marry Princess White Fox, a talented woman with a body of lightning spirit and nine-tailed White Fox bloodline, and duo cultivate with her, his life would reach its peak. Even Ran Xue and Dong Ling Yu would feel jealous seeing this. They were two of the royal capitals for great young masters and they were extremely noble, but compared to Prince Crimson Firmament, they were incomparable. As Prince Crimson Firmament slowly landed, a phoenix shriek echoed throughout the skies as everyone looked up. They saw nine azure lawn birds soaring in the sky. They pulled a glittering chariot that emitted divine light that flashed through the sky. As the divine chariot shuttled through the sky, the void slightly trembled as it excited the hearts of many. On the divine chariot, Empress Luo and Empress Xian, the two mothers of the world, women who had all the riches of the Luo clan in their hands, arrived simultaneously. Instantly, a divine light burst out as thousands of colorful bands shot out. Dozens of Luo lucid palaces made servants rushed forward and bowed to welcome the two sacred empresses. Chapter 862, Unconforming to the Rules The sacred Empress Luo was peerless in beauty, with captivating looks that were unique. Empress Luo wore a nine phoenix hairpin and her long hair was coiled up, like a gloomy cloud in the sky. She wore a jade garment with an ancient fey beast embroidery on it. Her royal elegance truly came from the bone. And beside her was Empress Xian, who had a voluptuous figure with skin no different to a 16-year-old girl. Age had forgotten to leave its marks on her face, accentuating her youthful looks and mature woman's charm on her body perfectly. Paying our respects to your majesty Empress Luo. Paying our respects to your majesty Empress Xin. The maid servants and the young elites present bowed respectfully. The two sacred empresses walked to the seats of honor with Empress Luo on the right and Empress Xin on the left. In the Luo clan, the right was associated with the seat of honor, so on this point, Empress Luo's status was slightly higher than Empress Xian's. Schwer, you came as well. Empress Luo looked at Princess White Fox with an amiable and endearing smile. 
Clearly, she was very satisfied with Princess White Fox from the Lightning Domain. At the beginning of the banquet, she nodded and smiled to Princess White Fox, a treatment probably only reserved for daughter-in-laws. It appears as though Her Majesty Empress Luo is eager to have Prince Crimson Firmament marry Princess White Fox. If that's the case, Prince Crimson Firmament's position will be unshakable. As people discussed it in private, they envied Prince Crimson Firmament for his good fortune in love affairs. Empress Luo and Empress Xian sat on the main seats of honor with Prince Crimson Firmament and Luo Horror sitting on the right and left respectively. Sitting near Prince Crimson Firmament was naturally Princess White Fox, but she was not sitting at the same table with Prince Crimson Firmament. Instead, she was sitting at a table beside the table of honor, and this was a distance away. From the looks of it, Princess White Fox had not fully accepted Prince Crimson Firmament. Hence, she did not want to appear too close to him at such an event. This was nothing much, but on the other side, be it Empress Luo, Empress Xian or Prince Crimson Firmament, they were somewhat taken aback when they saw the person sitting on the seat symmetrically across Princess White Fox. Sitting near Luo Hor was an ordinary youth, who looked very young. His cultivation level had just broken through to the early stages of the Heaven Ascension realm. Such a person could not have a long cultivation time that numbered about 30 or 40 years. And most bizarre of all was that he was a human. Yi Yun? Empress Xian immediately thought about Yi Yun. Only this person matched the various features. But why was Yi Yun sitting beside her daughter? It was impossible that he had sat without understanding the rules. The waiters responsible at the banquet would not have sat idle if that was the case. Could it be that her daughter had invited him to sit there? Although Empress Xin found it surprising, she at least knew about Yi Yun's identity. But for Empress Luo, she did not even know Yi Yun's identity. For a small figure like Yi Yun, although he had won first place at a collective training, it was insignificant in Empress Luo's eyes. However, she had paid him some attention because he was sitting beside Luo Huayer. Empress Luo noticed that Yi Yun's clothes were worthless, as though he did not have any background. Why would Luo Hor let such a person sit beside her? Furthermore, this was not any ordinary occasion. Every word and action of Luo Hor and Crimson Firmament would be recorded by the hall page and reported to Emperor Luo. Dear Firmament, who is this youth? Empress Luo sent a voice transmission to Prince Crimson Firmament. Answering mother, if this child isn't wrong, that person should be Yi Yun. He had obtained an outstanding performance at the MT Azure Billow Collective Training. He obtained the recognition of three ancient fate columns, with two of them at the Hibernation Awakening ranking. At Black Wind Valley, he captured the intermediary spirit Blood Snake and he is considered to be a talented human. He is in Sister Purple Spirit's camp, and he was recommended by Prince Pingnan. Prince Crimson Firmament informed her about Yi Yun's background and results in a few words, pleasing Empress Luo. Her son was meticulous, which made him a person capable of big matters. He knew every piece of information about a person, even if he was a minor character. Very good. You did well, but according to what you said, that Yi Yun isn't considered to be some blessed son of the heavens. He is just a young elite, so he's not even qualified to sit at where the two young fellows from the Ran and Donglin family are, much less beside Purple Spirit. That Purple Spirit is just too willful. Empress Luo shook her head secretly as she glanced at Donglin Yu and Ran Shui. They were sitting on seats at a lower level to Yi Yun, so when they saw Empress Luo glance at them, they immediately revealed embarrassed expressions. They probably knew what Empress Luo was looking at. They found it extremely embarrassing to sit beneath Yi Yun. However, this was sanctioned by Princess Purple Spirit, so what else could they say? Empress Luo frowned slightly. For a princess of the Luo clan to be so enamored towards such a lowly human youth to sit beside her, it was not something that did not conform to the rules, but it would incur ridicule. Especially with Princess White Fox here, how would she think about Yi Yun sitting at a spot equivalent to hers? Mother, Sister Purple Spirit has always had a personality of lawlessness. 
let her be. Even father indulges her, so even if this small matter were to reach father, he would not pay too much attention to it. Prince Crimson Firmament said with a tone filled with discontent with Emperor Luo. Emperor Luo's favoritism was no secret. If not for his favoritism towards Princess Purple Spirit, wouldn't the throne be firmly in Crimson Firmament's grasps? It doesn't matter if she's willful, it's not like we are disgracing ourselves. Empress Luo transmitted her voice to Prince Crimson Firmament and glanced at Empress Xian, while a faint smile suffused across her lips. Her son, Prince Crimson Firmament had brought Princess White Fox, and they were sitting along the main seats with her. Look at your daughter. What sort of person is she sitting with? What a disgrace. All right, all of our esteemed young elites, I held this banquet and invited all of you here as a welcome. I wish that everyone will be able to make a difference at the upcoming Luo Divine Hall trials and bring a more brilliant future to our Luo clan. As the host of the banquet, Empress Luo had to give a speech. As for Yi Yun, she quickly ignored him. Everyone lifted their cups for a toast. Yi Yun did so too, and he drank the fragrant spiritual wine. It was unknown how the wine was brewed, because not only was the taste excellent, it also made his entire body warm up, and he could even feel his lifeblood strengthen. It was good wine that was probably extremely pricey. And the food placed in front of him was all sorts of treasured materials. Eating them was beneficial for his cultivation level and lifeblood. Ian estimated that just this small table of dishes would cost a few hundred, if not a few thousand world stones. Thinking back of the painful expression that Laia had when he had to produce more than a hundred world stones, Ian felt that he did not waste time coming to this banquet. Although he had the purple crystal, he was not wealthy. Since he was at this banquet, he had came with the mentality that he would not suffer any losses. He would not miss out on delicious foods and drink. Hence, these spiritual wine and food quickly entered Yi Yun's stomach. Seeing Yi Yun eat carefreely, Ran Shuai and Dong Ling Yu were impressed. How bold are you? Didn't you notice that Empress Luo had paid you attention a while ago? Don't you feel that sitting at the third highest level in the middle is like sitting on a cushion of needles? Translator's Notes, please support my Patreon. Let's try for the second goal, 590-600 which is so close. It will raise TMW's releases to 11 a week from 9 slash week. Also, if it hits 150, currently at 135, patrons before February 15, 2017, regardless of amount pledged, I will translate all chapters that are released for two weeks by the author and release them as soon as possible, which means approximately 10 additional chapters. Chapter 863, Show of Strength. Ran Shui and Dong Lingyu both felt that if they sat in such a striking location, especially if they were beside Luo Huai, they would only sit on a third of their seats, and they would sit with an extremely straight back. They would try their best not to get any food, and if they ate, it would just be a tiny portion. They would not reveal their teeth while eating or make a sound while chewing. If they drank any wine, they would hold the cup with two hands and drink respectfully. Furthermore, if the empresses did not hold a wine cup, they would not touch theirs. But looking at Yi Yun, he was practically invincible. He was gulping food down by the mouthfuls. Whatever dish looked the most exquisite or had the richest yuan chi would be eaten. As for wine, it was as though he was afraid of choking on eating too much. He drank as he ate, using the wine to wash the food down. This was truly the perfect display of a, a bumpkin's characteristics. Thankfully, Empress Luo's self-restraint was good. Despite there being a human punk who obviously did not know the rules while sitting there, causing a scene, she could turn a blind eye towards it. Little Yun, are you the reincarnation of a starving ghost? Why are you eating so fast? Luo Horror was amused by Yi Yun's actions and she wanted to laugh but on the surface, she maintained her elegant and luxurious appearance. Luo Horror detested such occasions greatly. It was too boring, and she had to constantly pay attention to etiquette. It was much better to chat with Yi Yun to amuse herself. 
Since Empress Luo is treating us, and she's your arch enemy and she has put out so much good spiritual food, I might as well eat them. It's not like I'll lose out. Yi Yun sent a voice transmission as though it was for granted. His tone clearly did not show any fear or respect for Empress Luo. He he, if you have the ability to eat her broke, that would be great. I'm telling you, don't look at that old witch appearing as though she's some mother of the world, she's actually bad to the bone. In the royal palace, Luo Hor were restrained in various ways, so she did not dare to talk nonsense. Now, she had finally encountered a friend, so Luo Hor had no scruples in the way she spoke. Previously, Luo Hor had encountered many people who were extremely respectful to Empress Luo, Empress Xian and herself. They were so subservient that they wished that their eyes would grow on the ground and their backs were as bent as a shrimp. Luo Hor found a Yun, a person who did not care about rules just like her, very fun as though she had found a confidant. As Yi Yun and Luo Hor began chatting through Yuan Qi voice transmissions, the banquet was not going very harmoniously on the other side. Empress Xian knew Empress Luo's goal of hosting this banquet very well. She wanted to display her strength and make the young elites participating in the Luo Divine Hall trials know who was the true mother of the Luo clan. As such, more and more young elites would choose to join Empress Luo's clan and turn their backs on Empress Xian. I heard that younger sister brought quite a number of people from your family to participate in our Luo clan's Luo Divine Hall trials. Especially that Xian Junyue, I heard that he is the best in the present Xian family generation. Why don't I see dear nephew Junyue? I remembered sending him an invitation as well. Empress Luo suddenly said to Empress Xian. Although her voice was not loud, everyone present could hear her clearly. Xian Junyue was an influential figure amongst the younger generation of the Xian family. Compared to Ran Xue and Dong Lingyu, his reputation exceeded theirs. He was not ranked as one of the four great young masters of the royal capital because the Xian family was not located in the royal capital. Empress Xian smiled and said, Junyue is still in reclusive training and he will not take a step out of the door for the next few days. He's making preparations for the Luo Divine Hall trials. Empress Xian found an excuse to deflect the question. Xian Junyue obviously wasn't in reclusive training. Back then, he had gone to Luo Hoyer's palace and passed news to Luo Hoyer. However, Empress Xian would not let Xian Junyue participate in the banquet hosted by Empress Luo. This was because Empress Xian knew very well that Empress Luo wanted to show a display of strength at the banquet, and she would very likely begin with Xian Junyue as one of her victims. Xian Junyue was the best genius in the Xian family, and he was considered one of their highlighting banners. If Empress Luo were to target Xian Junyue at the banquet, Empress Xian's camp would suffer a massive loss of reputation if Xian Junyue were to lose. Before the Luo Divine Hall trials, Empress Xian could not afford to lose anything. By appearing weaker than they did, and avoiding battle, it was much better than losing directly. Reclusive training? I think that brother Junyue did not come because he is afraid? At this moment, a loud voice resounded. Everyone turned their heads in alarm and they looked at the person who said it. The person was sitting one level lower than Princess White Fox. That seat was almost equivalent to Ran Xue in Dong Lingyu, and it was considered a very noble seat. Two people sat at the table, a man and a woman. The woman had a petite figure that looked like a child's, while the man was youthful, muscular and stout. He wore red battle armor, and his voice sounded like the beat of a drum with bold undertones. The person who had openly mocked Xian Junyue was this burly youth. Empress Xian frowned. With the status she enjoyed, how could she let a junior show her disrespect at this banquet? However, before Empress Xian spoke a word, Empress Luo had already opened her mouth and rebuked the person in question, Luo Kue, I'm speaking with Empress Xian, there's no reason for you to interject. Empress Luo's voice sounded harsh and she was faster than Empress Xin. Her statement sounded like she was rebuking Luo Kue, but in fact, it was to shut Empress Xin up. Being rebuked wasn't the loss of a piece of meat after all. It might even be possible that Luo Kue had said that statement as a mouthpiece of Empress Luo. As the host, 
she could not say certain things. There was no fault in letting a rash and reckless junior say such words, but it still managed to achieve the effect of smacking Empress Xin in the face. The young elites present immediately felt that the banquet was beginning to be filled with the smell of gunpowder. Indeed, Empress Luo and Empress Xin were archenemies. How was it possible for them to exist peacefully at a banquet? However, Empress Xian had been calculative and deliberately prevented Xian Junyue from attending to evade any adverse consequences. Although this was a smart move, Empress Xian had already practically lost to Empress Luo by a notch. Yi Yun wiped his mouth and glanced at Luo Kue. His cultivation level was at the perfected Heaven Ascension realm. He had a deep Yuan Qi foundation and a tremendous bloodline. His strength was unfathomable. That was the evaluation Yi Yun gave him. The Xin Junyuet that was mentioned can't beat that big guy? Yi Yun asked Luo Hor with a voice transmission. Luo Hor grunted and said, It's not certain that he can't beat him, but the number of people behind me and mother are few in number. The best one is Xin Junyue. However, Empress Luo has many more people on her side. The Luo Kue you see is just one of them. If we were really to go at odds, we will definitely lose out. I see. Ian understood that as the saying goes, two fists had difficulty overcoming four hands. Having more people was always advantageous. Empress Xian and Luo Hoyer's foundations were just too weak after all. Are you telling me that Empress Luo will use this banquet to demonstrate a show of strength to us disciples who are joining the Luo Divine Hall trials so that we will join her camp? That's right. That which sure did her calculations. How would the competition work? We can't just fight here in the banquet, right? Yi Yun was somewhat curious. There was not much space in the middle of the banquet hall, so if there was a fight, it would make the banquet hall a mess. Not necessarily. It might be a display of tricks in other aspects, showing the best of your skills, or whatever things that can add a bit of interest to the banquet. If it really came to blows, it would just be unbecoming. Why, don't tell me you want to compete with that big guy? Luo Huar asked with a grin. But Yi Yun shook his head, I might not be able to beat that big guy. The opponent was at the perfected Heaven Ascension realm while Yi Yun had just entered the beginning stages of the Heaven Ascension realm. The Luo clan royal capital was filled with geniuses. Although Yi Yun was confident of himself, he was not certain that he could leapfrog such a vast difference in cultivation level and defeat a young elite from the cream of the crop of the Luo clan. He did not know what tricks Luo Kue had at all. The other side had come prepared, and if he did things on a whim, he would likely suffer if things came to blows. He he he, you are rather calm. Little Yun, I know you took first place at the Mte Azure Billow Trials. To have such an achievement, you must have encountered some interesting events in the lower realm, right? But compared to the geniuses in the royal capital, the Fire Cloud State and Phoenix Fermiana State don't compare to much. Many of them are truly formidable. You are so many sub-realms weaker than him, and you want to beat him? Difficult. And taking 10,000 steps back, even if you were to beat him, he has partners. Are you going to beat a dozen of them by yourself? Look at that petite girl. Her name is Luo Shaodai, and she is also one who is not to be trifled with. Chapter 864 You Are a Cheat. Luo Shaodai, Luo Kuei. Yi Yun looked at the man and woman, whose physiques were highly disparate. According to what Luo Hoyer said, Empress Luo had many geniuses under her. Luo Shaodai and Luo Kui were only two of many. In a sense, Empress Luo's banquet had achieved the effect of displaying a show of force. Empress Xian was inferior to her in every single way. However, Empress Luo was not satisfied with this. Empress Xian had deliberately avoided any conflict at the banquet by not bringing the Xian family geniuses. This made Empress Luo feel like she was punching into cotton, it did not feel effective. Without Xin Junyue here, it sure is boring. Luo Kue said in an unruly manner, his voice echoing throughout the venue. 
The impression that Luo Kue gave others was that he was an uninhibited bore. And he was apparently using this to deliberately say things that were out of line. He had challenged Empress Xian's bottom line again and again. As Empress Luo ate some grapes, a smile hung on her face. She did not have any intentions of reprimanding Luo Kue. Luo Kue felt as though he had been encouraged. Standing up from his seat, he cupped his hands and said to everyone, Everyone, if it's just eating and drinking, it might be somewhat boring. Let me add some excitement for everyone. After Luo Kue said this, he swept his gaze across the young elites on Empress Xian's side. Although there were quite a number of young elites clearly on Empress Xian's side, for example, Yi Yun, Gu Cheng, Ling Wu, etc., Luo Kue could not call them out to thrash them. This was because the result of using them as targets was highly ineffective. Take Yi Yun for example, he was only at the beginning stages of the Heaven Ascension realm. Even if Luo Kue thrashed him, there would not be any sense of accomplishment. Instead, he might be rebuked as being a bully. However, if he did not thrash these people, there was truly no one on Empress Xian's side either. Luo Kue stroked his chin and as his gaze swept across the banquet hall, it ended up on Luo Huire. Immediately following that, a smile suffused across his lips. Your Highness. It was said that Your Highness attainments in fire elemental laws are matchless and Your Highness is well versed in the desolate heaven technique. No peer your own age can match you. This lowly one has recently been researching fire elemental laws and the desolate heaven technique and he is very interested in these aspects. However, this lowly one isn't very well versed at its practical effects. Will it be possible for your highness to give some advice? When Luo Kue said this, everyone in the audience was stunned. Luo Kue may be asking for advice, but if Luo Hor were to accede to his request, he might do something nasty during the advice giving. If that was the case, it would no longer be a simple problem of advice giving. What sort of identity did Luo Hoyer enjoy? It was unexpected that Luo Kuei would target Luo Hoyer after failing to find a target to thrash. This was practically him being lawless. Indeed, Empress Xian's expression had already sunk. She came knowing that Empress Luo would flaunt her power, and she had tolerated this repeatedly. However, it was unexpected that Empress Luo had set her sights on Luo Huayer. For a princess of the country to compete with a boar like Luo Kue, it would be a sully to Luo Huayer's reputation regardless of the outcome. Actually, if it was just the desolate heaven technique, Empress Xian believed that Luo Huayer would win. However, it was most likely that Luo Kue was just a probe. After beating Luo Kue, it was certain that a better person would replace him. If Luo Horror accepted Luo Kue's challenge but did not accept the match after his, it would not prevent others from thinking that Luo Hor feared the challenge because she was feeling unconfident of herself. At this moment, Crimson Firmament said with a smile, it is good for young people to desire to do better. Princess Purple Spirit is a person of a kindly disposition and it is well known for her love of talents. If you sincerely ask for her advice, she would definitely not hesitate to advise you. Crimson Firmament's words were equivalent to acknowledging Luo Kue's sudden thought. People had the belief that Empress Luo was only planned on suppressing the young elites on Empress Xian's side, but they never expected that they were planning on sullying Princess Purple Spirit's good name. At this moment, Luo Horror spoke with a sneer as she looked at Luo Kue. Luo Kue, have you been conferred nobility? Facing Luo Hoyer's question, Luo Kue failed to answer immediately. Amongst the younger generation of the Fei race, his background was definitely not bad. He was from the Cloud Sun Luo clan, so although it was inferior to Luo Hoyer, it was still one of the top 20 factions in the Luo clan. Compared to Ran Shui and Dong Lingyu, he was not one bit inferior. However, Luo Hoyer had deliberately avoided Luo Kuei's background and she instead pointed out his lack of nobility. Descendants of a noble family could easily enjoy a life of luxury but if they wanted to be conferred nobility, they needed to accomplish actual meritorious achievements for the country. Luo Kue was still young, so how could he have any merits whatsoever? He was not conferred nobility, 
but for Luo Huayer, as an heir to the throne, she had already been conferred the title of royalty. The difference in their background may be small, but the gap in their nobility ranks was huge. When Luo Horror hit Luo Kue on a soft spot, his expression turned ugly. He said with a muffled and unhappy voice, this lowly one's status is humble. According to the rules, there is truly no right to receive advice from your highness. However, rules are not absolute at times. For example, at this banquet, aren't the seats also not determined according to the rules? When Luo Kue said this, everyone's eyes could not help but drift towards Yi Yun. Luo Horror had rebuked Luo Kue for not abiding the rules, but Luo Kue had struck back while keeping his countenance. Indeed, it was out of line for Luo Horror to allow Yi Yun to sit beside her. This brother, you truly have a good appetite. Luo Kue said with a faint smile as he looked at the spiritual food that had been reduced to a large bone pile in front of Yi Yun. Yi Yun did not expect that the arrows of conflict to suddenly shift back to him. I wonder which family clan does this brother come from and if he has a noble title. He had knowingly asked the question. Many people under Empress Luo's camp looked at Yi Yun and they waited for him to make a fool of himself. However, they failed to see any look of distress on Yi Yun's face. Yi Yun pulled out a snow silk satin napkin from the table and he began slowly wiping his mouth. This lowly one comes from a countryside in the lower realm. As for my background, my ancestors are all farmers. Yi Yun's response made everyone's eyes nearly pop out. Even Empress Xin's people, such as Ling Wu and Gu Qing, were impressed at Yi Yun's nerves. If anyone was squeezed in such a way, one would typically hope to hide away. Yet, he had been able to answer in all seriousness. Ha ha ha! Luo Kue laughed out loud. Brother, you sure are simple. Brother, you must have gotten to know Princess Purple Spirit in the lower realm. Her Highness is truly considerate and kind to men of talent, considering how she has given such a privilege to a human from the lower realm. When Luo Kue said this, everyone was enlightened. So this fellow had gotten to know Princess Purple Spirit back in the lower realm. Princess Purple Spirit was surely immature. How could she favor a fellow that she got to know in the lower realm? Empress Luo glanced at Empress Xian as a teasing smile suffused across her lips. Although she did not believe that the extremely lofty-minded Luo Hor would fall in love with Yun, if she were to embellish the story and report it to Emperor Luo, Empress Luo would definitely feel furious even if he was fond of Luo Huayer. This would be shameful for the royal family. At this moment, Yi Yun had just wiped his mouth and used a snow silk satin napkin to wipe clean his hands. Then he threw the napkin down and said, I learned a bit of the desolate heaven technique in the lower realm. I had received five or six months worth of education in the desolate heaven technique with Princess Purple Spirit, so I can be considered to have a tiny bit of success in it. Didn't you wish for Princess Purple Spirit to give you advice on the desolate heaven technique? You already said that you just began researching on the desolate heaven technique, and I guess that your standard can't be that high. You might not even be up to my level. If you were to directly get Princess Purple Spirit to give you advice, I'm afraid that you wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Why not I give you some advice? When Yi Yun said this, everyone present was dumbfounded. Even Empress Luo was somewhat stunned, much less Luo Kuei. Yi Yun's words were filled with information. They also knew that Yi Yun had come in first place at the Mte Azure Billow Collective Training. With Yi Yun's background, it was already astounding to have such an achievement. But Yi Yun also knew the Desolate Heaven technique. Five or six months worth of education in the Desolate Heaven technique? Considered to have a tiny bit of success? The desolate heaven technique was intricate and profound. Without a few decades of hard work, it was impossible to have any success. Yi Yun was obviously bragging. But if it was said that Yi Yun had been exposed to the desolate heaven technique for decades, it was also impossible. He was a warrior from the lower realm, with a bone age of less than 40. Martial arts would have taken a great deal of his time, so how could he spare the time to study the desolate heaven technique? Little Yun, what are you saying? 
At this moment, Luo Huayer's Yuan Qi voice transmission reverberated in Yun's ear. Little Yun, I know that you have some talent in the Desolate Heaven technique, but you do not know that the 10,000 Fei Empyrean Heavens Desolate Heaven technique is the best in all of the 12 Empyrean Heavens. It's completely different to the Desolate Heaven technique from the lower realm. Be a technique or hand seals, all the methods are different. After coming to the 10,000 Fei Empyrean Heaven, have you learned the Desolate Heaven technique from the 10,000 Fei Empyrean Heaven? Yi Yun shook his head. He obviously understood the rationale behind Luo Hoyer's words. Although Yi Yun had the purple crystal, the time he spent learning the Desolate Heaven technique was too short. Even in the lower realm, the time he spent learning the Desolate Heaven technique was counted in months, much less while he was in the 10,000 Fei Empyrean Heaven. Ha ha ha! Luo Kuei suddenly burst out into laughter. What did you say? Did you want to advise me? That's interesting. I had just nonchalantly mentioned that I'm a beginner at the Desolate Heaven technique, and a person like you who has only studied the Desolate Heaven technique for five or six months jumped out to advise me? A godly person like you has actually gained the favor of Her Highness? Are you not a cheat? You have used Her Highness' consideration of men of talent to fool her. Luo Kuei derided relentlessly. He did not dare to insult Princess Purple Spirit, but he had no scruple when it came to Yi Yun. Regardless if Yi Yun had deceived Princess Purple Spirit or not, mocking Yi Yun would be equivalent to sullying Princess Purple Spirit's reputation. At this moment, Yi Yun had already stood up. Luo Kuei gave Yi Yun a contemptuous look. He was ambitious and he belittled the geniuses present. He could only make a name for himself by trampling on the high and mighty princess. By aiding Prince Crimson Firmament in ascending to the throne, he would eventually be conferred nobility. But at this point, he could not even trample on a princess, but a small fry had come courting death. Luo Kue had been cultivating for 80 years and he had studied the desolate heaven technique for more than a decade. He had definitely come prepared. Even if he met Luo Huayer, he was confident that he could match her. There were many people present who knew of Luo Kuei's background. As they looked at Yi Yun, they shook their heads. This was all a farce. Seeing how this matter could no longer be prevented, Luo Huayer's lips quivered. She eventually chose to remain silent. She understood Yi Yun. She knew that Yi Yun would often do unexpected things. Previously in the Taiya Divine City, Luo Horror had believed that she would definitely triumph over him, but she always ended up suffering. But this time, Luo Horror had no idea how Yi Yun was going to beat Luo Kue. Chapter 865, Eclipse Cauldron vs. Desolate Heaven Technique Disc Array At this moment, Luo Kue had already taken out his treasured cauldron. It was three feet high and as it spun midair, Luo Kue's crossed his arms on his chest. He gave Yun a haughty look and said, Come on, I'm waiting for whatever you can teach. Luo Kuei's treasured cauldron was made of an unknown metal. There were all sorts of patterns carved on it, making it look primitively simple. Yun glanced at Luo Kuei's cauldron and he felt that it had to be worth a fortune. The 10,000 Fei Empyrean Heaven's Desolate Heaven technique was not only different to the technique from the lower realms, even the tools used were completely different. In the Tianyuan world, most desolate heaven techniques use disc arrays, not cauldrons. Without a doubt, Luo Kuei's cauldron was more advanced than the Tianyuan world's disc arrays. Why are you looking at my eclipse cauldron? Are you scared silly from the ancient aura of the eclipse cauldron? Luo Kuei laughed. The eclipse cauldron was an ancient desolate heaven cauldron found in a ruin. It might not be famous in the Luo clan but if it was placed in an auction, it was definitely an ancient treasure worth vying for. Despite many of the young elites present not knowing the desolate heaven technique, they could tell from its aura that the eclipse cauldron was no ordinary item. Yi Yun ignored Luo Kuei. All he did was slowly take out a desolate heaven technique disc array. It was a one-foot square disc array that came from the Tian Yuan world. It looked dusty and simple, and it was completely nondescript. 
and in fact, the disc array was consistent in and out. Its quality was indeed nothing to speak of. Yi Yun was not a professional desolate heaven master after all. Although he brought a disc array used by desolate heaven master with him, the disc array would not have been considered something impressive in the lower realm. In the twelve Empyrean heavens, it would only appear even worse. Seeing Yi Yun take out a desolate heaven technique disc array, Luo Kuei was dumbfounded. This punk actually took such a joke of an item to compete with him? Just the runic patterns carved on the disc array were not worth mentioning. It was not even enough to describe it as a heaven and earth difference. It was like two warriors sparring. One was using a divine weapon, while the other was using a kitchen knife. What's the point of fighting? Empress Xian also began to frown slightly at this moment. She had believed that in such an important occasion, Yi Yun definitely had something to rely on and he would not have pushed his face forward to be slapped. Hence, Empress Xian still had the illusion of hope, wishing that Yi Yun was truly a desolate heaven technique genius, allowing him to compete with Luo Kui with his lower realm background and his bone age of less than 40. But now, Yi Yun had taken out such a disc array that could enter the annals of wonders. He would only be able to demonstrate 30% of his full prowess. She could not help but ask, Yi Yun, don't you have a desolate heaven cauldron? I can bestow one to you. Yi Yun was from a lower realm, so it was normal for him to lack a desolate heaven cauldron. However, Empress Xian never expected that Yi Yun would shake his head and say, thank you your majesty for bestowing a reward to me. Unfortunately, this lowly one has never used a desolate heaven cauldron, nor does this lowly one understand the mysteries within them. This lowly one will probably take a period of time to learn it, so it's more handy to use a disc array. What Yi Yun said was the truth. Regardless of how good his perception was, he did not dare to claim that he could immediately use a desolate heaven cauldron without any practice. With Yi Yun saying this, all the young elites present were dumbfounded. Could Yi Yun not have been exposed to the 10,000 Fei Empyrean Heaven's desolate heaven technique? He was planning on using the lower realm's desolate heaven technique to thrash Luo Kuei? Luo Kuei stared at Yi Yun. Damn it, is this kid here to amuse him? He felt that Yi Yun must have studied the desolate heaven technique in the lower realm and believed that he had matchless talent. Yi Yun must not be aware of how terrifying the 10,000 Fei Empery in Heaven's desolate heaven technique was. Competing with such a retard was a lowering of his posturing. It was rather meaningless to win. He planned on trampling a princess, but he only managed to step on dog shit. Luo Kuei did not even have the mood for this competition. Let's quickly begin. What bad luck? Luo Kuei said impatiently. With a wave of his hand, a fey beast bone was thrown into Yi Yun's hand. Come, advise me. A third grade fey bone, I want to see what you can come up with. Yi Yun flipped the fey bone in his hand and said nonchalantly, Just one fey bone? Is there no spare? This fey bone's quality obviously surpassed the ones from the lower realm. However, it was not too much an exaggeration. With Yi Yun's desolate heaven technique standard and the purple crystal's help, refining such a fey bone was not difficult. No! Luo Kuei sneered and said, you don't even have the confidence to refine a third-grade fey bone in one shot. If your standard is this good, how can you be worthy to advise me? Yi Yun smiled and no longer spoke. He threw the fey bone into the desolate heaven technique disc array and he began to activate its runic patterns. Immediately, the runic patterns lit up. Yi Yun began to routinely form hand seals. The seals he formed were all ones that Su Jie taught him back in the lower realm. The Tian Yuan world's desolate beast and the 10,000 Fei Empery in Heaven's Fei beasts were similar. Yi Yun speculated that it might have been possible that the 10,000 Fei Empery in Heaven's Fei beasts had somehow gone to the lower realm and began breeding with the wild beasts in the lower realms, eventually forming desolate beasts. Hence, the techniques that Su Jie taught him could similarly be used while refining a Fei bone. However, in the eyes of a professional, these techniques were downright trash. It was just too simple. 
It was like a group of scholars attending an imperial examination turning back to see a child who had just began reading, a child who had been homeschooled to memorize the three-character classic. With this standard, he even had the nerve to say that he knew the desolate heaven technique? Luokue was infuriated just looking at Yi Yun's clumsy performance. This guy was truly an extremely ignorant hick. He had believed that Yi Yun had something backing him for him to dare jump out, and he was still feeling afraid of failing miserably at an easy task. But now, Yi Yun was beginning to refine the Fei Bone. The hand seals he used were lousy, and the seals he formed didn't make sense. He found his original thoughts laughable considering what Yi Yun was using to back himself. With Luo Kuei's own experience, he could instantly judge that the relics refined by Yi Yun would be in the poor grade at best. This was determined from the hand seals that Yi Yun formed. It was impossible for it to be higher. And for the same relic, if Luo Kuei were to refine it, it would at least reach the refined grade, or even approach the outstanding grade. In the 10,000 Fei Empire in Heaven, relics of the same grade would be ranked based on the outcome of the refinement, and they went from poor, ordinary, refined, outstanding, excellent, to spiritual emergence. The outstanding grade was the limit for a low-grade relic. As for excellent and spiritual emergence, that was an evaluation reserved only for high-grade relics. Luo Kuei wanted to be able to produce an outstanding third-grade relic at the banquet and astound everyone. But thinking about it, it was truly too difficult. As Luo Kuei was thinking, Yi Yun suddenly spoke. Aren't you beginning? Yi Yun could speak to him while he was refining a relic? Luo Kuei was taken aback momentarily. However, he brushed it off immediately. The lower realm's techniques might be too simple, so it made it possible for him to speak while refining. He could even produce three cauldrons of relics and refine them at one go with such a lowly technique. It looks like you think you aren't dying fast enough. If that's the case, let me show you what the 10,000 Fei Empire in Heavens. Desolate Heaven Technique is. Chapter 866, A Free Win? Luo Kuei began. Although his opponent was trash, Luo Kuei planned on doing his best. There was no meaning in thrashing Yi Yun. Now, he was in the pursuit of refining a relic that was nearing the outstanding grade, so he could astound everyone present. Luo Kuei threw the Fei Bone into the Eclipse Cauldron and he extracted all the energy in one fell swoop. Boom! Luo Kuei's body began to burn with blue flames, and behind him, a gigantic, thousand feet blue centipede shot towards the sky. This centipede was more than a hundred feet tall as it charged straight for the ceiling. The thousand feet demon centipede was Luo Kuei's bloodline. After it appeared, it shot towards Luo Kuei's eclipse cauldron. This is. Everyone was alarmed. Luo Kuei was planning to refine his ancient Fei bloodline with the Fei Bone? Although everyone knew that it was impossible for Luo Kuei to damage his ancient Fei bloodline to refine a single relic, it was still a stunning sight for them when they saw him seal the thousand feet demon centipede in the eclipse cauldron. That's not the case. At this moment, a desolate heaven master spoke out. The thousand feet demon centipede is one of the rare insect based ancient Fei. Its body is highly toxic. Ancient mighty figures would have their bodies disintegrate and die if they were bitten once by it. The thousand feet demon centipede usually likes to eat all sorts of treasured herbs and poisons. Treasured herbs and fey bones, which have many kinds of medicinal essences and energies of differing types, or even opposite types, can be refined in its body. It will allow the medicinal essences to merge and be made usable by the demon centipede. Hence, in ancient times, a thousand feet demon centipede was invaluable. Just the amount of medicinal essence accumulated in its body would allow a supreme grade pill to be refined if it is used. With the desolate heaven master's explanation, everyone came to an understanding. The thousand feet demon centipede could extract the energy from all sorts of herbs and fey bones that it devoured. So the reason why Luo Kuei had sent his demon centipede bloodline into the Eclipse Cauldron was to aid him in refining a supreme grade relic. By using the thousand feet demon centipede, it would be half the work with double the results. 
No wonder such a burly man like Luokui would choose to be a desolate heaven master and waste his precious time cultivating. It's all because he has a thousand feet demon centipede. Indeed, if the thousand feet demon centipede can help devour the fey bone and extract its energy, then it would not be a waste for him to be a desolate heaven master. As the people were engaged in a flurry of discussion, they felt a bit jealous of him. With the thousand feet demon centipede helping him, Luokuwe's desolate heaven technique would definitely attain great success one day. Furthermore, desolate heaven masters enjoyed a high status in the Luo clan. Many supreme figures from the 10,000 Fei Emperor in heaven would frequently come to the Luo clan to buy a relic for a high price. For example, the third Empyrean uncle of the Luo clan, who had retired, was a supreme-level desolate heaven master. He was a person that even if Emperor Luo met him, he would respectfully bow with a junior's greeting. If it wasn't for the third Empyrean uncle retiring, to put it bluntly, if he put his foot down, he could decide who the next emperor of the Luo clan would be. There was no need for any competition for the throne. At this moment, Luo Kue threw another few pieces of bone fragments and herbs into the eclipse cauldron. Dang! After the supplemental herbs were added into the eclipse cauldron, its lid immediately sealed it tight. Some of the keen eyed young elites present could tell at a glance that the bone fragments and herbs that Luo Kue had thrown into the eclipse cauldron were extraordinary items. Some of them were worth even more than the third grade Fei bone that he had taken out. The Fei Bone supplements were higher in value than the main Fei Bone. From the looks of it, Luo Kuei was determined to refine a supreme grade relic. But in fact, using higher valued Fei Bones as supplements to forcefully upgrade a low level relic's grade was somewhat contrived. A truly powerful desolate heaven master would refine a low level Fei Bone into a high grade relic. Only then was there value in it. However, that was too difficult. Luo Kuei had only been practicing the desolate heaven technique for about a decade after all. It was already quite amazing for him to attain what he did. Luo Kuei using so many supplemental Fei bones makes the competition somewhat unfair. E Yin only used a single Fei bone and nothing else. So what? This isn't even a competition. It's just an individual performance by Luo Kuei. I also know a little bit of the desolate heaven technique. The disc array that Yi Yun is using is fully exposed. Regardless of the seals he forms, I can see them clearly. Yi Yun's seals would not be able to refine any relics of a good grade, so it's impossible for him to win. Furthermore, his low-level seals aren't even considered perfect. As such, being able to refine that Fei Bone itself should be his limit. He would not be able to handle the adding of any more supplemental fey bones, so what's so unfair about it? A desolate heaven apprentice spoke. He did not speak without thinking. Yi Yun may have talent in the desolate heaven technique, but his age was less than half of Luo Kuei's. The profession of a desolate heaven master required the accumulation of time. Furthermore, Yi Yun had yet to fully come into contact with the 10,000 fey emperor in heaven's desolate heaven technique, so the outcome was destined. At this moment, even Luo Hor was feeling anxious. She was certain that Yi Yun would not lose out. Since he dared to step forward, there was something that was backing him. But now, with Yi Yun's relic being almost 70% refined, there was still not a single miracle. Luo Hor was probably the most qualified person present to comment on the competition. She was not only proficient in the 10,000 Fei Empire in Heaven's Desolate Heaven technique, she was also proficient in the Lower Realm's Desolate Heaven technique. She obviously knew that with the techniques being used by Yi Yun, the quality of the relics that he refined would only be a poor grade. By using the most primitive methods to build a stone hut with a heap of construction materials, there was no way that a top architect could change it into a magnificent palace when the stone hut was nearing completion. As for Luo Kue, he was using a supreme grade desolate heaven cauldron, and with so many supplemental materials, as well as the thousand feet demon centipede bloodline, Luo Hoyer estimated that the quality of the relic Luo Kue would refine would be between refined and outstanding. The difference was like night and day. Other than that, Luo Kue's refining speed was faster than Yi Yun's. 
Yi Yun had only refined 70%, while Luo Kue had already refined 90%. In less than three minutes, Luo Kue's relic would be completed. However, Luo Hor could tell that when the relic was nearing completion, Luo Kue was beginning to have problems holding it together. After all, he had used so many supplemental fey bones, so it was demanding on his mental strength. Imperfections began to appear in Luo Kue's seals, and these meant that the quality of his relic was going to be at the refined grade. Seconds changed to minutes. Yi Yin formed one seal after another and he proceeded in a prescribed routine, as though he was not worried at all. At the same time, Yi Yun had already opened his energy vision. Others could not see the situation inside the Eclipse Cauldron, but he could see it clearly. In the Eclipse Cauldron, the Thousand Feet Demon Centipede was at its limits. It was not a true Thousand Feet Demon Centipede, after all, it was only a bloodline that Luo Kue had conjured. After eating up too much energy in one fell swoop, it could not digest it fully. As a result, its body swelled up as though it was about to burst. And at the same time, the energy seals that Luo Kue produced were brought together. He was about to condense them into a relic. As Luo Hoyer said, these energy seals had their imperfections. It was not easy for ordinary people to detect them, but Yi Yun could see them very clearly. He could even tell how many imperfections there were clearly. It was true that Yi Yun did not fully understand the 10,000 Fei Empery in Heaven's Desolate Heaven technique, but with the purple crystal, Yi Yun knew what the perfect form of energy should be. The spots where the energies were imperfect accumulated and gradually expanded in size. At the moment the relic took form, all of them would merge instantly and reach their largest size. However, it would not explode as it would be forcefully suppressed by Luo Kue's relic forming hand seals. Finally, they would be left in the relic and become the relic's energy holes, affecting the relic's rating. In fact, when Luo Kue was using a hand seal to forcefully merge the energy seals together was the moment when the energy was most stable. This was an immense challenge on Luo Kue's mental strength, and it was this reason that the relic formation was a critical stage when desolate heaven masters refined a relic. There could be no mistake. At this moment, Luo Kue's relic was nearing completion. Hundreds of energy seals were already condensed by Luo Kue. The final step was combining them together. He was in full concentration as his forehead began sweating. Although it was only a third-grade relic, by using so many supplemental fey bones, it was also an extremely big challenge for Luo Kue to produce an outstanding grade relic. He was also reaching his limit. If not, he would not have produced so many flaws on the energy seals towards the end. Although it might have missed out on the outstanding grade by a hair, for Luo Kue to obtain such results, it was already something that he could be proud of. After all, Despite having only cultivated for 80 years, his strength was not only exceptional, he had also been able to divert some attention onto the desolate heaven technique. Combine Luo Kue isolated himself from distractions as his remaining mental strength was devoted into the Eclipse Cauldron, so he could control the energy seal's merger. Hundreds of energy seals began to emit beams as bright as the sun in the Eclipse Cauldron. Just as it was about to merge as one, a summoning force that no one could perceive mixed itself inside the energy seals. This summoning force was without shape or form, as though it was the origin powers at the beginning of the universe. Even Empress Luo or Empress Xian, much less Luo Kuei, couldn't sense it. At this moment, nearly everyone's attention was focused on Luo Kuei's eclipse cauldron. No one paid Yi Yun any mind. Yi Yun was standing by the side, condensing his energy seals while controlling the purple crystal. He began to lightly nudge the hundreds of energy seals. Just this light nudge moved the most critical energy combination point. It forcefully repressed many of the imperfects in the energy seals. Instantly, it was like a spark dropping into an oil well. The delicate balance of energy was broken. Luo Kue, who was nearing his limits, was late by the time it took to blink as he realized the nearly undetectable energy disturbance. Although the time it took to blink was short, it was fatal for the critical moment of relic formation. No good. 
Luokoi widened his eyes as his pupils turned bloodshot. He bellowed as all the power from his bloodline burned. The thousand-feet demon centipede in the eclipse cauldron opened its mouth wide and it tried to devour the collapsing energy seals. It was trying to maintain the relic at the risk of destroying the relic's quality. However, the thousand-feet demon centipede was already severely bloated and it was a spent force, so how could it succeed? Yun did not stand on ceremony as he controlled the purple crystal to nudge a second energy combination point. As such, the collapse of the energy could no longer be stopped. Boom! A tumultuous explosion happened as the hovering eclipse cauldron violently trembled. The cauldron's lid was blown open and it heavily slammed into the ceiling. It had smashed a brick on the ceiling into smithereens. Phew! A blazing blue fireball rose up into the sky. Luokue's thousand feet demon centipede bloodline's phantom image was enveloped in the blue fireball as it struggled in pain. The thousand feet demon centipede bloodline was considered strong, but with it being at its limits and being caught unaware, it had been engulfed by the shock wave at a close distance. Furthermore, it was in a sealed space in the eclipse cauldron, so the impact was imaginable. Luo Kuei, who was mentally linked to the Thousand Feet Demon Centipede, grunted as he retreated backward and fell to the ground. His face was as pale as a sheet of paper. Two streams of black blood began to flow down from Luo Kuei's ears. This was the most accurate portrayal of the Thousand Feet Demon Centipede's damage. The shock wave in an enclosed space had blasted through the Thousand Feet Demon Centipede's ears, causing it to be severely injured. It would take him a few months to recover from these injuries. Dawn. The eclipse cauldron heavily slammed onto the ground as black ash spilled out of it. Luo Kuei was battered out of his senses. His face was blank as he dully looked at the rolling eclipse cauldron on the ground. He could not believe his eyes. The cauldron blew up? His refining of a relic had ended up in him blowing up the cauldron. At such an important occasion, Empress Luo, Empress Xian, elites from all over the world, and his future master, Prince Crimson Firmament, were all present, but he blew up his cauldron. Luo Kuei's heart was palpitating. This. The young elites present all widened their eyes. Some of them were not even aware of the wine glasses that they had knocked over. Luo Kuei was just about to refine a relic that was a refined grade at the minimum in an ostentatious display of his prowess. But at the final moment, he had blown his cauldron up. As a result, he did not even have the poorest grade of a relic. It went from a refined grade relic to a pile of ash. This sudden change was too great. Seeing Luo Kuei look as though he had lost his soul, everyone knew that this failure would deal a terrible blow to his confidence. In the future, Luo Kue might even have a mental demon when he refined relics. He might end up being afraid of all sorts of things, affecting his future achievement in the desolate heaven technique. The elites present, including Empress Luo and Empress Xian, were stunned by the blowing up of Luo Kue's cauldron. However, there was one person who was unaffected, and that was Yi Yun. As everyone recollected their thoughts, they saw that Yi Yun was still controlling his crude disc array as he slowly refined a fey bone relic. His motions could only be described as leisurely. The speed at which he formed seals did not seem like he was refining a fey bone relic. Instead, it could be described as him picking mushrooms in the wild. On one side, one had blown up a cauldron, while the other looked relaxed. This contrast was way too big. However slow he was, Yi Yun had managed to finish the final seal as he began to do the final relic formation. Yi Yun's relic formation technique was also nothing fancy. It was the crudest relic formation technique from the lower realm. He had finished it quickly, but it was simple and crude. Dong. A gray relic rolled into Yi Yun's hand from the disc array. Some high-grade relics would be crystalline upon after refinement but the relic that Yi Yun refined did not look good, as though there were impurities within it. Furthermore, its quality rating did not go beyond its appearance. It was truly consistent in and out. Quality evaluation, poor. When Yi Yun held the relic, 
he noticed that there was a bit of ash on its surface. Using his sleeve, he nonchalantly wiped it and placed it on the maid servant's tray, and motioned for her to hand it to Empress Luo. Your Majesty, this lowly one's relic has been completed. This lowly one has only been exposed to the desolate heaven technique for four to five months after all. It's quite nice to produce such a poor quality third grade relic. Now, this lowly one wants to present it to Her Majesty. Seeing the maidservant hand the grey relic to Empress Luo, everyone present was dumbfounded. Their eyes were fixated on the relic as they could not turn their gazes away. Holy shit, what was going on? Don't tell me that Yi Yun has one. Many people began to come to this realization. On one side, one had blown his cauldron up, while the other side had refined a poor grade relic. But at least he had completed it. At this moment, Prince Crimson Firmament felt as though his heart was being trampled upon by a million ancient fey beasts with mud-stained hoofs. He felt like he was a super retard. He had played a secondary role with the retard, Luo Kue, in a super humorous, silly play. Unexpectedly, he would become the laughingstock of the royal capital in the next few days. As for Yi Yun, this fellow, who looked like he was low on his intellectual quotient, had become the final victor. Only been exposed to the desolate heaven technique for four or five months. Quite nice to produce such a poor quality third grade relic. Thinking back to Yi Yun's words, Prince Crimson Firmament wanted to slam his head into a wall. This fellow, who looked like he had a screw loose, had actually won. Or was this punk acting the pig? However, Prince Crimson Firmament had a few thousand years of cultivation at least. He had been focused on the competition from beginning to end. He did not feel that Yi Yun had secretly done something, how could he have that ability? Put. A pearly laughter was suddenly heard. Luo Horror had burst out into laughter. She was a person with a child's temperament and she was never serious, to begin with. She had forcibly put on an elegant look for this banquet. How could she tolerate it when she truly encountered such an interesting matter? Seeing many people looking at her, especially with Prince Crimson Firmament looking as though his mother had died, Luo Hora quickly gave a dry cough and dabbed her mouth with a handkerchief. Again, she put on a serious expression. However, the more she behaved this way, the more depressed Prince Crimson Firmament felt. Luo Hora holding back her laughter and pretending to be serious was the greatest travesty against him. This was because he felt that Luo Hor was mocking him. Prince Crimson Firmament, I. I can't accept it. At this moment, the dispirited Luo Kuei suddenly got up. How could he accept it? From his point of view, an unpredictable problem had happened when he was combining the seals. It had caused him to blow his cauldron and give Yi Yun a free win. Just one more time. One more time and I will be able to refine a top-grade relic. After Luo Kuei said this, Prince Crimson Firmament's expression turned even uglier. Luo Hor laughed and said, Luo Kuei, it was you who said it yourself. You have failed to refine a third-grade relic, so what qualifications do you have to continue competing? This time, you poked a hole through the roof, if you are given another chance, are you going to demolish this place? Luo Horror played with her handkerchief and spoke without sparing his feelings. The Luo Lucid Palace was not meant to be an area for the refinement of relics. It was not indestructible. When the cauldron blew up, it had shattered a brick. Author's note, this is a 5,100 character chapter, and it can be considered to be a big chapter. It's to slightly make up for the chapter that I missed when I had the flu. Chapter 867, Luo M.O. When Luo Hoyer said those words, everyone present fell silent. The result was obvious. Yi Yun had managed to refine a relic at least. But for Luo Kuei, despite his ostentatious razzle-dazzle, he had ended up refining a pile of ash. Empress Xian failed to understand what had happened either. She looked at Yi Yun with amazement, unsure if Yi Yun knew that he would win from the beginning. Everything looked like a coincidence, but Yi Yun's calm and leisurely composure from the very beginning made her feel like he had everything in his grasp. 
Had he foreseen this outcome from the very beginning? Huayer, what happened? Empress Xian sent a voice transmission to Luo Huayer. He he, mother, as to what specifically happened, I do not know either. But Yi Yun is a very interesting person. It's not easy to make him suffer. Amongst the people present, Luo Hor was the one who understood Yi Yun the best. Although Yi Yun looked harmless, he was extremely nefarious. He was filled with evil ideas. Oh? You think so highly of Yi Yun? Empress Xian was rather surprised. She knew her daughter the best. Luo Hor may appear a bit childish, but she was very arrogant deep down. She despised everyone, but she had given Yi Yun such a good evaluation. If that was the case, Empress Xian felt that she had to review the young man once again. Upon hearing Empress Xian say that, Luo Hoyer's face blushed. How could her evaluation not be high? She had suffered under the hands of Yi Yun several times in the Tai A Divine City. Someone who could make her suffer was obviously powerful, unless she wanted to put herself down? Of course, the mishaps in the lower realm, especially how her body had been seen by Yi Yun was something that she definitely did not want to tell Empress Xian. It would be unimaginable what Empress Xian would think of that. Just as Luo Hoer was machinating something, Empress Xian's follow-up statement made Luo Hoyer's face turn sullen. Empress Xian had said, Hoyer, in a while, tell mother of your experiences in the lower realm. Ah! Luo Hoyer's eyes widened and nearly choked. How could she mention those things? Worst of all, her mother was the person who understood her the most. If she made up a story, it was easy for her to be exposed. Also back then, when Luo Huara was left in the Tai A Divine City, there were Luo clan clansmen who were responsible for protecting Luo Huara's safety. Although they had never appeared, or even stepped into the Divine City once, they more or less knew of certain things. As long as Empress Xian asked them and compare the facts with what Luo Huara said, it was easy for her to deduce which were real or fake. Upon thinking about this, Luo Huara felt bitter in her heart. Aren't you going down? Haven't you shamed yourself enough? Prince Crimson Firmament's voice transmission boomed in Luo Kuei's ears. Luo Kuei had suffered a heavy blow and his ancient Fei bloodline had been damaged. He stood back up unsteadily and staggered back to his seat. He was unconvinced. However, he also knew that he had lost. Luo Kuei felt as though he was sitting on pins and needles in the palace. Every second that he stayed in it, he felt as though his face was burning, as though everyone else was mocking him. However, he would feel indignant if he were to leave. He felt that Yi Yun had obtained a free win, and with Yi Yun's desolate heaven technique level, even his desolate heaven technique servant was better than Yi Yun, much less himself. Therefore, no matter how embarrassing it was, Luo Kuei insisted on sitting in his seat and wait for Yi Yun to be trampled on. Luo Kue wiped the blood flowing out of his nose and ears and said angrily, Prince Crimson Firmament, your subject is ashamed, but, but that punk is complete crap. You have to rescue the situation. There's no need for your incessant talk. I know what to do. Prince Crimson Firmament said with a Yuan Chi voice transmission. He was of the mind to ignore Luo Kue, but what Luo Kue said was right. He had to rescue the situation. If not, he would definitely become the laughing stock of the royal capital. If Emperor Luo were to hear about today's matter, it was unknown how he would think of him. When Prince Crimson Firmament looked at Yi Yun, his eyes gave off a strange flare. He did not believe that everything had been machinated by Yi Yun, mainly because he doubted that Yi Yun had such an ability. Taking 10,000 steps back, even if Yi Yun had any inkling of involvement in the matter, his desolate heaven technique was definitely extremely limited. Yi Yun's age was obvious for all to see. Prince Crimson Firmament refused to believe that Yi Yun's standard could be even a tenth of Luo Kuei's. Prince Crimson Firmament took a deep breath and looked at Empress Luo. In contrast, Empress Luo appeared calm. She only nodded her head, indicating that she was leaving everything to Prince Crimson Firmament. This banquet was prepared for Prince Crimson Firmament, 
to pave his way to the throne. Now that there was an unexpected incident at the banquet, Prince Crimson Firmament had to take care of it. Prince Crimson Firmament faltered slightly as his eyes darted to his side and swept across Princess White Fox. Princess White Fox was sitting quietly in her seat, as though she was a pure snow lotus. Even the outcome of the competition had not perturbed her much. Prince Crimson Firmament knew that Princess White Fox's desolate heaven technique was peerless amongst the younger generation. If she were to compete, only Luo Hor was worthy of being her opponent. It was impossible for Princess White Fox to deal with a single Lee Yun as it would be a hit to her reputation. Luo Mo Prince Crimson Firmament's voice transmission was sent out of the palace. In about half a minute, a handsome young man walked into the main hall. His long hair was tied to his back, and he wore black and white clothes. There were delicate and beautiful scenic drawings on his clothes. He did not look like a warrior at all, he looked like a scholar who dabbled in the arts. Young Master Luo Mo? The moment that the handsome young man appeared, someone immediately shouted Luo Mo's name. He was Luo Mo, the one who had the title of the number one genius amongst the younger generation of the royal capital. Luo Mo was not one of the four great young masters of the royal capital, mainly because his background was not prominent. He was only from an insignificant branch of the Luo clan, but he was still famous in the royal capital, despite not being from an illustrious background. The label of genius was because of his talent in various aspects. It was enough for a typical warrior to have martial talent, but for Luo Mo, not only was his martial talent exceptional, but he was also proficient in music, chess, calligraphy, and painting. Furthermore, he had very high attainments in the desolate heaven technique. In the warrior's world, music, chess, calligraphy, and painting were used as a form of entertainment and they were not considered a main way of life. But Luo Mo had managed to develop his martial path through music, chess, calligraphy and painting, which was an amazing feat and due to his talent and his good looks, Luo Mo had won the hearts of many women. In the royal capital, many women from good families were rushing to marry him. Luo Mo was also here at the banquet but why didn't anyone notice him? Many young elites were surprised. For a person like Luo Mo, who was well known, he would definitely have stolen the limelight if he had appeared and been the focus of attention. He must be in one of the side rooms. There is a small feast in the side rooms, and the level of service there is extremely high. If I'm not wrong, the side room must be filled with important figures. It might be the geniuses under Empress Luo and Prince Crimson Firmament. People discussed with Yuan Qi voice transmissions. With this said, everyone understood. So this was the case. Empress Luo was setting up a banquet with malicious purposes. She was worried that if her lineup was revealed, it might appear too strong, frightening Empress Shen out of her wits. If that were the case, Empress Xian might choose to suffer the reputation of being afraid to go to battle by refusing the competition. It was clear that she would suffer an abject failure, so how could she agree to it? Hence, Empress Luo had deliberately hidden a number of people in a side room that was concealed by array formations. If Empress Xian agreed to the match, Empress Luo could call her people out one by one. With a gorgeous lineup, she could thrash Empress Xian. However, Empress Luo never expected that Empress Xian did not bring anyone from her family, making her unable to display her force. She had finally managed to use the burly Luo Kuei to get Empress Xian to compete, but she ended up encountering a wonder like Yi Yun. Immediately, Empress Luo's plans were in a mess. And now, Prince Crimson Firmament could no longer remain patient. By calling Luo Mo out, he was planning to make Luo Mo to thrash Yi Yun. Chapter 868, Rules of the Competition Everyone, let me introduce him. This is young master Luo Mo. Prince Crimson Firmament stood up and toasted Luo Mo from a distance. This simple action was an indication that Luo Mo was one of his men. Luo Mo gave Prince Crimson Firmament a slight bow. With a glass in hand, he drank the wine in one gulp. Luo Mo's behavior had an indescribable free and easy grace. 
Many of the girls present had a brilliance in their eyes when they saw Luo Mo. They had also heard of Luo Mo's name when they were in their own states. Although they did not go as far as worshipping him, they would still feel ripples going through their hearts when they encountered such a handsome man who stirred waves in the royal capital. After drinking the wine, Luo Mo's gaze landed on Yi Yun. He had learned of the situation through a Yuan Qi voice transmission and he was aware of the reason why Prince Crimson Firmament had summoned him. Friend, I'm Luo Mo. Luo Mo smiled at Yi Yun. Yi Yun. Despite knowing the person opposite him was an enemy, Yi Yun did not lose any form of decorum. So it's young Master Yi. I like to be frank. I heard you that defeated Luo Kuei in the desolate heaven technique using very interesting means. I am curious as to how young Master Yi did it, can you teach me? Luo Mo was suspicious that Yi Yun had used some unknown technique to rip Luo Kuei off. However, what would Yi Yun tell Luo Mo? He said with a smile, I wouldn't call it interesting. I used a technique called the 36 basic hand seals. In the lower realm, this is the most basic technique of the desolate heaven technique. Don't think lightly of the basic in its name. It actually contains hundreds of alterations. Why? Is young Master Luo interested in the desolate heaven techniques of the lower realm? I can lend it to you if you would like to peruse it. Yi Yun said very generously. When everyone heard this, they rolled their eyes. Who the hell would want to learn your lower realm's 36 basic hand seals? It was a something used to teach kids. They didn't want it even if it was free. A few hundred alterations? A few hundred my ass? Didn't it still refine a poor quality relic? Many family clans would willingly take out their best desolate heaven technique heritage to attract Luomo's service, yet Luomo might not even think highly of them. Young Master E, you really like to joke. Even though Luo Mo was cultured, he was rendered speechless to the point that his mouth slightly twitched when he heard Yi Yun's words that bordered on absurdness. He even suspected that Yi Yun was playing dumb. Hence, he suddenly looked at the third grade relic that Yi Yun had just refined. It was a gray colored relic, like a glass ball dug out of a ditch. He was hoping that he could see something peculiar about it. But no matter how much he examined it, it was the most standard of standard poor quality relic. Even the impurities were not cleaned away. Luo Mo was greatly disappointed. Against such a person, he could not be bothered to compete with him. It was like an adult sparring with a child. There was nothing much to talk about it, and even if he won, people would say that he was a bully. Young Master Luo, what do you think about this relic? Someone noticed Luomo's expression and asked with a look of interest. Luomo sighed and said, if it's meant to feed cattle, it's still passable. When Luomo said this, many people could not help but laugh. Luomo glanced at Yi Yun and he felt that Yi Yun probably truly did not know how terrifying the standard of the 10,000 Fei Empire in Heaven's Desolate Heaven technique was. However, since his competition with Yi Yun was ordered by Prince Crimson Firmament, he could not refuse it. With a snap of his fingers, a golden desolate heaven cauldron jumped out from the middle of his palm. It was a tiny golden cauldron that was the size of a chicken egg and it began to playfully spin on his fingertip. With the desolate heaven cauldron taken out, it was clear that he was going to showcase his skill. Everyone was immediately intrigued. Luo Mo had used music and paintings as his foundations into martial arts. His desolate heaven technique accomplishments were extraordinary. Few people his age could match him, and compared to Luo Kuei, Luo Mo was much better. If it was a person like Luo Mo, even if Princess Purple Spirit was the one opposite him, it would not be demeaning for her status. But if it was Yi Yun, everyone looked at Yi Yun with odd expressions. Yi Yun was also someone who did not like to continue engaging in meaningless nonsense. Seeing Luo Mo take out his tool, Yi Yun took out his desolate heaven disc array very naturally. When Luo Mo saw Yi Yun's desolate heaven disc array, he faltered for a moment. He had only heard a brief description of Yi Yun's victory over Luo Kuei. He did not know that Yi Yun had been using a tool of such supreme grade. Using that? 
Luomo's impression of the disc array was that even if it was given to him, he would probably give it to his servant and make sure that it was used as a shovel to throw out the trash. What shall we compete on? Yun ignored Luomo's strange gaze. Anything will do. Luomo said without much interest. Let me warn you on one point. If you are hoping that I will blow my cauldron while refining a relic, that is impossible. Yun laughed. He was also not planning on causing Luomo's cauldron to blow up. He could tell that Luomo's desolate heaven technique was extremely strong. With him being wary, it would not be easy to nudge the energy structure inside Luomo's desolate heaven cauldron. Besides, if he did it time and again, it would be suspicious. Therefore, Ian planned on competing with Luomo fair and square from the beginning. He said, then let's compete on the 10,000 fey empery in heaven's desolate heaven technique. Oh. When Iyun said this, everyone present was astounded. Competing in the 10,000 Fei Empery in Heaven's Desolate Heaven technique? Did Iyun know it? Could it be possible that they had made a mistake? Was Iyun truly acting the pig to eat a tiger? Iyun said with a smile, I actually know a thing or two about the 10,000 Fei Empery in Heaven's Desolate Heaven technique. Back when I first arrived at the Fire Cloud State, I was assigned to a Heaven Fire Hall Disciples Mountain. I met a maidservant named Tower, who was practicing the Desolate Heaven technique, and there, I read the introduction to Luo Clan's Desolate Heaven technique. Let us compete using the 72 techniques recorded in the introduction to Luo Clan's Desolate Heaven technique and judge it based on the refined quality? Yi Yun had never learned any of the advanced methods of the Desolate Heaven technique, so if he were to compete with Luo Mo on those, it was unrealistic. But back then, he was only a miscellaneous chores disciple at Ntif Fongling. He had been recuperating while guiding Tower on the Desolate Heaven technique for half a month. Yi Yun had seen everything about the Desolate Heaven technique that Tower had practiced. Hence, Yi Yun understood the 72 introductory methods. He had probed into the introduction to Luo Clan's Desolate Heaven technique with a maidservant. Upon hearing that Yi Yun wanted to compete on this, many young elites looked like they had just swallowed a fly. To think that they had believed that Yi Yun had unknown skills. What Yun mentioned was the introduction to Luo Clan's Desolate Heaven technique. Compared to the profound Desolate Heaven techniques of the 10,000 Fei Empery in Heaven, the 72 introductory methods were not even a drop in the bucket. Yun dared to say that he knew a thing or two after reading an introductory book. Forget it. It could not be forced. With Yun's standard, he was indeed only worthy of the introduction to Luo Clan's Desolate Heaven technique. However, the methods described in the introduction to Luo Clan's Desolate Heaven technique were extremely easy, but the refinement ability was severely limited. But now, Yi Yun had said that he wanted to use the methods described in the introduction to Luo Clan's Desolate Heaven technique to refine a third grade Fei Bone? How could this be possible? Chapter 869 72 Introductory Moves Typically, only Desolate Heaven apprentices at the Yuan Foundation realm or those lower would use the introduction to Luo Clan's Desolate Heaven technique to attempt to refine a first grade Fei Bone. And most of the time, they would not even be able to do well at refining one. Desolate Heaven masters that were slightly better would not even use such a technique. Seeing the Fei Bone that Prince Crimson Firmament provided, it was most likely one of the best third grade Fei Bones. It was impossible to use such introductory methods to refine such high grade Fei Bones. The failure rate was nearly 100%. Was Yun trying to increase the difficulty to make Luo Mo fail? As people had such thoughts, they saw Luo Mo reveal a look of interest. Interesting, let's compete in that. Were they truly going to compete? The people were somewhat taken aback when they heard hearing Luo Mo's agreement. Luo Mo must truly have confidence while daring to accept the challenge of using only the introduction to Luo Clan's Desolate Heaven technique to produce a top ranking third grade Fei Bone. If the relic could be refined, it would be shocking, even if it only had a poor rating. Yi Yun is doomed. I guess he had deliberately posed a tough problem so that the both of them would fail together and it would be considered a tie. Unfortunately, Luo Mo is a genius. He even has the confidence in such an absurd competition. Now with Yi Yun irrevocably committed, it's too late for him to go back on his word. Using the 72 introductory moves to refine a top-ranking third-grade relic is unimaginable. As people broke out into a flurry of discussion, Luo Mo had already begun. He beckoned with his stretched out hand, attracting the third grade Fei Bone in Prince Crimson Firmament's hand to make it land directly in his palm. Following that, the tiny golden cauldron above his right hand's fingertip rapidly spun and it increased in size. Soon, it was about three feet in size. 
With the lid open, Luo Mo threw the Fei Bone into it. Luo Mo glanced at Yi Yun as he had a confident smile on his face. He was certain that Yi Yun was trying to stump him, but he enjoyed this. It would only be considered a challenge for him if he could use the 72 introductory moves to refine a third grade relic. Just beating Yi Yun alone was meaningless. Shall we set the time limit to 30 minutes? At this moment, Yi Yun suddenly spoke out. 30 minutes was too short. Luo Mo frowned slightly. It was a difficult competition with such a short period of time. Yi Yun was truly trying to prevent him from succeeding. Unfortunately, Luo Mo was confident when it came to his speed at using the Desolate Heaven technique. 30 minutes? Sure. Luo Mo put his hand out, causing his Desolate Heaven cauldron to flare up with golden light. The runes on the cauldron began to light up as Luo Mo began forming hand seals. Indeed, they were the hand seals of the 72 introductory moves. However, the ones that Luo Mo formed were somewhat different. Did the hands of Luo Mo give life to the somewhat ordinary hand seals? It was like they had come alive. A heaven eminence seal was condensed as it danced in the sky like an alacritous butterfly. A fire willow seal burned like a small fire plume like it was filled with spirit. As for the sun moon seal, it produced a sun and a moon projection that slowly revolved midair. Luo Mo perfectly condensed every hand seal. Upon seeing this scene, people could only watch with utter amazement. Was it possible to condense the 72 introductory moves in such a manner? If not for them seeing Luomo's hand seals today, they would never imagine that it was possible to reach such a standard with the most basic hand seals when one's desolate heaven technique reached the peak of perfection. At this moment, an hourglass with markings was placed in the hall. The sand rapidly flowed downwards as 30 minutes was not a long time. Luomo had already begun, but Yi Yun had yet to make his move. Yi Yun, why aren't you beginning? Prince Crimson Firmament asked, as a derisive grin suffused on the corners of his mouth. He had asked while knowing the answer. How was it possible for Yun to use the 72 introductory moves to extract the energy of a top-ranking third-grade Fei Bone? Yi Yun lightly answered, there's no hurry. I'll let young master Luo go first. I'll begin after he is done. Yi Yun chose to let Luo Mo go first mainly because Yi Yun did not have a clear understanding of the Luo clan's 72 introductory moves. The information was recorded in a book after all, and it would be different from what he could see. Previously, Yi Yun had only seen Tower use them, but he had never seen the talented desolate heaven masters of the 12 Empyrean heavens use the 72 introductory moves. Yi Yun could not confirm that his own assumptions had already been perfected. Now, Yi Yun was planning to affirm his hypothesis with the 72 introductory moves used by Luo Mo. He was becoming more and more convinced that using the Luo clan's 72 introductory moves derived through the purple crystal would be perfect in form. It would even be better than the 72 introductory moves that had been honed for countless years. However, Yi Yun's answer made people disdain him when they heard it. He was still insisting on being tough with his words at such a moment in time. Slowly, more than half the time had passed. Luomo's motions were still as graceful as ever, as though he was showing a beautiful dance. The energy seals that he condensed appeared perfect, and everything had been done to their best. But in Yun's energy vision, he could see that the energy extracted from the Fei Bone in Luomo's desolate heaven cauldron was not flawless. There was 30% left at least. After all, it was only the 72 introductory moves used to refine poor-rated first-grade Fei Bones. Using it to refine a top-ranking third-grade Fei Bone was something even Luo Mo could not do as well as he wished. Using such hand seals to extract the Fei Bone's energy was just too difficult. Although Luo Mo looked unperturbed, he was actually consuming a great deal of mental strength. It was not apparent because he had a lot of mental strength to begin with. Seconds changed to minutes and the 30 minutes were nearly coming to an end. At this moment, Luo Mo finally completed his final hand seal. Luo Mo still had some mental energy left, despite such a draining procedure. He precisely controlled more than 70 hand seals as he bound them together. Relic Formation Luo Mo also completed the final step perfectly. Phew! A golden beam flashed as the desolate heaven cauldron violently trembled. The cauldron's lid flew open as a crystalline third-grade relic shot out of the desolate heaven cauldron and accurately landed on Luo Mo's hand. Upon seeing this scene, everyone was astounded. He had truly managed to refine it. The third grade relic refined using the 72 introductory moves definitely did not look like it had a bad rating from its luster. People believed that it would already be amazing if he could refine a poor grade relic. 
but in Luomo's hands, he could make the ugly beautiful. Quality evaluation, quasi-refined. At this moment, Empress Luo gave her answer. As the Empress of the Luo clan, she too was proficient in the desolate heaven technique. The quasi-refined rating was above ordinary, but compared to a true refined rating, it was still a distance away. However, considering the refining conditions for Luo Mo, this outcome was already incredulous. It's truly my dear firmament's fortune to have such a talent assisting him. Empress Luo muttered to herself and she was very pleased with Luo Mo. Prince Crimson Firmament also nodded lightly at Luo Mo. At this moment, Prince Crimson Firmament suddenly looked at Yun and a teasing smile suffused on his lips. Yun, it's your turn. Chapter 870, Final Rating a simple comment from Prince Crimson Firmament made everyone's gazes land on Yi Yun. The young elites present, especially those that were in Prince Crimson Firmament's camp, had looks of schadenfreude on their faces. For example, Ran Shui had lost face because of Yi Yun previously, and now seeing Yi Yun in trouble, he obviously felt great. In the present situation, it would be useless even if Yi Yun had the princess backing him. Yi Yun, at this point in time, you can also use other desolate heaven techniques. I'm fine with it. Luo Amo suddenly said as he looked at Yi Yun. He felt that it was just a farce for Yi Yun to use the 72 introductory moves to refine a third grade relic at his age. If Yi Yun were to use another method, there would be something worth watching at least. Only then would his win appear more valuable. With Luo Amo saying this, everyone praised Luo Amo for his magnanimity. He did not mind Yi Yun's deliberate act of making things difficult for him earlier on. If Yi Yun agreed to it, it would weaken his stance, but he would have a way to step down from this awkward situation instead of standing there in a silly fashion at least. However, no one expected Yi Yun to say, I only know the 72 introductory moves. The only other things I know are methods from the lower realm. They are even worse than the 72 introductory moves, so there's no need to change the rules. Thank you for your good intentions. With Yi Yun saying this, the expressions of everyone could be as interesting as one wanted. He was truly a wonder of the ages. Even a genius like Luo Mo would dare to use the 72 introductory moves to refine a third grade relic after deeply researching the desolate heaven technique. If Yi Yun only knew the 72 introductory moves, it meant that he was only at the level of a desolate heaven apprentice. And as an apprentice, he had the guts to even compete with Luo Mo. Even Empress Xin's camp looked at Yi Yun with discomfort. How were they going to smoothen this situation? At this moment, Yi Yun began. Indeed, he was still using the desolate heaven disc array that should have been thrown in the trash. Yi Yun placed the third grade Fei Bone in an ostentatious manner. The hourglass was reversed and the sand began to flow downwards. This set of 72 introductory moves was a combination of hand seals for energy extraction, condensing the energy runes and finally, the relic formation. Yi Yun obviously began with energy extraction. This was the simplest step for him. With the purple crystal, he did not even need to form hand seals. But of course, that would be too startling if he did that. The first 24 moves of the 72 introductory moves were related to energy extraction. This step was extremely critical. Even Luo Mo had formed one seal after another, afraid that he would make a mistake. However, Yi Yun did not need to mind this. With his two hands together, he extended them outwards and produced a large number of seals in one go. The seals were squished together and they were just sent flooding into the third grade Fei Bone. What? People who were familiar with the desolate heaven technique were confounded by this scene. This wasn't him sending the hand seals, it was like he was throwing out the garbage. Compared to the seals that Luo Mo produced that were beautiful, perfect, and full of life, Eun's hand seals were unbearable for people to watch. What is that punk doing? Continuing in this fashion will cause an explosion. In the first process of the relic, Yi Yun had used clumsy hand seals, but he had at least completed it them in orderly manner, but this time, it was unknown what there was left to say. Before people had the time to say anymore, Yi Yun had already begun to condense runic seals and complete the energy structure. 
He produced them rapidly as basic runic seals or formed one after another and were augmented onto the fey bone. These runic seals looked unremarkable. But in fact, a number of them had been improved by the purple crystal. The essence of relic refinement was to extract energy from the fey bone before condensing the energy into runic seals. Once they were compressed together, they would become a relic. The structure of these runic seals was actually the structure that allowed the best trajectories for energy flow. And in fact, as humans and the fey race had limited understanding with the laws of energy, the energy trajectories that they designed were still a distant away from being perfect. However, with the purple crystal in his possession, Yi Yun had already came into contact with the trajectory methods of energy that abided to the origins. Not only could he easily produce perfect runic seals, he could even do extremely tiny improvements to the 72 introductory moves. Just a simple improvement was trivial, but with it accumulated, it would be different. Yi Yun has made mistakes in his seals. Amongst the young elites present, there were a few who were accomplished in the desolate heaven technique. Even though Yi Yun had made the slightest modifications, they could tell at a glance. The few seals that Yi Yun formed appear to be somewhat deformed. It's somewhat different from the orthodoxy of the 72 introductory moves. Another person said. As they discussed it, a smile suffused on Prince Crimson Firmament's lips. Prince Crimson Firmament had never learned the desolate heaven technique, so he already felt that it was pretty remarkable that Yi Yun had managed to come this far. After all, Yi Yun could still form hand seals. Although the seals that he produced had numerous flaws, which would result in an eventual explosion, it was still much better than sillily standing there doing nothing. Time had quickly passed and about 15 minutes was over. Yi Yun's energy seals were almost done. The speed at which he formed seals was two times faster than Luo Mo. Of course, this was because Yi Yun had dumped all the seals on the Fei Bone, saving him a great deal of time. However, speed alone was useless. The perfection of the relic refinement depended only on the final outcome. If the energy structure was flawed, these runic seals would eventually explode. And previously, many of the desolate heaven master had assessed that Yi Yun had many flaws in his technique. In a blink of an eye, Yi Yun had finished forming the final runic seal. No one noticed that when more than 70 runic seals were brought together, the tiny modifications that Yi Yun made had resulted in a chain reaction. They merged together and even possessed a hint of a charm. This was the aura that belonged to the origins of energy. It was the result of a great Tao that existed at the formation of the universe. However, Yi Yun's cultivation realm was limited after all. Together with the limitations of his technique and the grade of the Fei Bone, this formation of great Tao only appeared for a fleeting moment before it vanished. Yi Yun sighed slightly. Even with the purple crystal, he found it difficult to explore the origins of the universe. That level was just too high for him. Yi Yun's hands clasped together. Relic formation. Boom. A purple beam flashed and shot straight to the ceiling. People involuntarily narrowed their eyes, unsure of what had happened. Why was there such an intense beam of light? But there was no doubt that this was definitely not an explosion. Phew. Under the intense purple light, a round bead burning with purple flames flew onto Yi Yun's hand. It appeared to have a spirit in it as it floated to the middle of Yi Yun's palm. The round bead was bluish purple in color. In the middle of the bead, there was a beautiful texture that meandered like a tiny snake. Upon seeing this bizarre scene, people did not even manage to react in time. That round bead is a relic? A desolate heaven master present suddenly said. The crystalline relic was burning with a purple flame at the moment of its birth. Yi Yun had actually managed to refine a finished relic? Was this reality? Wasn't it said that Yi Yun's hand seals were problematic? Also, what was the rating of this relic? Many people present were unable to come to a judgment. But Empress Luo, who was an expert in the desolate heaven technique, had already stared with her widened eyes as she stood up from her seat. 
As Empress, Empress Luo seldom lost her composure in such a manner. She looked at the Fei Bone relic in Yi Yun's hand with eyes of surprised doubt. Empress Xian and the desolate Heaven Masters present, including Luo Kuei and Luo Mo, who was competing with Yi Yun, were stunned as well. Luo Mo drew a gasp. His handsome face was already turning slightly pale. He mumbled to himself, a third grade Fei Bone relic with the appearance of a runic pattern. Outstanding grade. Runic pattern? Outstanding? The young elites present knew the classification of the grades of relics, even if they were not desolate heaven masters. It was the emblem of an outstanding grade relic to have a runic pattern condensed on it. A third grade relic could only be given the four grades poor, ordinary, refined, and outstanding. Outstanding was already the highest, and higher grades, such as transcendent and spiritual emergence, were only reserved for higher grade relics. Refining an outstanding third grade relic was not difficult for a truly talented desolate heaven master, but, using the 72 introductory moves to refine an outstanding grade relic? Was that even possible? Chapter 871, Rewards and Conferment Although the young elites who were present found it unbelievable, the outcome was announced by Yi Yun's opponent, Luo Mo. They looked at the relic in Yi Yun's hand. It was bluish purple in color and it looked like a dazzling glass bead. In the middle of it, there was a naturally formed runic pattern, also known as a Tao pattern. Tao patterns were the manifestation of the condensation of laws. It was common for them to typically appear in high grade relics, but they were nearly never seen in low grade relics. The 72 introductory moves might be described as the Luo clan's technique, but it was prevalent in the entire 10,000 Fei Empire in heaven. Similar techniques could be found in any lowly tier sect or family clan's library. It was not even worth mentioning. This so called poor technique actually managed to allow him to condense a Tao pattern in the relic? As the people looked at the relic, before looking at a Yun again, they subconsciously moved their Adam's apples. They even began suspecting that the 72 introductory moves that they had learned were faked. Yi Yun had used the 72 introductory moves to refine an outstanding rated third grade relic that had condensed a Tao pattern, and it made people feel like a child who had only learned the three character classic had defeated the top scholar. I've lost. Luo Mo looked at the relic and sighed. In fact, he felt that from the appearance of the relic that Yi Yun refined, it was barely at the outstanding rating. However, the Tao pattern was as clear as it could be. It was a manifestation of Yi Yun's nomological insights. What you used was not purely the Luo clan's 72 introductory moves, right? Luo Mo asked. Previously, Yi Yun's technique appeared to have several flaws, but from the looks of it now, they knew that their assumptions from before were them being too dumb. Luomo's question was also the question on many people's minds. Ian nodded and said, Months ago, when I was researching the Luo clan's desolate heaven technique at Mifomling, I felt that there were some spots where there was room for some experimentation. So I attempted it. Attempted it? Everyone was rendered immediately speechless. Are you serious? Just a few nonchalant attempts made him produce an outstanding relic with the 72 introductory moves? Junior brother E is a genius. I admit my inferiority. Luo Mo sighed and shook his head. Luo Mo admitted defeat and left. At the banquet, everyone watched Luo Mo's departing back, especially Luo Kuei. He felt his face turn hot, yearning for the ability to simply vanish from the palace. Previously, he had insisted that Yi Yun had defeated him through luck, so he was extremely indignant after losing. But from the looks of Yi Yun's desolate heaven technique, how was he even able to compete with him? Thankfully, he did not continue to compete with Yi Yun. If not, Luo Kue felt that he might as well have torn the skin of his face. However, didn't Yi Yun only cultivate for only about 30 years? Where did he have the time to practice the desolate heaven technique? After his win over Luo Mo, no one dared to doubt that Yi Yun had won through luck. In fact, there was no one who dared to foolishly challenge Yi Yun anymore. 
Yi Yun was one of the rare desolate heaven technique geniuses in the Luo clan. Prince Crimson Firmament looked at Yi Yun while his lips moved. He then looked at Princess White Fox. With Luo Emo being defeated, the only person on his side who could compete with Yi Yun was Princess White Fox. Prince Crimson Firmament knew that Princess White Fox's talent was astounding, and it was not only limited to the desolate heaven technique. However, Princess White Fox only smiled and shook her head slightly. A look of disappointment flashed in Prince Crimson Firmament's eyes, but it was just fleeting. He smiled at her, before turning his head to look at Yi Yun. At this banquet, not only had he failed at suppressing Princess Purple Spirit and Empress Xian, he had also embarrassed himself. This lower realm punk, who appeared out of nowhere, had never been thought highly of by him from the very beginning. But now, Yi Yun was standing in the middle of the banquet, winning fame for himself in a single match. Princess White Fox also looked at Yi Yun. An odd brilliance flashed in her eyes that seemed to be covered with a thin layer of snow. The 72 introductory moves used by Yi Yun as well as the Tao pattern in the relic had left a deep impression on her. This human youth was very special. At this moment, Empress Xian suddenly got up. Her slender fingers held up a glass of spirit wine and said, Elder sister, this time, Yi Yun, Luo Mo and Luo Kuei's performances have already helped add excitement to the banquet, so why don't we end it here? With Empress Xian saying this, it was equivalent to giving Empress Luo a way out of the awkward situation. In fact, she had to give the way out. Although Yi Yun had used his desolate heaven technique at the banquet to help regain her pride, in a battle of true strength, Empress Xin was still too weak. Just a single Yi Yun allowed her camp to be peerless in the desolate heaven technique, but at the Luo Divine Hall trials, it was a competition of strength, not the desolate heaven technique. Hence, although Empress Xin was greatly delighted seeing Empress Luo and Crimson Firmament suffer the setback, she had no choice but to take the initiative to provide such a gesture. Empress Luo had already sat back on her seat. Due to the loss of her composure from before as well as the defeat at the banquet, any discerning person could tell that she did not look happy. After hearing Empress Xian's words and then looking at Empress Xian's obvious good mood, Empress Luo's mood turned even more sullen. Younger sister is right. We should end it here. Empress Luo said. At this moment, Empress Xin glanced at Yi Yun and said with a smile, Yi Yun's performance was not bad and it should be worthy of a reward as a form of encouragement. That is natural. Our Luo clan has always had a love for talent. Such a desolate heaven technique genius obviously has to be rewarded. Empress Luo said with a nod. This empress shall award Yi Yun 300 world stones, 24th grade relics, and 10 5th grade fey bones. Empress Luo said. Luo Horror secretly rolled her eyes. What stinginess! How do you even have the nerve to give such a tiny reward? Following that, Luo Horror looked at her mother. Mother, you must award him more. Luo Horror said with a Yuan Qi voice transmission. Empress Xian smiled and said, Yi Yun is not one of Empress Luo's men after all. It's reasonable for her to give such a small reward. As for me, I will not be stingy. Yi Yun has truly helped us a lot. Huayer, you are also lucky to have met such an amazing person in the lower realm. He he, thank you, mother. Luo Huayer said with a happy smile. It was rare for her to be praised. At this moment, Empress Xin looked at Yi Yun and said, this empress has yet to think of a good reward for you at the moment. Seeing how you are only a normal civilian, this empress shall confer you a title of nobility. You shall be a first-ranked viscount, with Xianyi Spiritual Mountain as your fief. Xianyi Spiritual Mountain was a fief that belonged to the Xian family. Since Empress Xian was an empress, she naturally had the right to make the decision of conferring Yi Yun with nobility. And this superior grade spiritual mountain had been used by the Xian family as a cultivation ground for their descendants. But now, it had been awarded to Yi Yun. A superior grade spiritual mountain and a first ranked viscount title. When they heard this, the young elites present were amazed and they were also filled with envy. 
Previously, Luo Kue had derided Yi Yun's lack of status to sit beside Luo Huier. But now, Yi Yun was a first grade viscount. Looking at Luo Kue again, although he came from a large family clan, he did not even have the lowest nobility ranking. Just having a nobility title, despite the annual salary being low, Yi Yun's status in the Luo clan would be greatly different, most importantly. After all, the brilliance of one background was a result of one's ancestors. However, once one was conferred with nobility, it was because of having a true ability of their own right. Many disciples of the large family clans would never be conferred with nobility in their entire lives. People who were conferred with nobility had done enough to earn their respect. Just having a first grade Viscount title forced anyone who wanted to deride Yi Yun's background to rethink if they had the qualifications to even do so. By giving such a reward, Empress Xian had clearly taken this point into consideration. People mocked Yi Yun for his lower realm background, Empress Xian gave him a superior grade spiritual mountain. Others felt that he had a lowly status, she gave him a first grade Viscount title. Through Empress Xian's light and calm actions, she had smacked the faces of many people present. The Xianyi spiritual mountain can be given to you now. As for the first grade viscount, it requires Emperor Luo to approve of it before an edict is issued. The so-called approval of Emperor Luo was just a mere formality. Empress Xian's family clan had the rank of a duke, so it was nothing to give the title of viscount. Chapter 872, Summoning from Empress Xian Empress Luo's banquet had ended in a way that was completely unexpected. As for Yi Yun's name, it became well known amongst the circles of the top elites of various states as well as the upper echelons of the Luo clan. He had come from a lower realm, but he had managed to obtain first place in a combined training of the two states, the Firecloud state and the Phoenix Fermiana state. This achievement might not have been astounding, but defeating Luo Mo with his desolate heaven technique, he had truly vaulted into prominence. Now, Yi Yun was at the zenith of attention. Especially for him being in his thirties, his future was beyond promising. At this moment, in a particular hall of the Xuxue Ran clan, Ran Yu was lying prostrate on the ground. Both his hands were held to the ground. Due to using excessive force in his fingers, his veins began bulging out. In front of Ran Yu sat a middle-aged man. In his hand was a book that he was reading in silence. This middle-aged man was one of the elders of the Xuxue Ran clan, and he was also Ran Yu's fourth uncle, who had always been Ran Yu's backer. But just a while ago, the middle-aged man had informed Ran Yu of the matters regarding Empress Luo's banquet. Ran Yu's heart was palpitating when he heard the information. The details of the matter were unbelievable, but how could his uncle deceive him? Yi Yun also knew the desolate heaven technique. Ran Yu did not have a single bit of understanding of the desolate heaven technique. He had focused his heart and mind on cultivation. The desolate heaven technique was extremely time-consuming, but even so, his attainment in cultivation was inferior to Yi Yun's. The gap was just too great. Don't provoke Yi Yun any further. You can't afford to. The family has decided to no longer target Yi Yun. The middle-aged man had extinguished Ran Yu's hopes with a figurative basin of cold water, causing Ran Yu's body to jolt. But our Xu Shui Ran clan's reputation. Ran Yu said in disgruntlement. Humph. The middle-aged man coldly snorted and said, reputation is relative. If Yi Yun was an ant, even if he had bitten you gently, it would be easy to trample him to death. But now, he is no longer an ant. Our Ran clan isn't afraid of Yi Yun obviously, but Yi Yun is currently thriving, and with his close relationship with Princess Purple Spirit, our Ran clan may be able to deal with Yi Yun, but the cost would be too high. It's not worth it. Once the middle-aged man said this, Ran Yu's fingers nearly tore the ground open while he was kneeling. Why was this happening? Just a month ago, Yi Yun was just like an ant in his eyes. But now, be it his identity, status, and fame, they were all far inferior to Yi Yun's. Even his family clan had chosen to avoid the cutting edge with the situation in front of them. 
The middle-aged man added on, now, E. Yun is living in a Viscount residence. In the future, he will often be in the royal capital. As for you, choose any one of the Ran clan's other states' mundane estates, and I will do my best at arranging it for you. The middle-aged man stood up while speaking, and he left the hall, leaving Ranya slumped to the ground. Minding the family estate and slowly die of old age? Was this his outcome? The Luo clan's royal capital was a sacred land of the Luo clan, where many elites stayed. Not everyone was eligible to have a residence in the Luo clan's royal capital, much less the breathtaking price of its land. Being able to own a house in the royal capital was itself a badge of honor. And now, Yi Yun had obtained a mansion that occupied a circumference of nearly half a mile. This was the Xian family's estate in the royal capital, and now, it had been conferred onto Yi Yun as his Viscount residence. When Yi Yun first entered the Viscount residence, a number of people had sent him congratulatory gifts, but it was not bustling with visitors. On the contrary, the number of people who visited Yi Yun were very few in number. After all, Yi Yun was on Empress Xian's side. During the crucial period of the vying of the throne, the factions in the royal capital had to be very cautious in their dealings with people on both sides. On the first night that Yi Yun stayed in the Viscount residence, a visitor came. He was a golden armored guard from the royal palace. He had come with news Empress Xian wanted to meet Yi Yun. It was understandable that Empress Xian wanted to meet Yi Yun after the banquet. After packing his things slightly, he accompanied the golden armored guard straight for Fengawa Palace. This was the first time that Yi Yun had visited the Luo clan's royal palace. Looking ahead, it was littered with immortal mountains, with palatial buildings all over it. The core royal palace was shrouded by a large array, and it was invisible. The lofty Emperor Luo lived in the core vicinity of this area. As for Fengawa Palace, it was located to the back of the royal palace, and similarly, it was protected by a powerful array. Under the escort of the Golden Armored Guard, Yi Yun successfully entered the palace. Most of Fengawa Palace was covered with red glass tiles. From afar, Fengawa Palace looked like a fire phoenix that lived in the deep mountains. It was beautiful and brilliant. Little Yun the moment that Yi Yun stepped into Fengawa Palace's main hall, he heard a pleasantly surprised voice. It was Luo Huayer. Yi Yun turned his head and he saw Luo Huayer wearing a red tunic as she walked towards him with a grin. Fengawa Palace's main hall was covered with down feather carpet, so Luo Huayer simply walked barefooted. Her fair toes looked like a string of white pearls. And behind Luo Huayer was Empress Xian. As Empress, she was elegant and had esteemed deportment. However, when Empress Xin looked at her daughter, she shook her head. Usually, Luo Horror would bear with it and barely act like a princess when she was out of the palace. But in the palace, there was no inkling from her actions that she was a princess. Now, in front of Yun, Luo Horror was behaving as such. Yun greets Your Majesty Empress Xin and greets. There's no need for formalities. Seeing Yi Yun about to seriously call her princess purple spirit, Luo Horror found it awkward, and she hurriedly cut Yi Yun off. Although Yi Yun called her princess, he was probably holding back his laughter deep down. It's been a while since we have met. Little Yun, you have made quite a lot of progress. Not bad, not bad at all. This princess is very pleased. Thinking of the times back in the lower realm, you had a lot of talent in the desolate heaven technique. Back then, this princess had already thought highly of your talent. Luo Hor walked up to him and said with a giggle. When Yi Yun heard this sentence, he somehow found it somewhat weird. When you return to your residence, you need to grasp the opportunity to cultivate. The Luo Divine Hall trials are around the corner, so you should be entering reclusion. As Luo Horror said this, she smiled at Yi Yun. All right, go on. Enter reclusive training until the trials begin. Don't be distracted. What was going on? Yi Yun was scratching his head. He had been summoned here so they could tell him a few sentences? And then get him to enter reclusive training? 
Yi Yin blankly looked at Empress Xian, and he heard her say, There's no hurry. This Empress still has a few things to talk to you about. Luo Hoyer hurriedly said, Mother, little Yun needs to enter reclusive training. It's only a few things, it won't severely delay his reclusion. After Empress Xian said this, she smiled at Yi Yun. Yi Yun, since you already know horror from the lower realm, there is no need to be too formal in front of this empress. Hoira mentioned that when you first met, it was not a jovial relationship and there was some friction between the two of you. This empress knows Hoyer's character, so it's not odd that she would stir something up. However, on the matter regarding the relic, that had gone too far. This empress had already reprimanded her. The matter regarding the relic? Was it about the explosion of the relic during the refining process? That was Luo Hua attempting to trick Yi Yun into making a fool of himself, which resulted in. It was probably because of Luo Kue having blown up his cauldron that Luo Hua finally confirmed that the reason behind her relic exploding was all because of Yi Yun's machinations. Chapter 873 Princess Exchange Luo Hua stood beside Yi Yun and she signaled him with her eyes. Just as she was about to send a Yuan Qi voice transmission, Empress Xian had lightly glanced at her. Luo Hor gaped her mouth and no longer spoke. Yi Yin faltered and glanced at Luo Hor before looking at Empress Xian. He was somewhat confused. Could this impish brat have complained to Empress Xian and hoped that her mother would avenge her? He honestly said, back in the lower realm, the matter regarding the relic was just Her Highness pulling a prank on this lowly one. However, this lowly one had been thoughtless and offensive towards the princess. This lowly one seeks forgiveness from your majesty. Upon hearing this, Luo Hoyer's face blushed red. As for Empress Xian, she stared at Luo Hoyer and said to Yi Yun with a smile, what Hoyer told me was that you had bullied her. Why does it sound like it was the other way around? Eh? Yi Yun was taken aback. He had believed that the imp was going to use her status as princess to seek revenge on him. But from the looks of it, things did not play out that way. He was the one who had been bullied to begin with. But from the way that Empress Xian said it, it sounded as though Luo Huar had been victorious. Yi Yun was at a loss as to what to say momentarily. The relic's explosion was actually nothing serious, but if Empress Xian knew about him seeing Luo Huar's body, that would be. Yi Yun dryly coughed and he felt that it was better for him to speak less today. It was better to just listen to what Empress Xian had to say. In fact, after the banquet had ended today, Empress Xian had asked Luo Huar on matters regarding Yi Yun. Luo Huar never expected that Empress Xian would ask about such trivial matters. She had previously embellished her embarrassing matters, transferring all the sufferance onto Yi Yun. She had never expected that her mother would be so maleficent to summon Yun and debunk her right there and then. Indeed, a mother knows her daughter best. Empress Xian sized up Yun curiously. She knew that her daughter had been accustomed to being an imp in the royal capital. The guards and palace maids had all suffered under the hands of Luo Huayer. Only a maid servant like Donger, who was silly enough to make Luo Huayer feel like there was no achievement in bullying her, could accompany Luo Huayer. However, Empress Xian had never expected that someone from a tiny place in the lower realm would make Luo Huayer suffer. She found it amusing momentarily. Of course, this was just the fooling around of children in her opinion. Debunking one was sufficient, so Empress Xian did not probe any further. Instead, she asked Yi Yun, are you accustomed to living in the Viscount residence? With the topic being changed, Luo Hora heaved a sigh of relief. If Empress Xin knew of her exposure, with Empress Xin's understanding of her and Yi Yan's blockhead-like answers, she would truly have to kill herself once the truth was revealed. Yi Yun said, the Viscount residence is spacious and comfortable. Thank you, your majesty. All right, that's good. What Huayer said is correct as well. The Luo Divine Hall trials are filled with experts and geniuses. You have to make a lot of preparations. You have to know that although you have gotten a lot of attention at the banquet, that's only on the desolate heaven technique aspect of things. 
On Empress Luo's side, they are gearing themselves up to push you down from your pedestal at the Luo Divine Hall trials. This Empress will not lie to you. The number of top geniuses in this Empress camp is far lower than those in Empress Luo's camp. At the Luo Divine Hall trials, it will not be easy on you. Yi Yun nodded at Empress Xian's warning. He obviously had foreseen such matters. Right, this Empress has summoned you here to let you stay in Fengawa Palace and cultivate. The cultivating grounds here are much better than your Viscount residence. You can use any of them. Huar will be with you. With Empress Xian saying this, Yi Yun thought of something and asked, Is Her Highness also participating in the Luo Divine Hall trials? Yi Yun had believed that with Luo Huar being at a suitable age, it was reasonable for her to join the Luo Divine Hall trials, but he never expected that Empress Xin would shake her head and say, no, Huar will be going to the White Fox Clan and participating in the collective training and trials in the White Fox Clan. And in exchange, Princess White Fox will be staying for the Luo Divine Hall trials. Empress Xin's words caught Yi Yun by surprise. Exchange? The Luo Clan and the White Fox Clan were to exchange princesses? What was that for? A right for the alliance of the two clans? Yi Yun was somewhat curious, but asking Empress Xin directly was impolite. Furthermore, from the look on Empress Xin's face, she did not appear to be fond of the idea. Her slight change in expression made it clear. All right, as for your residence, Huayer will arrange it for you. You can take your leave. Huayer, take Yi Yun around so that he familiarizes himself with the surroundings. After Empress Xin said this, she waved her hand. At this moment, Luo Hor was still extremely embarrassed. Upon hearing Empress Xin's instructions, she heaved a sigh of relief. Spitting out her tongue, she tugged at Yun's sleeves and said, Leave quickly. Why are you so good at reading people? You nearly caused this princess to embarrass herself. Out of the hall, Luo Hor had pursed her lips and had said unhappily, Yi Yun was rendered speechless. What the heck was this? You were the one lying, and all I did was tell the truth. I'm telling you. We'll forget about the relic explosion. If that matter ever leaks out, this princess will strangle you to death. Luo Horror said with a blushed face when she reached this part in the sentence. You know what I'm referring to, right? Luo Hor was too embarrassed to say it loud, but Yi Yun had guessed it. He was tickled, but he endured it. Trying his best to have a serious expression on his face, he said, I know what matter you are talking about. I won't talk about it. You still have the nerve to laugh. For some reason, Luo Hor had seen through him and she immediately flared up. Yi Yun gave a look of grievance. He swore to the heavens that he did not even move his lips, but Luo Hor was already certain that he wanted to laugh. This princess warns you. That matter is not to be spoken to anyone. It's best that you forget it at once. You lucked out and you still want laugh? You are infuriating this princess to death. Luo Hor said angrily. I'm not laughing. Yi Yun protested. Indeed. He had not laughed. You are thinking of laughing in your heart, so that counts. Luo Huar said with great certainty, as though she had seen through him. Yi Yun was rendered speechless. He knew that he could not outspeak Luo Huar, so he changed the topic of conversation and asked, Princess Purple Spirit, I want to ask you. Wait, it's better you call me Luo Huar. If not, Huar is fine as well. Princess Purple Spirit is too awkward. Ah, uh, fine. Hoyer, previously, Empress Xian mentioned that you will be participating in the trials at the White Fox Clan, and Empress Xian appeared unhappy about the arrangements. Why was that so? With Yi Yun's question, a new bout of anger came from Luo Hoyer. As she ground her canines, she said huffily, It's all that which, Empress Luo's idea. She wants her son to marry Princess White Fox. By marrying her, Crimson Firmament's status would be higher. And who knows what the White Fox clan is thinking, they actually agreed to it. 
However, despite the White Fox clan appearing to readily agree on the surface, how can they be assured to leave their princess here for the Luo clan's trials? Hence, they proposed to send me to the White Fox clan. As such, an exchange would put their minds to rest. According to Mother, Empress Luo has another idea. Not only does she want to allow Crimson Firmament to marry Princess White Fox, she wants this princess to be fancied by some fox guy at their clan. When the time comes, I'll be married off to the White Fox clan, then I won't have the qualifications to fight Crimson Firmament for the throne. Yi Yun stared with widened eyes at her when he heard this. There were so many hidden intents in this simple scheme. Then His Majesty has agreed to it? Yes, Father has agreed. Our Luo clan hasn't recovered yet and it is indeed in need of allies. However, if they are thinking of marrying this princess off, that will be naivety on their part. Those fox men are as effeminate as they can be. I won't fancy that, and if I disagree with it, father will not force me. Yi Yun nodded. However, if the white fox clan had a prince that was heir apparent pursuing Luo Hoyer, Emperor Luo would probably have to deliberate on it. If Crimson Firmament were to marry Princess White Fox, and Luo Hor were to marry the new White Fox Emperor, the two clans' alliance would become unbreakable. As for the Luo clan's greatest enemy, the Fei Phantasm sect, who came from the sinkhole, and had attacked all the way to the Luo clan's royal capital a few decades ago, they would no longer be as fearful. Yi Yun was somewhat worried for Luo Hoyer. When something that truly involved the continuation of a clan, a father's law might not be able to withstand the mission of an emperor. If not, he would not be a qualified emperor. Taking 10,000 steps back, even if Luo Horror had succeeded in resisting it, her standing in Emperor Luo's heart would drastically deteriorate as a result of this matter. It would then be highly unlikely that she would inherit the throne. Empress Luo's machinations seemed simple, but they were very deadly. This was probably the reason why Empress Xian had an unhappy look. As Yi Yun was thinking, Luo Hoyer's next sentence nearly caused him to stumble to the ground. Luo Hoyer said, I say, little Yun, when you are taking part in the Luo Divine Hall trials, go win over the little white fox's hand. If you were to snatch the wife-to-be of Crimson Firmament, that would be fun. He he. What the hell are you talking about? Yi Yun was rendered speechless. I have a wife. Oh? You are married? But that's no big deal. In the Fey race, a warrior can engage in polygamy. It's nothing odd. Luo Huar said indifferently. Yi Yun stared at her and he could not be bothered to speak any further. However, if someone truly snatched Princess White Fox away, Crimson Firmament would probably be screaming bloody murder. That was not only the hatred coming from snatching his loved one, it also threatened his path to the throne. TCH, it was just a joke. Furthermore, even if you were to pursue her, you might not even succeed. That little white fox has very high standards. She might not even think anything of you. He he. Luo Hora laughed when she said this. She would never give up on a chance to strike at Yi Yun. Chapter 874, The Fox is Here As Empress Xian's palace, Fenghua Palace was much better than the Viscount residence when it came to cultivating. It was practically one of the top cultivating grounds in the Luo clan royal capital. In the following days, Yi Yun peacefully cultivated in Fenghua Palace. His living arrangements were arranged by the palace maids that Empress Xian assigned to him. He cultivated together with Luo Huar and they would spar at times. Time passed very quickly. On this day, the sky above Fenghua Palace suddenly buzzed with pearly sounds. It sounded distant but melodious to the ear. Even the palace maids in the cultivation ground could not help but look up. In a blink of an eyes, a few white ribbons fell from the magnolia clouds, linking the sky to the ground. White lights beamed, as though a palace from the nine heavens had descended. On the ribbons stood a line of figures. The person leading them had white hair that drooped down to the ground and he wore silk clothes under a fox fur robe. Several strongmen followed behind him. 
The other figures were beauties dressed in pink tops and blue skirts. The pearly sounds was a result from the adornments on their heads, which chimed in the wind. With these people appearing, they resembled immortals that lived in the heavens. They were a feast for the eyes and dazzling to the common people. The sound of their footsteps made anyone who heard them involuntarily feel like they were indulging in the greatest of pleasures. Yi Yun heard it for a moment before he cleared his mind and recovered his senses. Who are these people? Are they allowed to fly above Fenghua Palace? Yi Yun asked. Young master, they are people from the White Fox Clan. A palace maid responded. People from the White Fox? It was surprising that they could fly above Fengawa Palace. Typical nobles had to land from afar when they approached the royal palaces and enter the palace by foot. The expedition of the White Fox clan had magnolia clouds paving their paths, accompanied by divine music, making them appear like gods. This was very different to the Luo clan. Whenever the Luo clan's royal family went on an expedition, they would usually choose a domineering mount with ancient fey bloodlines. It would look full of pomp, but it would lack a certain bit of elegance. It's rather elegant. Yi Yun said. He knew that the magnolia clouds and ribbons were something similar to spirit cruisers. However, the price of them was a lot more higher. As for the adornments, they must have had mystical arrays engraved on them. Yi Yun recalled Princess White Fox, who he had met at the banquet. It couldn't be her, right? The white ribbons descended towards Fengawa Palace, and in a while, a palace maid came from the front hall and said, Young Master Yi, Her Majesty, and Her Highness invite you over. I'll be right there. Yi Yun changed out of his cultivation clothes and he followed the palace maid to the front hall. Upon entering, Yi Yun saw the dozen or more girls who previously stood on the ribbons. The girls' faces were like peach flowers and they were all very tall. They looked nearly identical, clearly a result of a careful selection. Yi Yun noticed their charming eyes with their fox tails swaying behind them. Indeed, they were girls from the fox clan. And on the main seat of the hall sat Empress Xian. And slightly lower than her sat Luo Huar on the left and a person with white hair dressed in fox fur on the right. Yi Yun was truly taken aback seeing this person's appearance. The person's white hair shimmered with a silver light, and it sprawled down from his head like now. He was clearly a male, but his looks were more exquisite than a female. In the middle of his brows were three cinnabar dots, adding a feminine touch to him, but he emitted a manly aura, reminiscent of a dragon. He was clearly an esteemed man who had lived through chaotic times. How is it, little Yoon? Are you surprised? That is a male seductive fox. At this moment, Luo Hoyer's voice transmission echoed in Yi Yun's ears. When Yi Yun heard Luo Hoyer's words, he nearly burst out laughing. Thankfully, he was not drinking tea, or he might have sprayed it all out. From the sound of Luo Hoyer's tone, she was displeased with the white-haired youth. At this moment, Empress Xian spoke, Third Prince, this is Yi Yun. Yi Yun, this is the Third Prince of the White Fox Clan. He came specially to visit our Luo clan royal capital. He had heard news of your performance at the banquet and he wanted to meet you. Third prince is also a person who appreciates talents. Your majesty, you can just call me Bai Yuqing. Bai Yuqing said. His voice sounded pleasant to the ears, but it sounded a little effeminate. He smiled at Empress Xian before looking at Yi Yun. The moment that he was looked at by the third prince of the White Fox clan, Ian felt that he was being probed. This feeling was very weak. If not for Ian's purple crystal, it was nearly undetectable. Ian frowned slightly. To engage in such a probe after having just met. Was Bai Yuqing certain that he would not have been able to detect it? Upon seeing Ian's frown, Bai Yuqing's slender eyes narrowed slightly as he seemed to reveal a smile. It could truly be described as a coquettish gaze. I heard from Schwer that this Yi Yun is rather interesting and I was wondering what sort of person he was. But meaning him today, there is naturally no way to compare him to a gem like Prince Crimson Firmament. 
Even compared to Prince Crimson Firmament's subordinate, Luo Amo, it seems like he is far inferior. In terms of cultivation level, strength and foundation, especially his body's lifeblood strength, it is far inferior to the Fei race. However, Schwer seldom exaggerates. Since she described the situation at the banquet, it is apparently true. However, it is highly unlikely that he modified the 72 introductory moves himself to refine an outstanding third-grade relic. Eun probably managed to come across a fascinating modified mystic version of the 72 moves, and he had specially prepared for the banquet to be make such an astounding performance. If not, why was there a need to request to compete in introductory moves? Bai Yuqing quickly came to a conclusion. He did not believe there was such a level of genius in this world. It was likely that Yi Yun had used a clever trick or some other deceptive methods. He had hoped that Princess White Fox would tie the knot with Prince Crimson Firmament after going to the Luo clan, so that both sides would form an alliance. In the future, when Bai Yuqing inherited the throne, his power would be stabilized as a result. The White Fox clan's reputation would increase and it would expand its influence. However, after Princess White Fox saw Yi Yun, her description of Prince Crimson Firmament was rather dull, and instead, she had talked more about Yi Yun. She had even said that Princess Purple Spirit and Yi Yun appeared like old acquaintances and it even looked like a good relationship. Back then at the banquet, Yi Yun sat beside Princess Purple Spirit, and he was just across Princess White Fox. This made Bai Yuqing extremely unhappy. Hence, the moment he came to Fenghua Palace, he immediately requested to meet Yi Yun. However, when he met Yi Yun, Bai Yuqing was somewhat disappointed. He had the white fox have an eye, so he could tell Yi Yun's cultivation level and strength at a glance. At the beginning stages of the Heaven Ascension Realm, Yi Yun was not worthy enough for him, even if Yi Yun was skilled in the desolate heaven technique. Furthermore, in terms of background and status, Yi Yun was far inferior to him. If he took Yi Yun as a love rival, that would be sully his status. He believed that Luo Hor would definitely not truly fall in love with Yi Yun. From Luo Hoyer's innocent demeanor, he believed that she did not think about boy girl relationships too much. It was unlikely she would be moved by anyone. Hence, it was best if he slowly nurtured their feelings on this matter. Bai Yuqing smiled after these thoughts flashed in his mind. So you are Yi Yun. Your performance is pretty good. Bai Yuqing nodded his head slightly, while his tone sounded like a warm spring breeze. This male seductive fox sure is cocky. Who does he think he is? He thinks he's some heaven's gift to women. Does little Yun even need his evaluation? Luo Horror pouted her mouth and began transmitting her voice to the people around her. When Yi Yun heard this, he held back his laughter and remained silent. Chapter 875, Luo Hoyer's Maleficent Idea Your Majesty, I came here firstly to visit the Luo clan royal capital on invitation, and secondly to see Princess Purple Spirit. And as a matter of convenience, I will take the princess to the White Fox clan. Bai Yuqing turned towards Luo Hoer, his tone suddenly sounding even more pleasant. The way he looked at Luo Hoer made her feel uncomfortable all over. What is this male seductive fox doing? Why are his eyes so salacious? It's giving me goosebumps all over. And from Yi Yun's side, he felt that the arrogant Bai Yuqing had now changed the way he looked at Luo Hoer. It was tender, and like his mouth was filled with honey. Ah, uh, is this person one of the white fox princes that you previously mentioned, one that might fancy you? Yi Yun asked with a voice transmission. But from the looks of it, it was no longer a possibility, but a fact. Luo Hor stared with widened eyes. D. That can't be. That old witch, Empress Luo, has already found someone. Furthermore, it's a male seductive fox. Just being around that fellow gives me goosebumps all over, all right? Only then did Luo Hor come to a realization. Empress Luo must have sold her. Allowing Crimson Firmament to marry Princess White Fox on one side, while on the other side, she was sold to the White Fox clan. It was killing two birds with one stone. 
Bai Yueqing had been invited by Empress Luo. He came here for her. No wonder the moment that this person appeared, he gave Luo Hua a feeling that the way he looked at her was rather strange. All right, this princess still hasn't even gone to the White Fox Clan, and a candidate has already been chosen for her. The candidate has even been summoned here. Hua Er. At this moment, Empress Xin spoke lightly, cutting Luo Huayer, who was about to flare up, off. She glanced at Luo Huayer and gave her a nearly unnoticeable shake of her head. Although Empress Xin had stopped Luo Huayer, she too was furious about this matter. Empress Luo had taken the liberties to carry out her own plan so her son could inherit the throne and marry off her, Empress Xin's daughter, to the White Fox Clan. There was disregard for her daughter's thoughts, and she was using the entire Luo clan's interests as ransom for her daughter. This was truly an ingenuous strategy. Empress Xin looked at Bai Yuqing. Despite her rage, she did not do anything that would appear demeaning to her bearing. With the Luo clan facing the threat of the Fei Phantasm sect, Bai Yuqing represented the White Fox clan. They were their reliable ally, so if their alliance were to break up because of this matter, regardless of how much Emperor Luo loved Luo Huar, he too would be incensed. In that case, even if Luo Huar did not marry into the White Fox clan, she would be ineligible for the throne. Third Prince, you are so thoughtful. Empress Xian said lightly. Huar, the exchange between you and Princess White Fox has been approved by your father. You have to go for the White Fox Clan's trials. There's no need for you to worry. You are our Luo Clan's princess, and one of the heirs to the throne. No matter how bold Bai Yuqing is, he would not dare to force you. If you don't like him, just keep a distance away from him. Empress Xian transmitted her voice to Luo Huier. The Luo Clan's status was equal to the White Fox Clan's. Both sides would not lose their decorum. If Luo Hor were to go to the White Fox clan, she would be in the same situation as Princess White Fox. It was a similar exchange, which meant they were candidates as marriage partners. Prince Crimson Firmament was extremely polite to Princess White Fox. Even at Empress Luo's banquet, they did not sit together, so Bai Yuqing would have to act in a similar manner. However, with Luo Hoyer's character, even if she knew this, she still felt extremely upset. And at this moment, Bai Yuqing spoke again, I've heard since a long time ago that Princess Purple Spirit is intelligent and is extremely talented. After the White Fox trials, this prince wishes to invite Princess Purple Spirit to stay in the White Fox clan for a period of time. Princess Purple Spirit can also travel around the White Fox clan, and this prince will accompany Princess Purple Spirit to introduce her to the customs of the land. When Bai Yuqing said this, Luo Horror could no longer tolerate it any further. Throughout all his rambling, Luo Horror only understood one thing. Other than the exchange, this male seductive fox actually wanted to keep her back to travel around the White Fox Clan. This traveling was apparently going to be used as an opportunity to saunter in front of her. This person was someone forcefully arranged by Empress Luo to begin with. Furthermore, he was an effeminate male fox that was trying to cling to her. This incensed Luo Huayer. I'm a princess of the Luo clan, it is downright improper to spend prolonged periods of time in foreign lands. Luo Huor wrinkled her face as she refused. His Majesty Emperor Luo seems to be supportive of princes and princesses traveling the world so they could draw on more martial arts essence. Furthermore, the Luo clan and my white fox clan has always enjoyed good relations. Your Highness, don't you worry. If you want to learn any cultivation techniques of my white fox clan, I can choose a batch of young elites from my white fox clan to spar with your Highness, so as to improve your strength. Not interested. Luo Hor was on her last straw. Did this male fox even know how to read between the lines? In that case, Bai Yueqing's smile began to vanish. He was not a fool, so he could obviously tell from Luo Hoyer's reactions that he was disliked. He was a proud person. His status was not one bit lower than Luo Hoyer's. To repeatedly hit a wall, he obviously did not feel good about it. In the White Fox clan, 
which woman did not scramble to gain his favor? From the looks of it, your highness does not think much of my white fox's mystic techniques and also looks down on my white fox clan's geniuses. Luo Hoyer grunted, but she did not speak a word. Indeed, she didn't think highly of them. Why doesn't your highness make a bet with this prince? Bai Yueqing suddenly asked. Luo Hoyer ignored him, but he continued speaking, regarding the upcoming trial, it's not a boast on this prince's part but there are many young talents amongst the White Fox clan's younger generation. This prince's younger sister, Princess White Fox, is an obvious case that does not need mentioning. If your highness doesn't think highly of my White Fox clan's young talents, this prince can get a number of them to give up on the White Fox trials and transfer them to participate in the Luo clan's Luo Divine Hall trials. We can learn through an exchange. Your Luo clan's young geniuses can also come to my White Fox clan. Finally, we can compare the final results. Princess Purple Spirit is obviously a wondrous genius and you would have dazzling results. However, this prince's sister, Princess White Fox, would not be inferior to Princess Purple Spirit. As for the final outcome, this prince believes that out of ten, our White Fox clan would take up at least six. Six. Luo Horror stared with widened eyes, while Empress Xin frowned slightly. They were obviously not pleased with the words that he said. The Luo clan had never been inferior to the White Fox clan, be it the experts in the clan or the younger generation. But now, Bai Yueqing had made a bold statement. If your highness doesn't believe in it, why don't you make a bet with this prince? If what this prince claims is validated, your highness can stay behind and travel around the White Fox clan. What does your highness think about this? Defeat me? Luo Hoyer's almond shaped eyes stared at him. This male fox spirit was beginning to act like a bushy tailed wolf. Luo Hoyer had to participate in the trials, but even with Luo Hoyer being included, Bai Yueqing predicted that the results would be 6 out of 10 in his favor. At this moment, Ian's voice transmission rang in Luo Hoyer's ears. Don't fall for his goading. There is no need for you to take up the bet. If you lose, you end up staying in the White Fox clan, but there's no benefit in winning. Yi Yin frowned as he glanced at Bai Yueqing. Bai Yueqing definitely had something backing him for him to dare make such a bold claim. It could not have been thin air. Don't worry little Yun. This princess isn't stupid. Luo Huayer's words made Yi Yun nod his head secretly. However, the next sentence of hers made Yi Yun nearly spit whatever he had in his mouth out. All right, I'll bet with you. Luo Huayer said. What the heck, Luo Huayer? Didn't she say she wasn't stupid? Yi Yun was rendered speechless. A smile flashed on Bai Yu Eching's face before it disappeared. From his appearance, it looked as though he had everything under control. Then it is agreed. You haven't said what will happen if you lose. If I lose, this prince will give your highness a gift that she won't expect. Bai Yueqing used a mysterious tone in his words. However, Luo Huar felt like giving him a slap when she heard this. Who wants a gift from a male fox like you? Bai Yueqing probably noticed Luo Huar's look of repulsiveness. He adjusted his body and he felt somewhat embarrassed. His gifts were something that numerous people yearned for, but she was repulsed at his offering of a gift. Princess Purple Spirit, other than gifts, whatever your highness wants, this prince will also satisfy you, as long as the Luo clan wins. Bai Yueqing could only take a step back so as to make Luo Huer take up the bet. Luo Huer said, you will satisfy me with whatever? All right. This princess is a pragmatic person who loves ancient fey bones, especially supreme great ancient fey bones. Giving seven or eight hundred of them would do. What Luo Horror said nearly choked Bai Yueqing. Bai Yueqing dryly coughed twice and sweat dripped on the back of his head. Seven or eight hundred ancient fey bones? Yi Yin nearly burst out laughing when he heard this. Luo Hor was truly not someone to be messed with. 
He knew very well that his obtaining of an ancient Fei bone back at the MT Azure Billow Collective Training had already caused Ranyu, Luo Tian and company to covet it. This. Bai Yuqing looked somewhat embarrassed. If there are no ancient Fei bones, this princess isn't interested. Your Highness, you are truly making things difficult. Bai Yuqing felt that Luo Hor was just fooling with him. Since you do not want this prince's gift, we can change the bet. What's there to change? Luo Hor rolled her eyes. Other than ancient Fei bones, there was nothing she was interested in. But on second thought, she suddenly had an idea as she cast a strange look at Yi Yun. For some reason, Yi Yun felt his heart skip, as though he had an extreme sense of foreboding. Luo Hora cleared her throat as she said slowly, Let's do it this way. Since you used this princess as a bet, let's pull Princess White Fox in as well. She will be participating in the Luo Divine Hall trials, while I'll be participating in the White Fox trials. It will be a fair bet, isn't it? Oh? I wonder how Princess Purple Spirit plans on betting. Bai Yuqing asked with a smile. If Princess White Fox fails to obtain first place, then she will have to stay in the Luo clan while traveling around it. Luo Hua answered. That's not a problem. Bai Yuqing immediately agreed. What sort of bet was this? Ignoring the upcoming Luo Divine Hall trials, Bai Yuqing believed that it was certain that the White Fox Clan would emerge victorious. Even if the White Fox Clan lost, leaving Shuer behind in the Luo Clan was fine. It would allow more interactions with Prince Crimson Firmament. Then it is agreed upon. When the time comes, Yi Yun will accompany her on her travels. Luo Horror turned her head at Yi Yun and said with a grin. This mission will be entasked to you. Don't disappoint me. As Luo Horror said this, she winked at Yi Yun. Yi Yun had a bitter look on his face. This darn girl. She had indeed made her plans revolving around him. How maleficent was she to think of such a bet? Chapter 876 Too Infuriating He knew very well that what Luo Horror said by Don't Disappoint Me had a deeper meaning to it. And in fact, this bet was all a result of Luo Hoyer's playful mindset she was essentially a young brat who craved to see the world plunge into chaos. Hoyer, you are up to your wanton mischief again. At this moment, Empress Xian's Yuan Qi voice transmission rang. Do you know what thoughts Crimson Firmament will have if your bet were to come into effect? Yi Yun will become the sty in his eye, a cause of pain he will rid off. Despite hearing Empress Xian's words, Luo Horror said in a displeased manner, Yi Yun is already the sty in Crimson Firmament's eye. Making it a little larger would not make a difference. Furthermore, I'm also a sty in Crimson Firmament's eye. Empress Xian did not speak further with Luo Hoyer's retort. She only shook her head because it was indeed without a doubt that Yi Yun was already a sty in Crimson Firmament's eye. Your Highness, are you pulling my leg? Bai Yuqing's smile faltered slightly. Although Bai Yuqing did not believe that the White Fox Clan would lose to the Luo Clan, Luo Hoyer's words sounded rather harsh on his ears. Letting Yi Yun accompany Princess White Fox on her travels? Bai Yuqing gave Yi Yun a look of disdain. He is unqualified. This prince would not agree to this bet. Bai Yuqing believed that his regal bearing was already rather esteemed, but at this point in time, he could no longer tolerate it. He felt that Luo Hor was constantly teasing him, hence, he said those words. He no longer concealed his belittlement of Yi Yun. When Yi Yun heard this, he took a glance at Bai Yuqing. He saw in Bai Yuqing's eyes a feature only seen in wild beasts, a cold urge to kill. In fact, he had sensed the white fox's belittlement and animosity right from the very beginning. Yi Yun was also not someone to be messed with either. Having been earmarked for attacks, he said, the two of you are intending for me to accompany Princess White Fox on her travels, but you have yet to ask for my thoughts. I want to say that I don't have any intentions traveling with Princess White Fox, to begin with. The opportunity you think I'll be yearning for is actually worth nothing to me. Yi Yun's final words were directed at Bai Yuqing. 
Bai Yuqing was dumbfounded hearing this. Not only Bai Yuqing was dumbfounded, even Luo Hor was dumbfounded for a moment before she revealed a naughty smile. Nice going, little Yun. Luo Hor said with a voice transmission. What Yi Yun said pleased her greatly. What did you just say? Bai Yuqing's face turned sullen. New flames of killing intent began burning in his eyes as he looked at Yi Yun. Seeing Bai Yuqing's reaction, Yi Yun smiled and said, It's truly interesting. Princess Purple Spirit wants me to accompany Princess White Fox on her travels, and you say I'm unqualified and unworthy. I took the initiative to mention that I do not want to travel with Princess White Fox, but not only were you not happy about it, but you turned furious. Could it be that in your mind, I should be pleading on my knees to be able to accompany Princess White Fox on her travels, and you would kick me away and curse me for being a toad that lusts over a swan's meat? Would you feel happy only when that happens? What Yi Yin said hit the nail on the head. Indeed, in Bai Yuqing's subconsciousness, it was only right for the White Fox royal family to reject others, and not the other way round. Bai Yuqing looked coldly at Yi Yun. If this was anywhere outside Fenghua Palace, he would have killed Yi Yun. Whether Her Highness wishes to stay in the White Fox clan is her freedom. By using a bet to force her to stay in the White Fox clan is such a hopeless act. Yi Yun was unafraid of anything. He directly said those face-smacking words out. Luo Huar and even Empress Xian wanted to give their kudos to Yi Yun. Having been blindsided by Empress Luo, the machinations of Empress Luo against her daughter, and how Emperor Luo was seemingly agreeing to the marriage, how could Empress Xian not be infuriated? She found Bai Yuqing unpleasing to the eyes no matter how she looked at him. But now, with Yi Yun throwing out those words, Empress Xian was elated. Of course, she could not speak her thoughts. Empress Xian said with an angry glare, Yi Yun, how can you say such words? Prince Yuqing is a guest of the Luo clan. Although it sounded like she was reprimanding Yi Yun, was there any inkling of admonishment from her tone? Bai Yuqing was incensed. With so many people present, his prestige as prince had been torn apart. As for the bet, he no longer cared for it. However, he never expected Luo Huayer to suddenly say, I can agree to your bet. If the Luo clan loses, I will stay in the White Fox clan for a year of travel, but if the Luo clan wins. Luo Huayer came to a pause upon saying that, I wish that you and I will no longer have any correspondence in the future. This bet. Yi Yun gave Luo Huayer an odd glance. The bet had deeper implications. After all, the White Fox Clan had yet to propose any marriage alliance with the Luo Clan. If the Luo Clan truly lost, with the bet in place, it was unlikely for the White Fox Clan to be shameless enough to propose a marriage alliance. All right. Bai Yuqing spat out the word. Then this prince shall be taking his leave. May Princess Purple Spirit prepare for her trip to the White Fox Clan in the coming days. After saying his words, Bai Yuqing did not stay behind a moment longer. He led his servants and departed Fenghua Palace. Upon seeing Bai Yuqing leave, Yi Yun smacked his lips and transmitted his voice to Luo Huayer. Why are you so confident? I'm not confident. Bai Yuqing isn't a fool. For him to dare propose the bet, he naturally has something backing him. So, all of this is on you, little Yun. Luo Horror said casually, rendering Yi Yun speechless. Luo Horror was truly too bold. If it's the desolate heaven technique, I might have some confidence, but if it comes to martial arts, be it my foundation or physique, they are far inferior from top geniuses. Yi Yun knew himself. The geniuses in the Luo clan royal capital were on a completely different level than the fire cloud states. After all, Yi Yun had just come to the 10,000 Fei Empery in heaven. His potential had yet to been developed. In terms of foundation, he was at a disadvantage. There's no hurry. We can take a step at a time. The Luo Divine Hall trials last for quite a period of time. At this moment, Empress Xian spoke. She sighed slightly before saying, regardless of the case, Empress Luo has made a good move. 
Even if Hoyer extricates herself from Bai Yueqing's marriage alliance, whenever Prince Crimson Firmament succeeds in his marriage alliance with Princess White Fox, under the threat of the Fei Phantasm sect, His Majesty would still consider Prince Crimson Firmament as his heir. Furthermore, if Huara were to inherit the throne, her relationship with the new emperor of the White Fox clan might not be cordial. Empress Xian was filled with worries. Just this move allowed Crimson Firmament to take another step closer to the throne. Maybe Crimson Firmament's marriage alliance would fail? The corners of Luo Hoyer's mouth curled up as she revealed her lustrous canine teeth. Although she was disinterested in the throne, she did not want to lose either, especially with Empress Luo machinating against her. She wanted to win against her and let that old witch weep. News of Luo Hoyer and Bai Yueqing's bet quickly proliferated. The bet was obviously not concealed as it needed the notarization of the public. In fact, the announcement of the bet was entrusted to the maid servants by Luo Huayer. With her penchant for chaos to pervade the world, those Fenghua Palace maidservants reproduced whatever they knew. It even included the first bet Luo Huayer proposed letting Yi Yun accompany Princess White Fox on her travels, as well as Yi Yun's subsequent refusal. With that, news spread quickly in the royal capital. Everyone who heard the news was stupefied. They were not surprised at the bet agreed upon by Luo Huar and Bai Yueqing, but by what Yi Yun had said. The status Princess White Fox enjoyed was heads and shoulders above the cream of the crop. In the White Fox clan, her status was nearly equivalent to Luo Huar's. But she had been ridiculed by Luo Huar and following that, rejected by Yi Yun? The opportunity to travel with Princess White Fox was worth nothing to Yi Yun? Yi Yun's words were not only infuriating and surprising to members of the White Fox clan, but also to members of the Luo clan. They were all dumbfounded. Yi Yun was too good at posturing. Princess! Princess! In an elegantly adorned palace in the Luo clan royal capital, a petite maidservant ran over. She had a pair of sharp white fox ears protruding at the top of her head and a bushy tail behind her. She was clearly a girl from the white fox clan, but she had yet to fully complete her human manifestation. Princess, do you know what has happened outside? It's completely infuriating. The maid servant said huffily as she ran. Chapter 877, Supremacy Gulen in this palace, Princess White Fox was wearing a white veil dress. With a book in her hand, she was quietly sitting on a bed. As the sunlight filtered through the veil, one could vaguely discern her body's beautiful contours. In the warrior's world, be it reading or writing, people were accustomed to using jade slips that could contain a lot more content, but Princess White Fox preferred the feeling of having a paper-based book in her hand. Upon hearing the huffing voice, Princess White Fox raised her head and she looked at her personal maidservant. She was like an angry kitten who had came before her to complain. Princess White Fox smiled. Putting down her book, she said, Linger, are you referring to my brother's bet with Princess Purple Spirit? Princess, you have already got wind of it? The maidservant stared at her with whitened eyes. Yeah, I got wind of it, as well as some of the words used. Princess White Fox said lightly. The maidservant was momentarily taken back before she said, Princess, aren't you angry? That fellow named Yun has no shame at all. He even said that he has no interest in traveling with Princess. Who does he think he is? There are so many people who want to travel with Princess that even the entire Luo clan royal capital couldn't contain them if they lined up. Even Prince Crimson Firmament yearns for it, but this Yi Yun. Princess White Fox said with a laugh, everyone has their own preferences and choices. You may like beautiful clothes and accessories, but warriors like superior grade sabers and swords, and a farmer might like fertile soil. There's nothing odd about that. So, why should I be mad? However, there is one point that is true. As Princess White Fox, I represent the entire White Fox clan. My pride is the glory of the White Fox Clan. Regardless of anything, Luo Hoyer and Yi Yun's words can be considered a challenge to me. 
At the Luo Divine Hall Trials, I would probably be with Yi Yun. When the time comes, I want to see what Yi Yun's true strength is. Time soon passed and with that, a month had passed. Luo Horror had accompanied a White Fox Clan ambassador to head for the White Fox Clan. As for Yi Yun, he remained in the Luo Clan royal capital to consolidate his cultivation realm. Today was the day that the Luo Divine Hall trials began. Every 60 years, the Luo Divine Hall would hold a trial that lasted 18 years. Yi Yun was quite surprised when he first heard of the Luo Divine Hall trials that lasted 18 years. Why did it last so long? Of course it's long. Empress Xian stood on a high platform. Behind her were elites that were going to participate in the trials. She was dressed in a lavish regal outfit, and she looked domineering. The trials is not just a single test. In fact, it is the most important opportunity of the Luo Divine Hall. It happens once every 60 years, and it lasts for 18 years each time. The 18 years are extremely important, they are a stage for you to build your foundation. Empress Xian slowly said. Yi Yun, along with other disciples who had joined Empress Xian's camp, including Gu Qing, Ling Wu, etc., were all present. They were all elites from the various Luo clan states. Furthermore, they were mostly less than 50 years old. Amongst the younger generation, they were considered the youngest juniors. Hoyer's trial will also begin at the same time as our Luo clans. In fact, many clans and fey countries in the 10,000 fey empery in heaven chose today as the beginning of an important trial for their young disciples. Empress Xian added on. Oh? Other fey countries have the trials going on concurrently as well? Yi Yun was surprised. It was obviously not a coincidence with so many powerful factions choosing this day for the beginning of their trials. At this moment. A spirit cruiser flew over and it landed on a square in front of the crowd. The spirit cruiser looked extremely special. It looked like a carp that was covered in scales. It had two long tentacles growing by its large mouth and its eyes were bright. If it wasn't for its surface having indications of it being made out of metal, Yi Yun would have believed that it was a gigantic carp. This spirit cruiser is truly strange. It's indeed strange. At this moment, Empress Xian spoke. Our entire Luo clan only has two spirit cruisers of this grade. One of them is used by His Majesty, and the other is by the Empyrean uncle. And the one in front of you is His Majesty's mount. These two spirit cruisers are one of the cornerstones of the Luo clan. Emperor Luo's mount? The people present were amazed. Just heading to the Luo Divine Hall trials required using Emperor Luo's mount? The spirit cruiser in front of you was a golden carp from ancient times. This is the body that it left behind after failing to transform into a dragon. Using its body as a foundation, the spirit cruiser was constructed. Hence, the spirit cruiser you see resembles a carp. An ancient parable in the Fey race describes how a golden carp transforms into a dragon goes the Jin Lin is in no case a common creature living in the pool, but it changes into a dragon upon facing a storm. Yi Yun had never expected that the spirit cruiser in front of him was refined using a golden carp's corpse. The corpse of an ancient beast like a golden carp was unimaginably valuable. But even so, Empress Xian had just said that the two spirit cruiser were the cornerstones of the Luo clan and they were of paramount importance. Clearly, such a spirit cruiser was not simply used for traveling only. At this moment, a middle-aged man dressed in white robes appeared from the gigantic carp's mouth. He had long purple hair, and his eyes were deep blue in color, resembling the deep starry sky. Just standing there nonchalantly made the light around him distort. Yi Yun knew that this was a manifestation of the Tao. The person standing at the fish's mouth had unfathomable strength. It was even very likely that this was the strongest person that Yi Yun had ever encountered in person so far. Your Majesty. The blue-eyed man nodded slightly at Empress Xian. From the fact that he did not need to bow at Empress Xian was enough to show of his esteemed status. And following that, Empress Xin's words made everyone understand his identity. 
Supremacy Gulen, we haven't met each other in a thousand years. Supremacy? This was not the first time that Yi Yun had heard such a term. Even in the Twelve Empyrean Heavens, a supremacy was considered to be a powerhouse. And in the Luo clan, supremacies were exempt from bowing, even when greeting Emperor Luo. They would only bow when they met the third Empyrean uncle. Every few decades, a new batch of geniuses and elites would be born in the Luo clan. Amongst these geniuses, there would be existences at the pinnacle. But true supremacies could be counted with one's hand in the Luo clan. This was the first time that Yi Yun heard of supremacy Gulen, but many of the elites present already knew the few supremacies in the Luo clan. He's supremacy Gulen. For our trip to the Luo Divine Hall trials, we actually get to ride on His Majesty's spirit cruiser and have a supremacy lead the way. The whole situation is so fantastic. Someone said in surprise. The situation appeared exaggerated regardless of anything. There's no other way. The place we are going cannot be entered without a supremacy powering the Golden Carp Spirit Cruiser. Someone who understood the Luo Divine Hall trials well said with mixed emotions. It was also because of this reason that Empress Xian had mentioned that the two spirit cruisers owned by Emperor Luo and the third Empyrean uncle were the cornerstones of the Luo clan. The reason was mostly attributed to the fact that spirit cruisers at that grade were the keys to activating the Luo Divine Hall trials. Without spirit cruisers at such a grade, the Luo clan would lose the ability to nurture their young elites. Translators note, the Luo Divine Hall trials lasts 18 years. 10 years? What? You must have seen wrongly. La 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 la. Chapter 878, Primordial Empyrean Heaven Boom! The spirit cruiser tore through the void of the world it was in and it began void transference. The moment a spirit cruiser, which was controlled by a supremacy and also the Mount of Emperor Luo, did void transference, be it its teleportation distance or the energy it consumed, they were both unimaginable. The reason why it had to be controlled by a supremacy was because the venue of the Luo Divine Hall trials was completely unexpected. Yi Yun stood beside a window of the spirit cruiser. As it passed through space, he saw numerous twinkling lights. These dots of light each represented a star. Some of these stars were desolate, but there were others brimming with life in their respective solar systems. These lives similarly could give birth to warriors. There were as many lives in the entire twelve Empyrean heavens as the number of grains of sand on a beach. It was difficult to estimate the number, and even if one was a supremacy, one would only be able to explore a very tiny area of the entire twelve Empyrean heavens. Junior Brother Yi Yun Yi Yun turned around when he heard someone call him. He saw a young man and woman walk towards him. The man was lanky while the woman was petite. I'm Gu Cheng. She's Ling Wu. We are both members of the younger generation in Empress Xian's camp. We might be considered pretty alright in our states, but compared to junior brother Yi Yun, we are far too inferior. Gu Cheng laughed. He came to get to know Yi Yun, because be it his current status, or the amount of potential he had revealed, he was someone worth acquainting with. Senior brother Gu, you must be joking. This lowly one only lucked out on a little bit of desolate heaven technique. The upcoming Luo Divine Hall Trials is a competition of strength, and I lack the advantage in various aspects. Just as Yi Yun was speaking, the spirit cruiser suddenly accelerated, as though the void had been torn apart as its fragments transformed into bands of light while they hurtled backwards. The tunneling through space is about to begin. Yi Yun had once experienced void transference. But compared to the void transference on the spirit cruisers he had ridden before, the bands of light were more than a hundred times brighter. This implied an even stronger spatial force. It was no wonder that a top-grade spirit cruiser used by Emperor Luo was deployed for this trip. If it was any ordinary spirit cruiser, it would be torn apart by the force of the spatial storms. Where are we going? Yi Yun could not help but ask. He was still clueless about the Luo Divine Hall Trials. To the primordial Empyrean heaven. 
Ling Wu said. She had ocean blue long hair. As she watched the gorgeous band of lights outside the spirit cruiser, her looks revealed a yearning. Primordial Empyrean Heaven? This was the first time that Yi Yun had heard of such a name. The primordial Empyrean heaven sits independent outside the twelve Empyrean heavens. Its volume is relatively smaller than the twelve Empyrean heavens, but its status is extremely pivotal. Legend says that, it is a world that failed to take form. At this moment, Gu Cheng spoke. Yi Yun was taken aback after hearing this. A world that failed to take in form? That's right. In this world, there are stars that are in their inchoate states, fragmentary spaces, the richest Fey God auras, and the power of chaos. Chaos? Yi Yun was alarmed. He obviously knew what it meant by the word chaos. Legend said that the universe was born out of chaos. According to the Twelve Empyrean Heaven stories, the Twelve Fey Gods came out of chaos. After the twelve Empyrean heavens were formed out of chaos, most of the power of chaos had been depleted. And according to Gu Qing, the primordial Empyrean heaven was a world that failed to take form. If that were the case, leaving behind the power of chaos was nothing surprising. What sort of form was the power of chaos? Just having the power of chaos in the primordial Empyrean heaven was already an extremely attractive point. Furthermore, not only was there the power of chaos, it also contained a great deal of opportunities. It was no wonder that Ling Wu's eyes sparkled when she mentioned the primordial Empyrean heaven. Ling Wu said, actually, the White Fox Clan's trials are also held in the primordial Empyrean heaven. Every sixty years, there will be a moment when the barrier demarcating the primordial Empyrean heaven is at its weakest. That also the best time to enter the primordial Empyrean heaven. This is the reason why the White Fox and Luo clan choose to begin their most important trials on the same day. However, even if the spatial barrier is at its weakest, a top-grade spirit cruiser and a supremacy are needed to break through the spatial barrier. If not for this reason, how are we even qualified to ride in His Majesty's mount and get to meet Supremacy Gulen? Then will we be in the same place as the White Fox clan? Yi Yun asked. Luo Hor was currently together with the White Fox Clan. Of course not. The primordial Empyrean heaven is a very complex environment. Opening up a zone requires a great deal of resources and the sacrifice of warriors. No power would be willing to sacrifice so much to share the zone that they open up with others. Our zone is ours, while the White Fox Clan's is theirs. Gu Qing explained to Yi Yun. So that's how it is. As they spoke, the spirit cruiser began another round of void transference. The beams of light surrounding them grew in intensity till finally, the spirit cruiser came to a halt in a nebulous space. Primordial Empyrean Heaven This is the world that failed to take form. Yi Yun looked at the space around the cruiser. In fact, this was a universe amidst disorder. Just the Yuan Chi around him felt different from the twelve Empyrean heavens. An ancient and desolate aura that existed in this Empyrean heaven. The primordial Empyrean heaven was filled with fog, and amidst the fog, there were fragmentary continental landmasses, as well as floating stars. However, a large majority of the stars were dim and dead silent, as though they were just gigantic pieces of rock. There were some stars and landmasses that emanated an extremely dangerous aura. Egan imagined that they would disembark from the spirit cruiser here, but he never expected that the spirit cruiser would continue flying before landing on a large landmass. We're here. Gu Cheng said. This is the Luo Divine Hall. The Luo clan has set up a large formation array here. Every time void transference is used, we would arrive in the vicinity. A short trip here would do. Ling Wu understood a lot about the matter. Yi Yun looked at the landmass and he noticed a towering but unsophisticated palace, as well as hundreds of tall spires standing above the lands as well. This is the Luo Divine Hall. Gu Cheng said. The Luo Divine was the totem of the Luo clan. Legend said that the ancestor of the Luo clan was an extremely powerful ancient fae. 
So, the true Luo Divine Hall is actually here. I thought that it would be in the royal capital. Yi Yun drew a light gasp. There was no vegetation on the land mass. It looked desolate and cold, as though it was a forgotten world. If the Luo clan could build a Luo Divine Hall in the primordial Empyrean heaven, it was possible that the White Fox clan did as well. The various factions of the twelve Empyrean heavens divided the primordial Empyrean heaven amongst themselves. The primordial Empyrean heaven was an important ground for them to nurture their talents. There was a delicate balance maintained amongst the factions, with each going their own way. A few Luo Divine Hall elders who were stationed here had already been waiting mid-air. From today onwards, you will be spending the next 18 years here. After 18 years, it is unknown how many of you will be able to leave on the spirit cruiser alive. And amongst you, how many would experience a complete metamorphosis to become a dragon or a phoenix amongst people? Disembark the spirit cruiser. Another thin elder took a step forward as he said. This elder was truly direct. The disciples, who had just arrived in the primordial Empyrean heaven, were still feeling fascinated about their surroundings. But at the moment that they arrived, it was like a figurative basin of cold water was poured over them to dampen their spirits. Many of them immediately wiped the wonderment from their minds and fighting spirit and diligence appeared in their eyes. Chapter 879, Chaotic Laws After the lanky elder finished speaking, the hull of spirit cruiser opened. The disciples who came to participate in the Luo Divine Hall trials subsequently flew out. However, the moment that they stepped out of the spirit cruiser, there were immediately people who stumbled. There were even a few disciples who screamed as they plummeted straight down. Elder Shur and the other elders watched coldly, but they had no intention of saving them. These disciples desperately powered their Yuan Qi before finally stabilizing their bodies. Slowly, they rose up, but from their pale looks, it was obvious that they had been given quite a fright. They were still about a hundred thousand feet high in the sky. If they truly plummeted down, it would not be a problem in any other common universe, but in the primordial Empyrean heaven, falling meant a high chance of death. As warriors, they were already accustomed to flying. Although their Yuan Shi was insufficient to allow them to fly over great distances, just hovering mid-air for a while was easy as lifting a finger. It was practically an inborn instinct. But just a moment ago, they had to relearn the feeling of flying in air. This is a universe that failed to take form, the primordial Empyrean heaven. The laws here are different to the twelve Empyrean heavens. It's in great disorder. The laws of nature around the landmass that the Luo Divine Hall is situated on is considered to be stable, but there are certain places where every step taken will allow you to encounter different laws. At those places, the energy in your bodies might be triggered by the disorderly laws even while standing. If you fail to control it, you might explode to your deaths, much less fly. At this moment, an elder with an extremely long beard spoke slowly. But it's because of this that the primordial Empyrean heaven is such an excellent place for the trials. In here, you will be able to experience the laws of nature at the primordial birth of the universe. The laws are disorderly and brutal. But it is also because of this that they are easier to gain insights from. They have not gone through a perfect transformation and maintains the most primordial state. They do not have a system of a harmonious trajectories. In worlds like the twelve Empyrean heavens that have taken form, the insights into a law requires you to extract them from their trajectories. Here, there is no need to do so. If you can seize the opportunity and grasp one law, you would become a dragon or phoenix amongst people. The bearded elder was apparently more patient than Eldershire. However, the look he gave the disciples was dull. How could it be easy to grasp a law? Even in the primordial Empyrean heaven, gaining insight into laws was still extremely difficult. It was equivalent to the mortals in the lower realm. They lived on tiny planets. Even if they grasped a tiny law and used the law to fly out of their planets, they were still no different to an ant when it came to the universe. It was extremely difficult for an ant to even try fathoming the vastness of the entire world. 
It was as though the bearded elder had not spoken in a very long while. Having said his piece, he fell silent. They had volunteered to stay in the Luo Divine Hall. Other than protecting the Luo Divine Hall, they also went into reclusive cultivation here. The disciples, who were still in the spirit cruiser, were appalled. They never expected that just moving alone was difficult enough in the primordial Empyrean heaven. They still needed to gain insight into laws and battle. With the lessons drawn from the mistakes of those before them, the remaining disciples were careful when they flew out of the spirit cruiser. Although many of the disciples had jolted themselves to give their all, they were still unable to find their footing after flying out. Even after familiarizing themselves with the surroundings, they were still unable to stand freely. It was as though they would plummet at any time. However, there were a group of people who adjusted to it faster. After a few moments of stumbling, they were able to barely stand firm, with no signs of them falling at any time. Immediately, the disciples who failed to find their footing felt that their faces were burning. The setback was too great to be immediately proven to be inferior to the other disciples upon arrival at the trial. However, no matter how well the disciples performed, the two elders that protected the Luo Divine Hall had their eyelids lowered. They did not pay any attention to them. It's senior brother Luo M.O. Someone suddenly shouted from amidst the crowd. Luo M.O., who had competed with Yun at Empress Luo's banquet, had arrived. Luo M.O. was still wearing his black and white robe. He silently stepped out of the spirit cruiser. Ever since he was defeated by Yi Yun in the desolate heaven technique at Empress Luo's banquet, he appeared more staid. The moment he stepped out, his robe fluttered up, as though it was lifted up by winds. Following that he stably hovered mid-air, no different to normal flying. Zay! People remarked with a tinge of regret. Indeed, a genius at Luo Mo's level was different. Behind Luo Mo was a black-dressed youth. The moment the black-dressed youth appeared, he attracted the attention of many. The reason why the black-dressed youth attracted the attention of the others was not because of his identity. In fact, many people present had never seen him before. The youth had a pair of black and bright eyes. He was extremely well-kept, with a sword behind his back. He had black short hair, but his face looked somewhat pale. The bone sword was made of the bone of an unknown beast. It was white like jade and it did not appear sharp at all. Instead, it gave off a warm feeling to others. The most astonishing thing was that beside the sword's hilt, there was a tiny bird standing on the black-dressed youth's shoulder. And it was this bird that attracted the eyes of everyone. The participants present were members of the Fey race. They were extremely sensitive to fey race bloodlines, so they were certain that the bird was not a powerful fey beast, to the point that it was most likely an ordinary bird. Bringing an ordinary bird to the Luo Divine Hall? The laws in the primordial Empyrean heaven were extremely disorderly. Out of the Luo Divine Hall's vicinity, many places could trigger the energies in a person's body due to the chaotic laws to result in an exploding death. Even in the landmass where the Luo Divine Hall lay, where the laws were slightly more stable, it was still not a place that an ordinary bird could withstand. A strange scene was seen. When the black-dressed youth stepped out of the spirit cruiser, it was as though he was walking on flat ground. His body did not even quiver once. Even the bird on his shoulder was turning its tiny head in an alacritous manner. From time to time, it would issue clear sounds of chirping that can actually do? Many people had struggled just to be able to stand firmly, but the youth in front of them had not only stood firmly, but he had also brought a tiny bird. Who was he? Such thoughts appeared on many people's minds. It was as though Luo Mo knew the youth, and from his demeanor, he was rather respectful towards the youth. At this moment, Ran Shui, Luo Divine Hall had begun to come out of the spirit cruiser. As two of the four young masters of the royal capital, the both of them were members of the younger generation that were younger than a hundred years old. Obviously, they would not miss the Luo Divine Hall trials. Just as Ran Shui and Dong Lingyu were about to step out of the spirit cruiser. Phew! 
The sound of the tearing of the void resounded as air was pushed apart. The surrounding laws also turned chaotic. The young disciples, who had struggled to find their footing, stumbled again, as though they were tiny boats bobbing on a huge wave. People looked up as a gigantic white spirit cruiser descended and it landed near the Luo clan spirit cruiser. It's the White Fox Clan Spirit Cruiser. The gigantic white cruiser had a line made up of large beads across the keel of the boat that resembled the eyeballs of beasts. The line gave off a feeling full of mystery. It's Princess White Fox and the disciples of the White Fox Clan. A young Luo clan elite said. Chapter 880, Shadow Twins at the Luo Divine Hall Trials, the Luo Clan and White Fox Clan had exchanged quite a large number of elites. A number of elites that Empress Luo had nurtured were sent to the White Fox Clan. As for the White Fox Clan, it had sent an extremely strong lineup that accompanied Princess White Fox. At the trials, it was not only a competition between Empress Luo and Empress Xian, it was also a competition between the Luo and White Fox Clan. This destined the trial to be an intense competition. At this moment, an arc of light shot out of the White Spirit Cruiser as its hull opened. Appearing from inside the hull were a group of lavishly dressed White Fox disciples. The male disciples made up no more than 20%, while the rest were all female disciples. At a glance, there were dozens of White Fox clan beauties. Any one of them had beauty that could topple kingdoms. The White Fox clan's ancestor was a powerful ancient fae, the nine-tailed White Fox. Female White Fox that took human form had an inexplicable charm, and they were considered one of the most perfect beings in the world. But now, this group of female disciples were one of the most elite girls amongst the White Fox's younger generation with the purest bloodlines. Their looks, bearing and figures were impeccable. The group of beauties that suddenly appeared had different charms. There were those with ample chests or those with slim waists. Some had long, slender fair legs, while others that did not look tall would be petite and adorable. Some had temperaments as cold as jade, as though they were lofty snow lotuses, and there were others that were sultry and completely capable of bringing down a country to its knees. Most of them wore fine silk-veiled clothing, and all of them standing together projected an astounding feeling. Amongst the young male elites of the Luo clan, not everyone was a blessed son of heaven who were pursued by girls like Luo Mo. There were some relatively common male disciples. Being able to suddenly see a bevy of beauties in all styles, they were momentarily dazed when they vaguely made out the beauties' fair legs and arms through the thin veils. Upon seeing the Luo clan's male disciples looking at them dumbfoundedly, there was a slight stir in the white fox clan. They began giggling, with laughter as pleasant-sounding as Oriole's birds. The White Fox Clan indeed lives up to its fame as a charming species. These girls must have cultivated in some illusionary charming techniques. Their auras have already been fully integrated into their bodies. Even without exercising their charm, they can still influence the minds of people. Iyun came to a conclusion upon seeing this scene. Ignoring the looks of the white fox girls, just their reactions alone could stir up a male's dominating desires. The long-mustached Luo Divine Hall Elder frowned slightly. Emperor Luo had instructed him to lead the Luo Divine Hall trials. Although quite a number of Luo clan geniuses had been sent to the white fox clan, he could not allow the Luo clan to embarrass itself. He interrupted the dazed Luo clan youngsters present with a soft grunt. After a momentary surprise, they hurriedly focused their minds and looked somewhat embarrassed. They had also realized that their reactions were quite embarrassing, and they had unknowingly fallen for the other party's tricks. At this moment, a red-dressed beauty appeared at the entrance of the White Spirit Cruiser's hull. She had an ample bosom, and even with an extremely loose dress, there was no way it could hide her voluptuous figure that exuded a mature woman's charm. He he he, Elder Duanmu, why are you grunting? It's just a look, and the girls don't mind, so what's wrong with that? Furthermore, with the common enemy of the Fae Phantasm sect, my White Fox Clan's Sacred King and His Majesty Emperor Luo have the intentions to begin an alliance. In the future, wouldn't it be common for White Fox Clan ladies to marry into the Luo Clan? The red-dressed woman said with a giggle. 
Pandemonium seemed to happen as the voluptuousness under her dress made people lose themselves in reverie. Some of the Luo clan's hot-blooded youths could not help but waver on their purpose after hearing her words. What the red-dressed woman said was very alluring. The Luo Divine Hall trials would last a very long time, so it was possible that they could hook up with one of the white fox beauties and leave with a beauty in hand. Just thinking of this made many Luo clan disciples muster up their strength in a bid to showcase themselves at the trials. Come on down. The red-dressed woman waved her hand. The elites of the White Fox clan began to step out of the spirit cruiser. The Luo clan disciples immediately focused. The spatial dimension laws here were extremely chaotic. It was not easy to stand firmly, so they wanted to see how strong these girls from the White Fox clan were. They wanted to see if they were even worthy of them, if a few of them could not even beat a single one of them, how could they win their hand in marriage? The first to step out of the spirit cruiser was a pair of young girls. They were extremely tall, with ample breasts and thin waists. Long hair gushed down their backs, while there was a pair of fox ears that could hardly be seen. They looked like they were made out of the same mold. Twins? The Luo clan disciples were somewhat astonished. Coupled with their flawless faces and identical looks, they found it nearly impossible to distinguish them. It's the White Fox Clan's shadow twins. At this moment, Luo Mo said, they grew up together with Princess White Fox, and they are personal guards of Princess White Fox. The term, guards, might not be appropriate, and instead, they could be described as Princess White Fox's confidants and left and right hand women. With Luo Mo saying this, the shadow twins had already stepped out of the spirit cruiser. The chaotic laws immediately subjected them to their power but the duo did not appear to be affected at all. More mysteriously, a faint ripple appeared under their feet, as though they were stepping on a water surface. These ripples emanated out from their feet and it gathered together before destructively interfering with each other into eventual calmness. And following that, the shadow twins took one step after another down the empty space. Every step produced a ripple and these ripples formed a trail that expanded in range. Following that, the young White Fox clan disciples began walking out of the spirit cruiser. The invisible ripples seemed to stabilize the chaotic void as they created an invisible ground. All of the White Fox disciples were able to stand firmly on the ripples that destructively interfered with each other, as though they were not affected by the chaotic laws. This scene shocked everyone. What sort of technique was that? Not every White Fox Clan disciple was able to easily adapt to their surroundings. With the Shadow Twins forging a path ahead, it was as though they had calmed down the chaotic laws, which resulted in all of them appearing unaffected. It was fascinating. At this moment, Princess White Fox appeared. She was still dressed in a simple but elegant white robe. Her long white hair and her every gesture had silver bolts lightning circulating around her. The resplendent silver beams added an air of mystery to her. Quite a few of the Luo clan disciples present had attended the banquet hosted by Empress Luo. Back at the banquet, they did not sense how unfathomable Princess White Fox was, but now in the primordial Empyrean heaven, they were able to deeply appreciate it. Princess White Fox's eyes were calm as she slowly walked towards the Luo Divine Hall. Following behind Princess White Fox were four male White Fox Clan men. The White Fox Clan men had exquisite appearances like the women, but in the eyes of the members of the Luo Clan, this was completely disgusting. Men mostly liked delicate and beautiful women, but how many would like delicate and beautiful men? At this moment, the White Fox Clan men looked at the Luo Clan disciples and one of them said, Who amongst you is Yi Yun?